Hello, friends from all over the world. Welcome to Honor of Kings. If you don't know about Honor of Kings, don't worry. We will give you a full understanding about the game through four episodes. If you already know Honor of Kings, you should not miss this program, as you will find all the key information you want to know. Honor of Kings is a mobile mobile game developed by Timu Studio Group, focusing on battle. It was released in China on November 26, 2015, and is currently the MOBA game with the most players in the world. You will find a large number of unique heroes and finely designed skins in honor of kings. What's more, the immersive battlefield will also bring users fresh gameplay experience. That's why it is a fantastic choice for social entertainment. The first season of KPL was officially launched in September 2016, and we have witnessed the birth of 13 champions. After about 2,900 days and nearly 8,000 matches, Honor of Kings International Championship is an annual world-class esports tournament with the highest level of competition. It's worth mentioning that the 2021 Honor of Kings International Championship which contributed 600 million content views on the day of the Grand Finals, reached 170 million users during the tournament. 2022 Honor of Kings International Championship will witness a whole update and hold a dazzling 10 million US dollar prize pool. The wild card qualifiers will start on November 22nd, and the group stage will start from December 3rd. You will see the strong teams from all over the world fighting for the World Championship. KIC 2022 will kick off shortly. Let's witness the wonderful performance of players on the stage of the 2022 Honor of Kings International Championship. Let's high five for highlight. Nothing draws a shark better than the sweet scent of blood. Perhaps you'd understand me better. Steal the flesh. Cultivate the mind.
上是永世不灭的守望。踏上征途的不忘，任风雨苍茫激荡，相同信仰。我要看浪寻找炽烈的愿望，迎风浪带我在我手上。我要打破现实梦。赛场上从来都没有什么机缘巧合，靠着必死的决心，有着必胜的信念。强者就是无论身处怎么样的绝境，无论对手是谁，永远战意盎然。正所谓，死去全台招旧部，荆棘十万斩阎罗。就算世界崩塌又怎样？我还有一座倔强。你我并肩，祝你与野火，让心灵飘回家乡。您可以站。我们相信，他们也会输。他们只是一群鲜衣怒马的少年，但是我们知道，一帆风顺永远只是弱者的安眠曲，而披荆斩棘才是强者的主题歌。欢迎来到二零二二年王者荣耀世界冠军杯 KIC。牵进来之后，侧面诺言，是吧？孙少强拿到了五杀，你打上，你还跟上了，是了，残血了，他这场走，走了，太重，一枪打掉最后的那波，一枪，这波还是反打一打二，给带走的云州军，就是暖阳，手就把他保下来了，马上这波侧面给一枪，阿甘人一次绝，落枪之后进完美，再来一枪，小军三连接上。Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2022 Honor of Kings International Championships, KPL Qualifiers Round 2, 
day two. I'm your caster for today, Isaac Peña Mule. All of those teams from KPL region had already gave their very first performance yesterday and that was awesome. That make us more believe that today's going to be another fantastic day. I'm today's caster Nora. Hey, it's going to be an awesome day, right mm. Nora? It's going to be amazing. We're going to have hours and hours and hours full of energy. You're going to have myself and Nora at the beginning for the first six games. Then Nora's going to go home. She's going to have a rest. Then you're <laughs> going to come here and you'll still have my face for a little while. So I hope that you guys can take it for, for that long. <laughs> I hope you guys can just enjoy today's matchups because that's going to be fantastic. Yes, exactly. So let's, what about if we watch our video explain a little bit more about how the tournament is going to work out, okay? Two minutes and we'll be back. Watch the video. The tournament can be divided into three stages. KIC 2022 Wild Card Qualifier, KIC 2022 KPL Qualifier, and the main draw. Eight teams from KPL area and eight teams from other areas will compete in the KIC 2022 group stage. For the eight teams from other areas, four teams from Brazil area, Turkey area, Latin area, and Middle East and North Africa area respectively have already secured a seat in group stage through other area qualifiers, while the remaining four promotion quotas for group stage will be decided based on the results of wild card qualifier from November 22nd to 24th. Four eight teams from all over the world will fight for points through single cycle best of one. Meanwhile, in KPL area, Chongqing, Wolves, and Wuhan East Pro have directly won two seats. During KPL qualifier from November 25th to 30, the remaining six seats will be decided based on KIC points ranking results of other 12 KPL teams through a competition system, which is best of seven for the first round and best of one for the second round. The 16 qualified teams will be divided into four groups by drawing lots based on their promotion order. The group stage begins on December the 3rd. After 10 days of grouping matches in the best of two double round robin system, eight teams will advance to KIC 2022 quarterfinals. The final eight teams will be matched up into four groups by drawing lots and fight for the four tickets to semifinals from December 16th to 19th in the best of seven single elimination system. The semifinals will take place on December 24th to 25th and determine the final two teams through a best of seven single elimination system. Finally, we will witness the birth of the championship together on December the 30th. KIC 2022 will kick off shortly. Are you ready? The tournament system has been laid out for you in a very simple way through that video, right? It, I, I believe that it become like very, very clear how everything's gonna work out, right? Yeah, like for the current state, in short, there's only like four spots left now for yeah. those regions, uh, for those KPL teams to fight for to go into the group stage. Already 12 teams have secured the spots to the group stages. And then it's going to be in the next three days that we're gonna be able to take four more in there. The last four tickets. And after yesterday's performances, things start seem a little bit more clear. Yeah, especially after if we finish today. Mm -hmm. Well, it won't be like really settled down. Yeah, true. But clearer. The yeah. ranking is going to be much more clearer. Of course, of course, of course. And that's what we're going to be seeing. A lot of heroes yesterday were played. A lot of heroes were banned. And of course, it's our responsibility to teach you a little bit more, right? Like to introduce why those heroes have been banned and why those heroes have been picked. We've selected three heroes to introduce to everyone at home today, right? Those heroes are going to be Miyamoto Musashi, Ishii, and Tung Huan Taiyi. And I guess all of our audience are becoming like, much more familiar with these three heroes yes. right now because they already appeared for several times. Mm -hmm. Actually, for Miyamoto Musashi, he's quite a matter pick for jungler right now. 
Yes, exactly. Miyamoto Musashi yesterday was one of the most banned mm. heroes, the same as Tung Juan Tai, right? Mm -hmm. Those banned rates just racing up over 50% in only 11 matches, right? Like the ability that Tung Juan Tai has just through his ultimate to just lock down people allows him to provide a lot of security for the marksman. Yeah, like for Dong Huang Tai and Yi Xin, these two heroes are more like um, be important of their strategic importance. Yes, exactly. I would, say that. Yeah. I would say for the big fights, right? Yeah. They're like big fight heroes. Mm. Like in the moment that you have a big fight with Yi Xin's ultimate, the Heaven's Origin, you're able just to create a box, mm. just to lock down heroes and just to create the area where you want the fight to actually happen. So Yi Xin's ability allows you just to decide, do I want to fight here? Do I want to fight there? Where do I want this fight to happen? Yeah, like the priority is all in their hands. And mm -hmm. also like it's more like use those heroes to complete the whole CC. Yeah, Miyamoto Musashi as well. One of the most OP junglers that we have in this meta right now. Um, his ability just to be able to take on 1v2s or 1v3s mm -hmm. uh, make him a force to be reckoned. Mm. And also we know that today is going to be the second day of our matchup, so that's going to be a series of matchups going through for today. A lot of games today, right? Like yesterday wow. we had 11, today we're going to go all the way to 12 games, starting right now, going all the way for about 6-7 hours, something like that. Yeah. That's going to be long. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> it's going to be really nice. Lizzie wow. Pendlebury says, I love Chinese history and those heroes. We all love the heroes and we all love Chinese history as well, right? Yeah, and also that's kind of be one of the most striking feature about our game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. can see a lot of um, heroes which has their own background and also some heroes which is based on those pretty Chinese style of design. Yes, exactly. Yesterday we had a lot of comebacks, as Mohamed Mukorobin is mentioning to us. Mm. Um, a lot of comebacks last night. It was very exciting. The yeah. last game, for me, it was the most exciting one. Which last one? game last we game. had Beijing Weibo and Chengdu AG. Oh. That was a really exciting game. It was like electrifying since <laughs> minute one. Yeah, like the match is like really explosive. And also, um, Actually, I mentioned a little bit about those members from these two teams. Yeah. The marksman Inuo from AG and also the jungler Nuan Yang from Weibo. Mm -hmm. They're really good friends. They're really good friends, they right? Really at, at the friendship. end, in the moment that you are already in battle, in the moment that your hero makes it to the valley, there are no more friends around. <laughs> it's all competition. I'm so sorry. Everybody wants to make it to the group stage. True. Everyone wants that. Yesterday we had great performances by a lot of teams, mm. Sutro, KSG and Chengdu AG, 100% win rates. Yeah, so that's a good news to them, especially like we know we are doing like 4 out of 10, yeah. which is going to be fierce and which is going to be really crucial. So for these of teams which already got mm -hmm. some points at the very first day, that's yeah. going to be a relief. So what about Guangzhou TTG? Oh, Two games, isn't that zero well wins. With them right now? What's up with them? What do you think? Like yesterday, while you were casting their game, yeah. what what was your impression? What was happening? I was like, what's wrong with you guys? <laughs> Just because, well, to be honest, from those rankings that we saw from those summer cups, yeah. actually the matchups that happened yesterday for TTG, those are must win for them. But they yeah, lost it. True, 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 true. Guantro TTG yesterday losing to Shenzhen DYG mm. and losing to Jinan RW. Yeah. Those were two matches that nobody was expecting them just to be mm. on the on the losing side. Yeah, and that's something we need to talk about Shenzhen DYG. Actually, they really surprised me a lot. Yeah. And they're gonna do the follow-up of match because you know during the off season uh -huh. I've done some other casting mm -hmm. and um, actually Shenzhen and DYG they lost in a row for about like 19 games wow. which is really like we're, we're like holding no expectation on them right now but after the very first showcase that they offered to us I'm pretty surprised about, wow, how quick they are to just revive, to just get recovered. Yes, exactly. Shenzhen DYG that is going to be staring in our first match. Yeah. It's going to have Shanghai EDGM against Shenzhen DYG. Mm. That's going to be a really nice game to watch, right? Like yesterday um, for Shanghai EDGM, they mm. had one win and two losses. So they already have 
three games away and only one point. Yeah. This is going to be crucial for them. So today is going to be a big day for them, especially now the ranking is not that good. They're not mm -hmm. ranked at the ace, and also. For every team, they're going to have nine games in total. They already yes. have three, and they're going to have another two games for today. The magic number is six, right? Mm. With six, you make it through. With five, you depend on other people. Yeah. Four might not be enough. Going to be risky. Might not be enough. Mm. All right, EDGM that is going to come out with Ningzhi, Yuan, Ming, Rock, and Yan Meng. Yeah. Uh, for Shanghai EDGM, these five people have already been playing together for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm very amazed about their aggressiveness that they showed yesterday. Yeah, they were very aggressive yesterday. I mm -hmm. love the way that how they tried their very best mm -hmm. just to go and win. Mm -hmm. uh, they were really like trying their very best. Uh, they had very good compositions yesterday, mm. right? Like when they play against Nanjing here, uh, they were playing a Lady Sun and a Chan Fei with a Liu Bu. That, that was supposed to give them a little bit more of an aggressive <laughs> end, right? Uh, but they were not able to beat that Master Lupin and mm. Lupin number seven combo that Nanjing Hero brought them. Yeah. But if you if we like take a good look at Shanghai Lee James com, uh, composition, yep. we can find out that re they really prefer to pick up Zhang Fei as their support. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. and also they really want to pair up with the ut utility majors. Yes, exactly. Yesterday they played Zhang Fei mm. um, in two out of out of their three matches. Um, it was very important for them just to try to use that Zhang Fei, mm. which yesterday was one of the most picked heroes. 8 mm. out of 11 times Tran Fei was out there, <laughs> but with a win rate of only 50%. Yeah. Um, Tran Fei is not, a it's not a, it's not a support that is going to be banned a lot, mm -hmm. because there are more meta picks that should be banned, so we will see a lot of Tran Fei. But being able to pair that Tran Fei with a strong marksman might be crucial if you want to take the dub. Well, I guess the reason why Zhang Fei is such a favorite choice, maybe it's because of its all-around ability. Yes. He can do some initiation mm -hmm. and also he can do some pushback. And he can provide shield, mm, right? That's the reason. Oh, and also, he can that. carry smart. He can carry smart as well. <laughs> They're like, come on, that Zhang Fei is super OP, but you cannot just use one of your bands just to ban a support like Zhang Fei. Yeah. When you have some other heroes in there that you do not want to see. For example, Tatsya. Mm. Yesterday, Tatsya was banned now nine out of eleven times. Uh, it was only it was only used in one game. And they won it. And they won that game That's exactly. It. It, it is it is a very strong strategy. Yeah. Like if it is available, you need to be able to use it. Mm. So Tatsya yesterday not being able to show up uh, nine times already in the ban. Uh, Probably is going to be the same today. Yeah, I guess he's going to just be a permanent lockup, be a permanent ban. Well, actually for those ban pick phases, I don't think it's going to change a lot compared to what they did for yesterday. Uh, because in this matter, in a lot of teams' mind, actually those meta picks or meta bans, they're quite similar. It's more like, especially when we're doing best of one. Yes. Well, compared to like, um, stress the importance of the band pick. Actually, we could pay more attention onto their states, like how how they perform, the condition. Are they really into this game? Actually, that matters a lot. That matters a lot. That's mm. just completely true. It's not only about what heroes you have, but how your mind state, right? Like yeah. the state of your mind. How are you feeling? Are you gonna be able to perform or not? Are you going to be uh, too stressed out? Mm. The nerves are, are something to, to mind about, right? Yeah. It's a BO1. Anything could happen in a BO1. Mm. You just get your hands in whatever hero that, you, that, that is available mm. and try to build whatever strategy that you feel like would, could give you the upper hand. Be confident is quite important. And that's something I, need, I want to talk a little bit more about Shenzhen DYG. Because for those compositions that they selected at the very first performance that they yeah. gave us, they chose Xia Hudun as a support, which mm. is quite rare, especially from KPL region. 
Yes, exactly. Central DYG mm. choosing that Xia Ho Tun as mm. a support in their game against TES, right? Mm. That at the end, they were still able to win. Yeah, that's they played, it. They played a, ve a very interesting composition. Xia Ho Tun playing in support. Mm. Uh, DRNG as a marksman. Shen Meng Xi playing in, in, in mid. Mm. Yukio Tachibana playing in jungle. <laughs> so all the damage was, was just coming in, on the shoulders from Lang Chen. Yeah. Lang Chen had a very big responsibility in that game. Hmm. And that's the point why we talk a lot about Shenzhen and Yuanji. They feel like so confident. They just pick one thing that I trust, I can mm -hmm. fully use this, I can utilize it, and they just go for it and they want it. Yes, exactly. Let's see what the boys from Shenzhen and DYG can do today. Today, yeah. if, if they win all their matches, they might put themselves already in a really nice spot. Mm. Um, moving forward, right? Like today, they're going to have two games. If they get two more wins, that's already going to be four points. Mm -hmm. That's very close to the magic number. Very close, because we already mentioned if you got six points, you're going to make it. If you got mm. five points, you got a chance. But for four, mm, well, not enough. Oh, come on, four points <laughs> after day two? <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. I would love to do that. I would love to have four points after, after day two because we're now still in the second day. So today's gonna to be a big day for all those teams, especially for those teams who's already been four behind. And um, it's if, do or die. Mm. It is do or die. Like if you lost yesterday, uh -huh. if you had, let's put it this way. Uh -huh. If you had three games yesterday uh -huh. and you have only one point, mm -hmm. you've already lost two. Mm. So it means that you cannot let more points go today. Mm. Like if to you be or not to be, it just depends on today. If you had if you had two games yesterday uh -huh. and you end up with one win, one loss, okay, uh -huh. that still puts it still okay. Uh -huh. But for those teams who had two games yesterday and they could not take any victories, today is the moment for them to turn title around. Yeah, so that's something that all those teams need to pay attention to. And also if we give a quite quick review about yesterday's composition that have been showed up, yeah. there is sort of similarity between all those teams. For example, Shen Mengxi is quite fevered, right? Yep. And also Zhao Jun is quite fevered. Yep. And also, uh, for most of the teams, they really want to build up a quite solid front line. They want to build a quite front, so, so, a quite solid front line, that's for, that's for sure. Mm. Like most of the, the most picked heroes yesterday, Yes. Um, all of them had a pretty high win rate. Oh. In, in exception of Shen Meng Xi that could not even make it to a 50%. Uh. Uh, the one hero that yesterday had a great performance was Lam. Mm. He was picked seven times and winning six out of those seven times. Mm. Highest win rate that we have right now for these KPL qualifiers. Yeah, that's quite high. So actually for Lam, it's going to show up a lot of times for today's matchups. We can foresee it. And also like for other heroes like Ata, like Lu Bu, mm -hmm. right? For the, those top laners and also Xia Hou Dun, they're gonna be like quite fevered by all of those teams. That is a very interesting that mm. is a very interesting comment, right? Because mm. yesterday, through the whole day, uh -huh. Atta was picked only once. Oh. Something completely different to what we saw last week during the wild cards and what we saw in between the games that we had for round one of the KPL qualifiers. Mm. Atta that had been a very a very favored hero, one of the one of the most picked before, with one of the highest uh, win rates from the Summer Cup. Yesterday showing up only once was a very, very, very interesting thing to see. Yeah, and for yesterday's pickups, more is go for Lu Bu and also Xia Hou Dun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they showed up a lot of times. That's true. Lu Bu and Xia Hou Dun were like the most the most favored picks for top laners. Mm. Just understanding a little bit, just the. The ability that you have on top lane just to try to win those fights, to clean wave and to rotate around makes Lu Bu, Xia Hou Tu and Meng Tian mm. um, the top three picks for yesterday. Uh, and you just referred about those strategy that especially for those teams from KPL region they had. Mm -hmm. They had those common strategy about chose a tank on the top and try to use a core player which would definitely be the jungler. 
to just bring him down, gain more vision control for their team. Yeah, if for all of you who are new to our game, mm. uh, we in this patch, in this meta, mm. uh, what we're trying to do is just to build up around a strong jungler. Yeah. Yeah, how strong your jungler is going to be, is going to define one, a lot of your choices and it's going to give you a bigger chance to be able to play mm. um, to play more aggressive in the mid game mm. so being able to really build around your jungler mm. it means that you need to get him some extra gold and yeah. that gold sometimes just comes from top lane yeah because that's all we have actually those resources are quite limited mm -hmm. and also that's some of the reason that why lots of teams really want to invade into the opponent's field yeah. Because those monsters, those camps in the field, they're neutral monsters. Everyone can take it, no matter you're the blue side or in the red side. So invasion is quite important. Invasion is going to be quite important, mostly in a BO1. Mm. And when you're playing in a 1v1, uh -huh. like you don't need to actually think about like what's going to happen uh, for the next game. You just need to be thinking, I need to beat the person in front of me. Uh. Um, that's going to be critical, just being able to slow down the jungler's farming rate. Hmm. So actually you just highlight another thing about our game. It's, as you just see, we're doing a five versus five game. Mm -hmm. And also for this mobile game, you can't just rely on doing solo lanes. And you cannot do Yeah, exactly. Keep hmm. going, sorry. For our game, HOK, Honor of Kings, actually our lane length is quite short, right? It's mm -hmm. like only about two or four minutes and that end, everybody just rotate and began to do some fight. That is the main difference between mobile MOBA games oh. and PC MOBA games, right? Oh. In PC MOBA games, the game length is going to be way longer. You're going to have that their pace is not going to be as fast. Um, it is completely different, right? Mm. Um, in mobile MOBA games, you know that after two minutes, there's no <laughs> more just standing there and just protecting your turret, right? Yeah. Like two, three minutes, you need to start rotating around and try to try to get something happening. Yeah. Uh, the pace is completely different to one to the PC mobile games for sure. Mm, and that's one of the reason why everyone wants to chose some aggressive heroes, especially in the early game, because the faster you get move, the better you get the chance. Yep, Yukio Tachibana yesterday being a pick uh, in three out of the 11 games for me is one of the... For me, if I would be a coach, Aye. that would be my pick for jungler. Oh, why? trying to use Yukio Tachibana because Yukio Tachibana can protect his jungle, right? Yeah. Like in the first two, three, four minutes, you know that Yukio Tachibana, if you don't want to invade, mm. you can still protect your own. Mm. So depending on that, for me, Yukio is a very good pick for jungler. Mm. Um, in comparison to other junglers that they're not that strong in the first in the first stages of the game. Mm, that makes sense. And also, um, if like one of those teams who's really decisive, who's yeah. really good at shut down the game, especially before 15 minutes, Ukyo Tatsubana is going to be a really nice choice. Yeah, because true. they can use those uh, junglers to just speed up, to accelerate the pace. And yeah. from his ganking, he's going to bring victory, bring advantages for his team. EDGM yesterday showed mm. us against CNWE mm. how to use Yukio Tachibana in a very important way, right? Mm. Like it's very important for us to understand how Yukio Tachibana can work on sometimes. Well, we are having experience in some internet situations. Right now, the, the, the network is not being stable enough for us to start our game. Mm. So we're just going to stay here and just keep sharing with you our experiences from yesterday, right? All right. So it's basically about me <laughs> giving some uh, like feelings about yesterday's game because I was doing casting with J. Cole. And um, uh, after, like, not only about these two teams, yep. actually a lot of other teams also give us uh, such a big surprise. Uh, for example, Hero. You remember that team? Yes, I because remember. Hero has been through a huge change be just before our KIC kick off. They just changed a totally new mage, but it seems like they are pretty, like, just try to be attached to it. Yeah, they're still trying to get used to that, right? Mm. Nanjing Hero today that is going to be facing Sutro KSG. Mm. And that's going to be a tough one for them. It's going to be difficult for Xinhan just to be able to perform yeah. a great, in, a, in a good way with his new teammates. 
um, trying to face, for me, mm. the strongest and more stable team from yesterday, KSG. Mm, yeah, they are. And maybe that's something to do with their coach who's really experienced. Yeah. Mm. Well, we talked about experienced coaches just being able to transfer all the strategies and that experience to all of their players. A lot of, of esports athletes change very quickly, right? Like we mm. know that the, that the esports career of an athlete goes through span four, sure. five, six years tops. Um, having a, a coach in here that has been able to see championships, a coach that has been able to see multiple games, that has been able to see multiple things, and transmit that experience to an 18, 19 year old kid, <laughs> it is valuable. For need sure. a tutor, right? You, it's you more a like tutor. a tutor than a coach. True, 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 true. <laughs> Someone that can share life experience. Yeah, just like, kiddo, it's going to be your time. You, you need to shine, you need to wah, 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 and just, you know, to be a really nice tutor, be a leader. Um, okay, so like, um, speaking to Hero, one of those things about their rotation, and also another rotation just happened today that okay. would, would go to TTG, right? Yes. Mm. One row TTG after yesterday's two losses, it's going to be put against the wall, right? Like there were two losses that they did not, they did not expect yesterday. Guangzhou TTG not winning against Shenzhen DYG, and then wow. again taking another L against Jinan RW. RW. Mm. Um, those two, those two losses were not scheduled for them, right? They were not counting on those two. No one actually had predicted that mm -hmm. could happen. Well, because we all know, like TTG, they've been through that best of seven. Yes. They got to the round one, mm -hmm. right? The first round, but they, they lost it. Well, maybe there's they have some excuses about, well, maybe we're not in our best condition, mm -hmm. or blah, blah, blah. But after we saw some performance that they gave us yesterday, actually, we're going to be a little bit worried about them right now. We have to be worried. I think it's something psychological. Uh, yeah. When they came in the in the round one that mm. they faced XYG, mm. a lot of people had their money on Guangzhou TTG. <laughs> I do believe that they were they were favorites. A lot of people I remember mm. uh, just being in the dressing room and then just talking to others, and then everyone just thought that Guangzhou TTG was going to take the victory. Mm. But then XYG comes in, slap them in the face. It's difficult to get back from that. And yesterday it was just a very big evidence of that, like Guangzhou TTG right now is not going through their best moment. Mm. And now we can see because of we have some network issues, so we still need to take a little bit of time. We're gonna go through a small pause, so please keep patient and we're just gonna keep our topics. Yeah, of course. With, um, like for... Talking about that, it's Guangzhou TTG. <laughs> what? What is going to be their solution for today? Well, for today, as for their coach, he did a huge decision mm -hmm. that he did a rotation. He bring up new uh, jungler and new support. New jungler and new support. Mm. That means that Puran and Pinchan are going to be watching the games today. That's At it. least the first one, they're going to be watching it from the sidelines. And it's going to be Ming Yang and Snow that they're mm. going to be taking those positions. Actually, they did do that rotations during the Summer Cup. Yeah. Well, but after that, we all know that for those five members, which always be the start lines for TTG, they have been working together for such a long time. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, to be honest, I guess it's going to be a great chance for Minya and Snow to show. Minya has good numbers. Mm. Like I remember that Hisukiyo Tachibana has four games and has a 100% win rate mm. just from the Summer Cup. Yeah. So Minya is going to be a good option coming in. Snow, a completely different game style to Ping Chen. Mm. Right? He's always um, tend to play those protective support, mm -hmm. mm, which is quite uh, different from Bing Chen. Yeah, Bing Chen is going to be a little bit more aggressive. Snow trying to be a little bit more protective. Bing Chen being one of the top heroes with top players with Tunshan with Sheldon. Yeah. So maybe that also shows some details about whether TTG want to change their playstyle today or not. Yeah, exactly. Snow just being able just to change your support, right? Like changing your support changes completely the way that your team is going to play. For a lot of people that just started playing our game, they do not like playing support positions because support, let's be realistic, 
never gets enough kills. <laughs> so, and, and, and at the beginning of the game, that's what you want. You just want to be able just to just to kill people around. That's now I know that that's why a lot of people really prefer to play the top laner because you're always gonna go through those melee fight. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Those melee fights are going to be important. Now, telling you a little bit about what's going on right now, you gotta remember that we're having a network connection mm. issue. And just in order for this to be a fair game for both teams, we're going to solve the situation. We're gonna send first the teams back to their dressing rooms. They're gonna be able to have a good rest. And then after that, we're gonna try to get back and bring you to this game one. Yeah. So actually we need to take a small pause right for a little bit time and um, also I guess during this time actually this is going to be a really nice time for these two teams to get well prepared for the next half match. Yeah. Getting well prepared that is going to be important. Going back to the topic between having snow and having pinch and how that's going to affect <laughs> on the way that Guantro TTG is going to be playing right. Yeah. I remember snow from his QG happy times. Oh, 2018 snow. Uh -huh. I remember that I had the opportunity to talk to him multiple times uh. to have interviews with him. A really nice guy, one mm. of my favorite supports and through the KPL history. And then just being able to see him again right now, and this is going to depend a lot on him. Yeah, it's going to depend a lot of him. His experience is going to have to provide some answers to the problems that Guantro TTG is facing right now. Yeah, because you mentioned about like he has such a long history about playing our game and also that kind of means that he's really experienced. Yes. And on the other hand, another thing that like for me, in my perspective, I guess it's going to be really important is that for those two players, actually they've been seen as the like substitution for yeah. such a long time. So this is going to be their like really nice chance. They need to catch it. It is, an, it is a good opportunity. Mm. Opportunities are only for those who are ready. Mm. It's just that simple. The fact that you're not being part of the starting list right now, it doesn't mean that you can just like sit down and just have a rest. Yeah. You need to work hard. And I'm totally sure that the Minyan and Snow are going to show us that. They're gonna have three games to show us that. We're gonna have Guantro, uh, Guantro TTG against Cian WES, yes, our fifth game of today. Mm. Then we're gonna have Chansha TES against Guantro TTG in our eighth game. And their last game, they're gonna be part of their 12th game today when they're gonna be facing Nanjing Hero. Mm. And since they already lost some points yesterday, so today, if mm -hmm. they didn't make it, or I guess we need to put it into these three games, it should be must win. They must win them. Mm. They must win because those those three teams, Nanjing Hero and then Changsha TES and Xi'an WE, those are going to be direct competitors mm. for Guangzhou TTG. As right now, probably they're going to be trying to fight for a third or fourth ticket into our group stages. Mm. And those three names are going to be fighting for those tickets as well. Yeah. So today's going to be a really important day for them to play. I hope that they are being well prepared. And also, actually, like due to those teams, actually yeah. we can say like there's a lot of similar composition that being picked out, and also there's a lot of like most play heroes, right? So actually, we can talk a little bit more about those heroes since actually we got that hero board before. We can just break it down and talk a little bit more about those details to help you guys know more about our hero play and about our game rhythm. Yeah, mm -hmm. most picked hero for yesterday, Gong Sun Lee. Uh huh. Gong Sun I love Lee this hero. <laughs> came in nine times and then won five out of those nine. Gong Sun Lee just being a very meta pick just for the mobility that you can have while using that hero, right? Mm. The Maple Dance around allows you to just move around the battlefield. I know that Gong Sun Lee can be a little bit squishy, but the damage that you can get, if you are able to proc your Frenzy at the same time, and they just go straight up, ambush someone, and they just go into, in, on their faces and poke on their HP bars, it's three or four, four, three or four pokes, and then you're gonna be gone. Yeah, Gong Sun Lee really had those mechanical ceiling, you know? Yeah. Like, and also, it has on own threshold. Mm -hmm. Like for me, people who's like really not good at play those tricky marks, man, yeah. I can never handle about Gong Sun Lee. Well, like in we those... have slow fingers. That's it, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I shouldn't do my nails. <laughs> okay, anyway, like, but for those pro gamers, like the Gong Sun Lee gonna be a must do 
for them as a yeah. hero. It should be like they really can master this high technical uh, hero, and also they can fully use it. Just check the performance that Ino showed us yesterday. Yes. That was awesome. Yesterday, Gunsun Lee was paired with a lot of very strong supports. Right, like mm. we had Gunsun Lee with Don Juan Tai. We had Gunsun Lee with Zhang Fei. Gunsun Lee with we had, Yaria. We had Gunsun Lee with Yaria. We had Gunsun Lee with Liu Bang. Right. Yeah. Talking about those those two last picks, we had Yaria coming in only in one out of the eleven games. And then just taking the victory. Gung Sun Lee plus Yaria allows Gung Sun Lee just to be so mobile, try to be so confident on the fact that Yaria is going to provide shield. And in the moment that your HP bar is going to be very low, Yaria can come in and allow you to escape. Mm, and that's something to do with Yaria, this hero. Mm -hmm. He's known as, or she's known as, a protective support. Yeah. But like um, something different with Zhang Fei is that Yaria is more like to protect a single individual. Mm -hmm. You're gonna stand on his head, <laughs> grant him a shield, yeah. and do some like small control to help complete the CC. But like for Zhang Fei, he's more like um, go for the teamwork. Yes. Mm, that's the difference. Yaria is very dependent on the carry that, that Yari is mm. going to be paired with, right? Yeah. So at the end of the day, if your carry is not actually doing really well, that Yari is not going to be very useful to turn things around. Mm. On a different side, as with Tran Fei, with Tran Fei, it's more of a five, if, if it's a composition, it's a team hero. With Tran Fei, the initiation that you can have from Tran Fei just allows you just to move around depending on whoever that is carrying in that game. If it is the marksman, follow the marksman. If it is going to be the jungler, follow the jungler, right? Mm. And so it's going to be a very mobile. One of the reasons why it has been such a popular pick. Yeah, and speaking to mobile, speaking to our game, something to do with those tanks, something to do with why people always want to build up such a solid front lane. Yeah. That's something to do with vision, right? Mm -hmm. Vision control is quite important during mobile games, especially in our game, the maps are quite small mm -hmm. and the roaming path is quite short. So actually vision control means a lot and like for Zhang Fei, for Xia Houdun, which already be picked up so many times, it's because they're like healthy bar. It's like such solid. They can just go there and gain the vision for their teams. That's true, right? Like they can just go face first into any bush. And <laughs> they know that even if they're gonna be ganked, they are able to survive. It's just like, so what? <laughs> just stand there. Okay, you do some damage on me. So what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're very, they're very confident in, yeah. the, in their tankiness. Be brave. Right? Xiao to and Tran Fei, options that they have. Yesterday, another option that we had with Gun Sun Lee was Liu Pang. Mm, that's another protective support. <laughs> but Liu Pang has a very interesting ultimate, right? Mm. Like, because Liu Pang can just teletransport straight to whatever position that one specific uh, ally is going to have. So yeah. Liu Pang could be just carrying, just pushing lane very far away from the battle. And as the battle is going to start, he can teletransport into with this straight into the battlefield. Mm, and you just mentioned about another strategy which is going to be really crucial in our game. That's called split push, right? Split push, that means like we have five members and now you can just let one to push the lane and other four try to do something on the other side. And one lane that you can push forward kind of cause some distraction to your enemies. Yes, mm -hmm. split, a, a split push. Uh, the term pushing is just going to be how deep you're going to allow your minion wave yeah. to go in, so how closer they can get to the to your opponent's crystal. Mm. So that's why we call it push, right? Like so that action of just like allowing your minion wave to go into the opponent's into the opponent's area is going to be pushing a lane, right? Pushing so a lane. split pushing is going to be different. It's going to be as one part of the team is going to be on top lane, for example, there's going to be one hero that is going to try at the same time to push on his own on the bottom lane in the completely opposite side of the map. And that's something to do with Liu Bang's ultimate. Mm -hmm. Because of his ultimate offer him such a great chance to do the teleport. Yes. And actually those teleport skills is quite rare in our game. As we've mentioned, our map's quite small. It's mm -hmm. like a mini map and everything's just move so fast. So teleport skill is going to be really important during our games. And due to that, ga uh, due to that skill, actually allow Liu Bang to do like push deeper push further and allow him to have the chance to just escape away from this around. Remember that we're having a little bit of network connection issues. <laughs> we know that the players are already back on mm. stage. 
Um, they're trying their very best. We know that our technicians are trying their very best just to allow us to start the game as soon as possible. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for staying here with us. Um, if you need to get a drink, go and get a drink. Go and get then, a drink. <laughs> and then you can always come back and we're gonna be here with you. So yeah. don't worry. We're gonna try to do our very best to, buy keep, some you, crisps. to keep you entertained. Mm, yeah, just buy some food or just take a rest. And I assure you that today's matchup is going to be explosive. Today's matchup is going to be really fantastic. Yeah. And Which one is going to be your favorite matchup for today? Wow. Plenty of them. I guess for me personally, I'm really looking forward to the 11th game. Yes, I'm me just too. Go, go back to my hotel and just going to watching you. Me <laughs> too. Casting with Yu. I am really looking forward for that 11th uh -huh. match, Sutro KSG against Chengdu AG. Yeah. As ladies and gentlemen, we have gone through all the troubles, we have climbed the hill, and now we can bring you game one of today's 12, Shenzhen DYG against Shanghai EDGM. Go for it, let's see. Shenzhen DYG on the blue side, EDGM on the red. We can see, due to DYG just dealt with Mai Shen, we actually, I guess, they want to have Shen Mengxi as their first pick. Yes, exactly. Chuan is going to try to lock in that Shen Mengxi. is going to be an important pick. Mm. See? Let's see, let's see if, they're, if they can start trying to turn things around for that Shen Mengxi's win rate, right? Mm. It was a very popular pick, did not win much. Yeah. It's basically because we're doing best of one, so actually all of those hero pools are so if sufficient for all of those members, for all of those players. They don't need to worry a lot about our hero pools and there's always some options open. Uh, as I just mentioned, right, Yukio Tachibana. Mm. Yukio Tachibana is going to be a very popular pick today. I am, I'm just thinking, after watching yesterday's games, mm -hmm. my understanding is that whoever is going to control the first four or five minutes of the game mm. is going to have the upper hand. Yeah. It's a BO1. Mm. You just need to try and control the first four or five minutes of the game and Yukio Tachibana might give you that option. And so that also means the importance about doing BO1, there's some like secret about yeah. doing it, is just be aggressive. Trying you to be aggressive. To, yeah, you need to gain yourself something. Let's see. Shanghai DGM options for junglers that they could have. I was gonna say Lamb would have been a good option there, mm -hmm. but they're gonna, there's gonna be banned for Shenzhen DYT. Yeah, and also I guess the next ban also can be aimed to their jungler. Jing King, might King be... King Broly? Oh, oh Sun Bin. Oh, you don't want to have Sun Bin among King <laughs> Combo, right? Yeah. That, that would not work out for you. They're gonna try to go with Lumber. Lumber that is gonna be an amazing hero that allows you mm. um, to be very aggressive. It's got initiation, it's very tanky, it can provide, it can provide support, it can defend. A very all-round hero lumber. Yeah, and that's something to do with DYG. Actually, I guess the reason why they banned out Sunbin is because they want to pair up with Bo with Lumber. Mm -hmm. So actually, EDGM just foresee it. They predict that you want Lumber, so I just take it away. And also, it's gonna gain them a much solid front lane paired up with Meng Tian. DYG just completely copy paste their <laughs> whole combo from yesterday wow. against Changsha TES. They just changed Lady Sun instead of Tier and Jie, right? Wow. But it's gonna be the same Shen Meng Xi, Yukio Tachibana, Lu Bu, and Xia Hou Tun support. And that's something very interesting because, as we've mentioned, Xiao Lun is quite rare to be played as a support in our mm -hmm. like teams from KPL region. But on the other hand, there's another invited region which is going to be Brazil. The Red Cannons we really prefer to use those tanks as support. So I guess maybe during those off seasons, during during those pre preparation, do I yep. actually watch some games from other regions? No, let's see what that Xiao Tun can do, right? Xiao yeah. Tun can, can deal real damage. And then that's going to be interesting to see in the big fights. It can bring initiation as, as well. Yeah. Um, it's going to be difficult to try to spot that Gunsun leader. Mm. Well, as for Lady Sun, um, during those laning phase, I'll just give it 50-50. 50 50? If, if Lady Sun played well, because, mm -hmm. well, actually, for Lady Sun, this hero is quite interesting. One of the point is that before level level two, yeah. it's going to be really dominating. Mm -hmm. But after level two, 
until like 15 minutes, she's gonna be weak. <laughs> That's the point. It feels like there's a small and short peak during the laning phase. If you can wisely use it to shred down the HP first to, uh, against Gong Sun Li, that's gonna gain some opportunity. I but see that Gong Sun Li, I believe that Gong Sun Li has the, has the upper hand over there in that matchup, right? Mm. Because in a 1v1, uh, Lady Sun has a little bit more burst damage, mm. but at the same time, Gong Sun Li can use her abilities to block that damage. Yeah, that's the point. That's quite important during the laning phase. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Who's gonna win the first chance for dominating that uh, farm lane? Gonna be really crucial. That's gonna be crucial. The mm. supports are going to be important. How they can try to create those 2v1s or 2v2 fights mm. over there in bottom lane. And top lane is going to be all Lu Pu against Meng Tian, right? Mm. Meng Tian that is gonna need to make it to level four mm. for him to be, for in my, in my opinion, the top pick in top lane. So something of note gonna be for EDGM. After the ultimate is ready for Meng Tian, that's gonna be their first chance to call for attacking. Let's wait and see what's going to happen. Shen Zhen DYG taking the blue side, Shanghai EDGM taking the red side. It's going to be game one of our day two of our KPL qualifiers. Let's wait and see what this game is going to bring us. I'm your caster, Isaac Peña Mule. I'm your caster, Nora. Let's see Let's the first see game. First game, look at that. <laughs> Launch on air, Lumber being taken extremely low and has not been able to get on the minion wave yet. Wow, you can see like for Xia Hodun, for this hero, he's quite all around, you know. Mm -hmm. He still got true damage after he used his second ability. The next four normal attacks are gonna deal with true damage, which also means why he's gonna be such a meta pick during those top laners. Yeah. DYG, look at that. Just trying to go, trying to go and try to take mm. something from the jungle. Monkin tries to come in. Mm. His damage is still not on. Yeah, he's still level two. Still level two. Wow, so we can see, actually, um, DYG is pre uh, performing so aggressively, trying to do a lot of things. And that's the point of doing best of one. And that's their composition. Their composition is just for that early game, right? Mm. It is very balanced. Mm. Very, very, very balanced. At the beginning of this early game, uh, Yukio Tachibana is going to take control of it, trying to be very, 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 very aggressive in the beginning. Mm. Mm. But then after that, if they do not get an early advantage, they always have the late game Lupu, late game Lady Soon. Look at that. 4v2, 4v3 is going to be. Ultimate oh, ready. the young generals come in. Lupu is going to disappear. Right now, Ninja is still taking so much damage from the turret. He's trying to keep poking on his cruising. Takes the first kill. It's going to be first blood. It's going to be for Shanghai EDGM. It's such a successful movement. We can see, just as we've mentioned during the job, during the band pick phase, mm -hmm. EDGM is going to wait until Meng Tian got his very first yeah. level four, very first ultimate, and they wisely use it to fulfill, uh, fulfill the top lane and gain them some advantages. Ning Zhi, when he gets his level four, when he's got the, his ultimate, mm. the young generals, um, it's going to have 20 seconds of those extra generals, right? Yeah. The surrounding monkey, he summons the generals, allow him to take a lot of damage and to deal a lot of damage as well. Yeah. So actually for Meng Tian, this hero, he combined both ability as a tank and both mm -hmm. as a warrior. Almost three minutes mark. Not a very big gold advantage mm. for part of EDGM, even though they won that fight. But due to the first, very first ganking, the very first team fight, actually mm -hmm. the thing is going to be a little difficult for DYG right now. Because as you mentioned, they're pretty good at early game, but they need to speed up. Or the mid game is going to be a gap. Because the next day, they, the next time they want to wait, going to be after Sun Shang Xiang hide up some items and also... Oh, look at that rock being oh. extremely, extremely aggressive, jumping in. That lady soon can do nothing else but just using her flash, her flash to just run away. 
And attention, Rock hasn't even, hasn't even used his frenzy. Mm -hmm. If he used that, actually that kill's gonna go to goes for him. Yeah, true. Mm. EDGM being very aggressive. I like that. I like the way that they really want to come and take the victory. Mm. They've Tower already got two losses shattered. yesterday. They Tower. cannot Moving they cannot out. just pile one more. Yeah. Piling a third one is going to be a very heavy load on them. They can't stand for another loss, so they need to be cautious. Four minutes. One solid gold lead. So things goes pretty good for EDGM right now. Gongsun Lee already with Doomsday. Mm. Has a very has a very clear advantage uh, compared to Lady Sun, right? And seems like for those item boy, Rock's gonna go for a resistance of boots. Boots of resistance. Boots of resistance, allowing him uh, to this, allowing him to slow down, mm. or we could say just making the time that he's going to be stunned or to be launched just to become shortened. Yeah. So he's going to be able to shorten the time that he's going to be under control. Mm. Because as we see the composition that DYG just did, there's feel a lot of control. Oh, oh look so at that! Nintri coming in, taking luncheon with only two auto attacks, mm. straight into one third of his HP bar. Chuan is going to try to come in with Jeremy, trying to force Nintri to leave. Not going to be enough. Wow, for Long Chen, for Lady Sun, now it's quite torturing. Like, <laughs> she's, I like, feel, he, she had no idea about how to deal with Meng Tian. No. Because actually, it, like for EDGM, this is their chance to first switch the lane. I don't think that, I don't think that Lan Chen had an idea that Meng Tian was there. Yeah. It was just completely out of, out of, out of nothing, waiting in the bush. So There's going to be a trade, a top lane turret for that tyrant. Mm. And actually this rotation, this lane swap, mm -hmm. kinda is because it's a signal for EDGM. They're gonna speed up. They're gonna accelerate the pace. They don't want to wait till your Rebu, till your Lady Sun to be fully decked out. They don't want to see it. After these six minutes, the hero that we're going to have to be paying attention to from the red side, from mm. EDGM, mm. is going to be that Kun Sun Lee from Rock, right? Mm. Like farming so well, having right now already a 1,000 goal advantage in comparison to Lady Sun. Things are going to just go and revolve around Rock's positioning. And also for EDGM, they're just going to split up to do the split push. Jin, go for another side to clean the waves. Look at that, the Heaven's Origin is gonna allow, it's gonna allow Ming to run away. And now it's gonna be DYG trying to keep their eyes on this red buff. They're gonna be successful at taking him, but let's see if Yuan can do something trying to recover that. Mm, they just did a nice retreat. We can see like they're playing quite smart. DYG just trying to gain something from their side for themselves. They don't want to stay there and hand over all of those resources to you. No, no, no. Right now, DYG know that they do not have an advantage. They know that Lady Soon is still going to need a couple more minutes just to keep farming, trying to get some, some gold for her items to be on. Look at that Ming. It's going to take on Xiao Yi. So it's going to be able to run away. But that turret being taken extremely low is almost inexistent. Yeah, it's almost inexistent. Well, that's something to do with Yi Xin's ultimate. Actually, <laughs> there's going to be a delay, just yes. like Yu Bu. Um, so for those people who is really mobile, it's going to be easy for them to escape from the ultimate down by Yi Xin. I remember yesterday while I was watching the stream, a lot of people were asking uh -huh. uh, why the, this Yi Xin's ultimate sometimes has different shapes, right? Ah, yeah, that's something to like off note. Well, the bigger you have, actually, you're gonna just longer extend your cooldown. Yes, exactly. So you're gonna use it efficiently. <laughs> you can choose. You can choose to create a very big area of effect, right? Yeah. But the bigger the area of effect, the longer the cooldown that is going to be. Um, it's not always 100% sure that you'll be able to cage in your opponent. That's it. It's not means like the bigger the better. It's yeah. more like you need to use it put it in the like, right position and use it wisely. Making it to the eight and a half minutes mark. Right now, EDGM making no mistakes whatsoever. Just slowly, slowly and clearly 
taking a bigger advantage and just took it from 1,000, 1,200, not allowing, not allowing DYG any opportunities to turn things around. Yeah. What does DYG need to do if they want to actually turn things a little bit? Well, well for me, actually, DYG is quite doing a great job. Yeah. Because they know that they need to wait till Lady Sun's hired up some items. Mm -hmm. But the thing that they do is not just being stayed there, do nothing. Actually, they're trying to do a lot of trades, like gain that red ball from the other side and also do some split up push. They're trying their very best, right? Like mm. we know that Ninja's ultimate right now is online, is available. Trying to find the position of where that Yukiota Chibanai is. Look at Ooh. that. Bad news for him, trying to take on that red buff. But the red buff isn't strong yet. Mm. Trying to control that. If EDGM can take that red, that second turret is going to fall very soon. Yeah, so let's see what DYG is going to counter it. Not much happening, everyone's just trying to chip on their health bars. Mm. Luncheon on air, right now it's gonna be Yuan trying to find the luncheon. He's blocking his ult, the mirror is on, but it's not going to be enough. Jinian pushes back. One more time, just trading around, like nobody's been extremely decisive in this little fight. Yeah, because at that time, that was exactly the mark time, about yep. 10 minutes. So no one wants to initiate the team fight, but not now. Look at that, the Armageddon comes in, putting on air a lot of people, but it's going to be Yen Mon that's going to be taken extremely low. Ning Chir still comes in, frogs his ulti, but that overlord it's going to be for dyg because right now they have the priority look at that the mirror is being proc yuan is going around They're trying waiting. to find on a lot of people that is not going to be enough jamming's kitty bomb forced him back and wow. that's going to be a good move for dyg look at that as i also just mentioned taking that overlord well for this team fight i need i need to highlight the ultimate down by Lu Wu. it's mm -hmm. quite good look at the positioning look at how he lands his ultimate down and use the flash plus with his first skill yeah. to strap down two of these enemies hp bar yeah exactly rock was taken extremely low right yeah that Lu Fu was vital for that yuan trying to find a solution trying to find a way to counter attack after but that's Shen Mengxi, right? Mm. That's why that Shen Mengxi is such a meta pick. Mm. The Kitty Bomb's dealing so much damage. The area of effect is so is so wide. And also for Shen Mengxi, he's like he first he can ensure that the mid wave won't like fall behind. Yeah. And also during the team fight, he's really good to leverage his AOE damage. They can't undertake it. They can't stand with Shimoshi's AOE damage. They can't, and right now DYG just found the solution of for the biggest problem that they had, how to level things up. And right now the gold difference has disappeared, and right now they're tied on 32,000 gold. Well, actually, I didn't expect that this game's gonna be such a tight game. Yeah. It feels like these two teams had fully prepared for their opponent. Very strategic. Yeah, I find it very, very strategic. There's not a lot of big fights, mm. but there's a lot of action going around. Mm -hmm. There's always 1v1s, 2v2s, yeah. but no one is just trying to be fatal. Nobody wants to be lethal in that moment. They just come in, chip on their and charge health bars, and then just run away. They know, like, for this time, what's going to be their biggest advantages, and they just use it. Look at that, Lu Fu is going to proc his ult, he's going to jump in, takes on three people. Now, now he's going to take on the Tyrant, but then Lu Fu is going to fall as well. Yuan is going to proc the mirror and he's going to come in to take Chuan's life away. We can see like the Yuan, he's just waiting, waiting beside. Oh, look at that, they spotted Ninja while he was trying to TP back to his crystal. Want to steal away the blue buff, but... Great mechanics from Yuan, right? Mm. Just waiting for the right moment for the smite. And also, like, from the last team fight, he just stand there and mm. waiting for the right moment to came in. And that's something, some of the characteristics that those core cool junglers need to have.
You need to be patient. Yes, ex yes, that's true. So he to trying to take on the tyrant, right? Like mm. he was very focused on the tyrant, not very focused on the other on the other fight. Oh. In the moment that Chuan just jumps in with his ultimate, mm. there was no one that could actually support him, yeah. trying to for, trying to to save him. <laughs> Chuan pays with his life, but then after after that, they decided just to trade that with a tyrant. Yeah. Wow, we can see the very first ma matchup that, they, that today we have. Now it's even gold, even tower, even neutral monsters. And even for those core tower. players, which are going to be those marksmen and jungler, they're quite even. Right? Look at that, look at Yang Yen Meng's position. Mm. He's able to provide so much vision, right? Like he really is able to keep everyone. Look at that, the Heaven's Sword is going to lock in two core players. But look at that, Xiao Yi is being able to jump away, not allowing Jin to come from behind. And EDG don't want to do those team fights in those complicated landforms. Mm -hmm. Because during that landforms, once Chuan, once Wu Bu landed his ultimate, well, that's going to be devastating. <laughs> that's true, right? Because <laughs> even though Ming could use Yi Xing's ultimate just to box everyone in, uh -huh. But what if you end up boxing a Liu Bu in there? Yeah. You come in trying to take to take on damage, and then he can counter attack with his ult. Yeah. So that's the reason why DJM don't want to do those big team fights during those fields. Oh, flash in! Try to lock up Liu Bu, but he failed it. Check Monkin. Fails. Look at that Monkin coming in, dealing a lot of damage. Jing is going to fall. Liu Bu is going to come in with the Fallen God, but he's taking extremely low as well. Rock is going to come in. He's going to take on that. It's going to be a one v one trade. The mm. YG is still on the hunt. Yeah, and we can see Ming act so aggressive. He's the one, he being the major, who's really relying on flash, but he used that flash as attack. Yeah. He just flashed in and tried to lock up Chuan. Flash is not only a, a tool for you to survive, right? Mm. Sometimes a flash is a good option as well, just to initiate fights. The fact that you are a mage and then you have a flash doesn't mean that you just need to keep it just to run away. Yeah. Be aggressive. Jump on each other's faces. Yeah, because like if you really know how to use that flash, it kind of like allow you to do instant attack. Mm -hmm. right? No one's going to predict that, oh, you're going to flash in. How dare you do that? But you just did it, so that's going to be unpredictable. Um, unpredictability. Mm. <laughs> 500 gold lead for DYG right now. Yeah, 16 not much. Minutes. It's just quite even. This game's quite tight. That's why. That, that's why. Like, I feel like the whole, uh. the whole process of the game has been just like a chess game. Mm. Like, it, this is this is not boxing, and this is not this is not UFC. I feel like this is just <laughs> really, really, really just being a chess game. Well, but in my perspective. Um, compare these two different compositions. Mm -hmm. The later for DYG, the better. The later for DYG, the better, as you're gonna have Lupu's damage. And also online. Lady Sun. And also Lady Sun as mm. well. So the late game for DYG is quite promising. That also means EDGM need to see some chances. They need to speed up. Or the later game won't be that good, especially for heroes like uh, Gong Sun Yu. Yuan as well, right? Like Yuan mm -hmm. is not going to be that lethal yeah. in the late game yeah. because then as most of the front laners are going to have, they're going to have most of most of their their armor, right? Mm. And it's going to be difficult for Yuan to really try to come in and just ambush someone. Trying to find that position of Lanchen is going to be a big problem for Yuan in the late game. Especially for Lanchen, for Lady Sun, we can see he already Pied up his pure sky. Yes. Pure sky that is going to be a crucial item to allow Lanchen to survive from an ambush from the, from the other side's assassin. Yeah, or in another word, it's more like he, it can allow him to escape from those first damage. Yeah. Which probably going to cost by Jing. Oh, oh, look at that. In. The flash in. The Armageddon is frog. Lanchen is going to survive. And now it's going to be that Yen Monk's. Flash is gonna be on cooldown for the next two minutes. Wow, Flash trade. Wow, quite fair. Mm -hmm. Because DYG's lost their uh, Lady Sin's Flash. Yeah, but now also... Yeah, now he's gonna have his Flash back for that Tempest Dragon fight. Mm. 
Yeah. It's going to be, it's, we're going to make it to 20. That's for uh, sure. That's for sure. And I'm almost certain that we're going to make it to longer than 25. <laughs> At the pace that everyone is playing right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're expecting to be starting game three already. And I feel like this game one is going to take us a very, very long while. And I guess something would happen during those fields or the sidelines. Because now, like, for each jungler, they're trying to do the split push, you see? Trying to gain some advantages. Wow! Monkey jumping in. Xiao Tun is being taken to half. Chuan is going to jump in with his ult. Now, Trinian is going to be able to escape, but Liu Pu is going to have to fall. It's going to be a 1 0 trade for EDGM, and they're going to have priority over this Tempest Dragon. The thing that EDGM did was like they didn't do it, like just go for it, do some instant kill. Um, yeah. Otherwise, they're going to lose the advantages. But you see, first they force Chuan Splash out. Yeah. And then try to initiate the team fight with ultimate provided by Meng Tian, which is going to be really crucial. They did not, they were not even thinking about just going for the back laners. They mm. just wanted to get the power play. Mm. They wanted to take either Xiao Tun or they wanted to take Lu Pu out. So they can have priority, not for the Tempest Dragon yet, mm. but for the Overlord. Yeah, especially they dealt the damage on Lu Bu. Mm -hmm. While in the late game, Lu Bu is going to be really devastating. Chuan not being able to make a lot of gold, right? Mm. At only 9,345. He's still a couple thousands away from being fully decked out. So, where's the advantages that EDGM gained from last Shadow Overlord? They chose to unleash the Vanguards on the bottom side, which also means they have the priority to first do something to the Tempest Dragon. Starbreaker, the last item for Yukio Tachibana in his, in his toolbox. Mm. It's the highest level of Pure Sky. 20 minutes. Everything could happen because for this team fight, it's gonna be an even team fight. You can see those flash for these two mages are both in cooldown. And right now we need to be able to see. Oh, look at that! Lancing has been taken Whoa. extremely low. The Armageddon is going to lock. Lancing in. Lancing is going to fall. Right now, let's look at Yukio Tachibana trying to run around. Because he's not going to be able to pull it. EDGM right now has the upper hand. It's going to be devastating as only Xiao Yi and Trinian are going to survive on this trade. Still chasing. They don't want to let DYG go since there's only two people remained. And those two core players already died. We can see Xiao Yi try to push back. And with the damage done by Xiao Houdun, they did it. Did it for a constellation effort, but what they're gonna do for the mid lane minions? The mid lane is going to fall, and right now it's gonna be a 2v3. Gunsun Lee is still alive. That's going to give EDGM the opportunity to try to go in. Trinian is gonna try to proc his ult, it's not going to be enough. You kill touch even a false one time. He resurrects just to come in to take one life. It's not gonna be enough, and the crystal is going to fall. Congratulations to EDG. Congratulations goes to the side of Shanghai EDGM. Mm. Like for this team, actually for today's performance, they're playing quite, what can you say, smart, you know? Yes. They do know how they do their strategy. They do, they do know how to execute their strategy. And they just do it pace by pace, step by step, no rush. Just do it patiently, seize for the right moment. Especially I want to highlight the performance done by Yuan, which is Jin. Mm -hmm. He's quite in his game, he's quite in his best condition. He just be patiently wait there and find the right moment, get in. Like for the last team fight, he just get in and straight forward to take down Shen Mengxi. Oh, the way that, the way that Lumbers initiated the fight, putting Lady Soon on air just for Rock to come in and then just to immediately just poke on Lady Soon's HP bar. Mm. That was critical as well, right? We yeah. talked a lot about that lumber pick from EDGM and at the end it just paid completely. And that's something to do with Lambert, this hero's passive. Mm -hmm. It can offer like extra armor and magical defense to his uh, allies in range. Yes, exactly. The same as his second ability is mm. going to make the damage that your opponents are going to be dealing just to be decreased as well. Mm. 
Yeah, so actually Lambert is quite a good choice for EDGM, especially not only they just use it to complete their CC, complete their solid front line, but also they take it away from DYG, which they really want that Lambert. Yes, true. The Yukio Tachibana strategy from DYG did not work out. Mm. They tried their best. Lady Sun did not have an opportunity against Gunsun Lee since the early stages of the game. And I feel like that was the turning point, right? Like the fact mm. that Gunsun Lee was just so massive, was just so much superior um, than her opponent in the marksman lane. Well, if DYG really do it, like they really want to shut down EGM in the early game, yep. then the first thing they need to do is prioritize the top lane, and also they need to ensure the bottom lane should be an even lane, mm -hmm. shouldn't like fall behind. So that's gonna be the turn point. So you think that it was a BP kind of, a BP kind of like, let's not call it a mistake, but do you think that it was a BP Let's just call it what it is. Do you think it was a BP <laughs> error or do you think that it was more of a game error? Um, I guess for EDGM, it's because they just let... Uh, EDGM, they did a really nice choice yep. that take away that Lambert, which is going to be the first reason. Mm -hmm. And then during the game, instead of saying DYG is not doing good, or we can say EDGM, they already predict yeah. what you want or what you want to do for the next step. So they always do one step be before. Mm -hmm. Like they already shut down all you want. And that's going to be like the most important reason for DYG lost this game. Yeah. Yeah. In my opinion, I believe that in terms of mechanics, Lady Sun was not able to beat that Gong Sun Lee and that <laughs> they needed to make a decision in there. Yeah. I believe that they should have just let that Lady Sun just move around earlier um, a little bit earlier in the game. Mm. MVP, EDGM, Ningzhi on the Monkey. 26% damage taken. And we can see, like, the, the first turning point for EDGM was that they first choose to swap the lane, right? Mm -hmm. They let Ningzhi, let uh, Meng Tian to go for the bottom lane and just rotate Gong Sun Li for the top. When, it, when I remember when Lady Sun just saw that monkey coming out of the bush, <laughs> that's a huge surprise. It's was, just like not, what? Ex not expecting that at all. <laughs> the superiority that you have, mm. Liu Pu does not make the four before Ningzhi. Mm. Ningzhi knows that in this wave, uh, he needs to come in and try to take on a kill. Yeah. So that's something we said. Like EDGM did perform well for today. Yeah. They. Every step, every movement that they know what they are really go for, and they just can predict what like their opponents want. Mm. They just shut it down. They just shut down any other ideas that mm. Shenzhen DYG had. Ming being so aggressive. Yeah. Love the way that he played that easy, right? Flash in, use Flashing the second in. ability, try to like do some control and complete it by his ultimate. In this meta, a lot of the mages just become utility, right? Mm. Like you just use them just for their abilities and not that much for the damage. And if you know that your role is just to be to initiate or just to use your ultimate or use your second ability, well, just try to use it in a more aggressive way. Mm. Give your opponent something that they were not expecting. Yeah, so actually for this game, I guess these two teams are really in a quite good condition. Mm -hmm. While for DYG, maybe their marksman can do better for the next time, but still like those conditions for both of the teams are quite, quite good. All right, DYG is still going to stand in third place, but EDGM is going to tie them on two points. Such a huge increasement for the rank you know before this game they were like ran at eight eight yeah and now they bomb up to four bo1 <laughs> it's going to be nine games you just need you just need to be able to try your very best to come in and try to take the wins at mm. the end of the day carry as many points as you can yeah so now our interview is ready let's take a look who's going to be with us Hello Rock, can you say hello to everyone? Hello, hello everyone, I'm Rock. First of all, I want to ask you, I saw you today's situation is actually very good. Have you ever been prepared for today's competition before? Um, I haven't been prepared for anything, I just want to play my own game. 
Okay, so our first question was, it seems that ED Gems really in a great condition, so is there any special preparation for today's game? But Rock just said, well, nothing special, do our best, and that's it. All right, then the next question would be, like for today's game, you played Gong Sun Li pretty well, and for that rotation, how's the communication goes during that time? Uh, 看到你们中期的话,其实你的公孙离和这个蒙田的话是提前做了一波换线嘛,当时对内的沟通是什么样子的呢? Uh, Alright, so for the strategy, it's because the red buff just spawned, so he wants to use that red spawn to accelerate the pace and help to break that balance for EDGM. Alright, so the last question would be, uh, now you've already done several games, so for the next series, which team is going to be the most team that you want to play with? Uh, uh, <laughs> sure. Okay, again, nothing special. Just go for it. Do our best. <laughs> 好的, 谢谢你接受我们的采访啊, Amazing performance. Too cool, like a cool man. <laughs> very, very, very cool person coming in and just showing us how everything is done. Mm -hmm. Amazing performance by Rock, amazing performance by EDGM taking the victory in our game one. A great way how to start the day, right? Mm. Just the way that this game was played is going to show us that everyone is going to try their very best today to change their, to change the pace that the yesterday was played. Yeah, exactly. All right. Game one is done, game two is coming. We're gonna have a little break and then we're gonna be back. Stay online. Game two, and we are back. It's going to be Beijing Weibo against our friends 
from CNWE. Mm. These two teams, they already had their first showcases yesterday. And um, we and CHG, they had quite a good result. WE won the first team game play against Hero. Yep. And um, for WB, he played against EDGM, he won the game. So actually there's one one point in their hand. Uh, one win and one loss for the two of them, right? Mm. Uh, Beijing Weibo being able to win against EDGM and then EDGM being able to win against CNW. <laughs> Everything seems so complicated. You know, yesterday after the result coming out, everyone was just like, why it looks like a circle? <laughs> you it's beat crazy. Me, I beat you. <laughs> it's crazy. There's nothing that you can say more than it's craziness. So, Let's see who's going to be the team that is going to make it first to two points, right? Like whoever yeah. that takes the win in this one is going to make it to two points and it's going to be able to tie mm. the two teams that we just saw today, EDGM and DYG. Well, for the lineups, it still keeps the same. Mm -hmm. Lineups are going to be the same. WE is going to go with Anne as a top laner shadow as their jungler. Xian Shi is going to play in their mid lane. Pei En is going to play as their bottom laner and 556 is going to play as their support. Mm, and as for Beijing Weibo, their lineup still keep the same. And there's something that we need to pay attention to, to today's matchups, especially for this one, going to be the battle played against by these two marksmen. Pei En versus Chao Xi. That's going to be really explosive. Pei En and Xiao Xi, the two of them yesterday had um, average performance. Mm. They had they had um, not a bad day, not their not their best as well. Mm. Um, they were important in the games that they won, mm. but in the games that they lost as well, they took some of the responsibility, right? Yeah. So well, let's just see, like if they really recovered from yesterday's loss, or do they already got into their best states? Yeah. got into their best condition, that's going to be vital. Beijing Weibo yesterday in their last game mm. against AG, right, against Chengdu AG, that Xiao Xi and Xing Yu master Lupin and Lupin number seven combo mm. um, did not work really well. Um, yeah. There were some mistakes, I would say, in the mm. mid lane mm. and that were not the created openings for AG um, to take the victory. So that's something that if they want to play that combo again today, they need to think about. Yeah, because like yesterday they pair up with Luban, Luban number seven mm -hmm. with Mai Shilanui, yep. which is quite as assassin mage instead of those utility mages. And that's gonna cause some problem, especially when they're four behind. Hard to deal with those minion waves. Game two BP starting right now. Xi'an WE is going to be taking the blue side. Beijing Weibo is going to take the red side. Uh, Meng Tian being the first ban. <laughs> Go for Zimo. <laughs> what you Zimo, right? <laughs> what the second ban also gonna aim in at Zimo? I don't. I hope that not giving him any options, just forcing Zimo just to play something. Um, a Lu Bu playing yeah. Xia Hou Dun playing a Lian Po. Yesterday Zimo played Lian Po in that last game as well, right? Mm. It seems like. WE want to limit the most hero pool, mm -hmm. or like they want to force them or to pick something reactive. Yeah, not something that meta, right? Yeah. Like probably they will not allow you to have a meta pick on top lane, mm. but that means that they will have a meta pick for either mid lane or for bottom lane. Look at that. My Shiranui is going to be the option. Uh, Beijing Weibo might be thinking about taking pair with Lam. Wow. If if they want to pair up with them, they also leave a question whether they're going to take out Lu Bu as the third pick. Because that's going to be a really aggressive composition if they really done that. Two assassins, right? Mm. Lam being a jungler assassin and then Mai Shiranui being a mid lane mage assassin. Mm, let's see. Let's see what they can do, right? Like very aggressive, extremely, extremely aggressive. Dianjie, like for Dianjie as the boxman, actually it's always going to be a winning lane. Yeah, I guess Marco Polo, <laughs> Dianjie has got more mobility, right? We mentioned that Marco Polo um, can deal a lot of damage, very, very fast damage. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, that normally is just going to happen in the big fights 
Yeah. And the win in, in the in the laning stages of the game, mm. he's going he's going to need a lot of the support that Tramfe can give him. Yeah. So that's the reason like why like Marco Polo is pretty good at team fight but mm -hmm. not in laning phase. Well, if we if we take a good look at those ban, we can see from WE side they well they really did a lot of targets on Zumor today. They did. They well, did they do it for Zumor full ban. Oh. They they do not want him to have any options, right? They do not want to. They don't don't, don't want him to have a chance to turn things around. Mm. I can see Beijing W being uh, Beijing Weibo just trying their best to force. Uh, WE to pick Shen Mengxi for mid lane. True. They want you to pick Shen Mengxi as mid lane um, because they already got Mai Xi Lanui yes, exactly. for their um, majors. And like more surprising is because they still let Zemo to be the counter pick. You see how like trustworthy Zemo is and how like he has those high priority in WB. Xiao Xi is going to pick on that Master Lupin for Xing Yu. Mm. Mm, Master Lupin yesterday not not being a, not having a good performance. Let's see if they can turn things around right now, pairing it with a Deer and Jie. Mm. Now we can see the only counter pick has left for the more and see what kind of. Top laners that we want Lianpo? to let them want to use it. Then what's gonna be a nice choice? Xia Houtun. Not bad. Not bad. Xia Houtun. We just saw it in our previous game, just playing as a support. Right now, mm. we're gonna see Xia Houtun playing as a top laner. Yeah. Well, he usually to be played as a top laner, and mm -hmm. because of his, it's quite stable. Yes. Right. For this, it's all around. And for its ability, it has the ability to initiate the team fight and also has the ability to be a quite solid front line. Xi'an WE is going to have the mid lane advantage as mm. Zhou Yu is going to be one of the fastest heroes cleaning mid lane, cleaning wave, right? Yeah, one of the most fast heroes. Well, the only thing that you need to pay attention is that after Zhou Yu gained the priority to move faster, they need to pay attention to Mai Shi Lan Nui mm -hmm. to check whether she's like ambushing in some places or not. They need to like pay attention to where Mai Shi Lan Nui's position is. That's one of the things why Mai Shi Lan Nui is a good counter against mages that can clean wave so fast. That's it. It's all right, I'll, I'll let you clean wave quickly. Yeah. I will allow you to have that priority. Mm. But then when you're gonna try to move to bottom or top lane, uh -huh. you're gonna have to make a huge, huge way, way around because yeah. you might not be able to just walk through the river. It just feels like you're talking to your tricky kids. Like mm -hmm. your kids say, mom, I just want to go out. I don't want to stay here anymore. And your mom says, okay, you go, but you, <laughs> you never want to come back again. <laughs> Letting them experience and then just see what they can, what they can do. Xi'an uh, WE against Beijing Weibo are game two. Right now, I, we can see that Xi'an WE is going to be a little aggressive in the early stages as they're going to have double smite, mm. trying to slow down Lamb. Yeah. One of the things that about that double smite is they are, they're not going to be looking for trying to invade and take the red buff. Mm. They're not going to try to just like go in for a big objective. Probably they're just gonna go for the birds or for the bird, right? Or yeah, for those small camps because once you already go down, take down those camps that mm -hmm. also can harass a little bit to Lam, slow him down to level up. Slow him down. That's going to be the key. Game two. Let's see what's gonna happen. Is it going to be the same as our game one, a very strategic game, or is it going to be full of energy since minute one? <laughs> we can see like from Beijing Weibo, the first round they let Dianjie to be at the mid. And because they have like numbers in upper hand, they they just make it to an even minion wave. Look at that scene, you not allowing 556 to go into the jungle and try to invade. Those Great really job by seeing you in there. Look at that. Ooh. That's the has been taken extremely low. Won't be able to survive. He's trying his very best. And it's going Ooh. to be seeing you that's going to allow him. But no, at the Proxy's Flash, jumps in and takes first blood. 
Well, for this kind of bros, the the most thing that I want to highlight is about Qian Shi. Actually, for his Zhou Yu, after he got his back up to the top lane, he flashed in and used his ability to push Zemo back. Wow. Horrible way for Zemo to start the game, right? <laughs> very, very like... difficult. I love the way that Xingyu was paying attention on 5-5-6. Five, five, uh. He did not want Drum Fate to invade, uh. but at the same time just created a superiority on top lane that Zemo was not expecting. Like such a crowd gathering on the top lane. We pull back, one versus three. One versus three, Tian Shi is going to fall. Bad news, bad news for the mid laner. Yeah, maybe it's because uh, Weibo already known that your flash still in cooldown since you use it to initiate that draws happened on the top lane before they just catch that chance. Wow, Ooh. look at that, Marco Polo taking extremely low right now. It's going to be a two against two. Marco Polo is just going to try to jump in. But we talked about that in the moment that he locks in the angle of his ability, he won't be able to change that. Allowing Chelsea that has way more mobility just to move left and right. And also the basic damage that can be dealt in the early game, Dune just gonna win the upper hand. Mm -hmm. Has way lane, more damage, right? Like Marco Polo, Marco Polo very dependent on mm -hmm. that Doomsday. Yeah. Let's check. Will be pulled back. Ah, one more kill. It's going to be Shadow this time that is going to fall. Marco Polo is going to follow him as well. Things looking very bad for WE. Well, we can see how tight the coordination is from Weibo. They really know what they want to do. They really know what they are heading to. They're just gathering together and like in got invade into the opponent's field together. Weibo One taking kills up and down, left and right. Look mm. at that. Marco Polo trying. Shadow is going to be pulled back. And then after that, it's not enough. Mashirano with the flash. Flashing in straight into his face. That's the reason why they picked that Mashirano as their first one, right? And also, Mashirano is one of those signature heroes for Hua Jun. Mm -hmm. He's really good at playing with this hero. And in the middle. Yeah. Trying to get the vision. Trying to get the vision. Gets the vision, but <laughs> look at that. Uh, you gotta... Take it to half of his HP. Yeah. Oh, and that's something we can talk about with Ata. Mm -hmm. uh, we see the lost HP gonna temporarily like be remained as a shield. So he can actually use those targets to help him get recovered. Tower shields have been shattered. Catapults moving out. Four minutes mark trying to ambush Marco Polo, trying to surround him. Mm. WB has just set camp on the red buff jungle. Yeah, pull him back, but John Fei used his ultimate, just push everyone back. I trying, has not here. Trying his very best just to protect that red buff, right? Mm. But that's kind of wasty because like, it's very crucial to let WE have that ultimate. But they have no idea. They and have... Yan right now already in level 9. Mm. He's got a gigantic level advantage compared to everyone else. Already has Axe of Torment. Look at that. Three people from WB coming in, trying to invade, trying to control that blue buff. Again. Got him rescued. Well, they successfully steal away this blue buff. We see that we really have got some plan. Goes in, smite down, but now aiming to Zhou Yu. Zhou Yu's base attack is too pain. Mm, Shadow can do nothing. Trying to support, trying to su survive. It's not gonna be enough. Everything is looking red around the map as Beijing Weibo is taking all the resources and taking the kills. It just made me feel like all those pace yeah. or like all those movements, it is WB who's hand over WE. He's always like move one step earlier. It's their choice to like whether we're gonna initiate those team fight or not. There's nothing that WE can do right now. Yeah, that's it. C and WE right now can just try their very best just to collect on some resources, but they don't have damage, they don't have levels, they don't have items. 
what else can they do? Nanyang right now is gigantic. Mm. And also, the view is already being so tired about dealing with those minion waves. Yes. Since Nanyang has those gigantic advantages, he's gonna be fearless once he do the split push. Look at that, one more time. Atta's gonna proc his ult, trying to run away, but then he's gonna be my Shiranui with the fans, gonna take him down. Wow. What happened to WB? They show such aggressive. Oh, right now, it's gonna proc his ult. TLC is gonna try to run away. Uses his second ability. Uses the Master Lupin. It's not gonna be enough as Musashi Miyamoto comes in. It's gonna be a 1v1 trade. 1v1 trade, but Noyan's still alive, so he can easily just take this red buff away. Poor. Poor Miyamoto Musashi, he had no idea what he had lost. He had already lost those buffs for like five buffs in a row. That Miyamoto Musashi right now is not gonna be a core member of the fights later because right now he has died so many times. Like every single time that he dies and then he's gonna go back to base, all the time that he's going to, that he's going to waste yeah. waiting to revive, this allows Nuan Yang just to keep taking his resources. Yeah. Shadow level 10, Nuan Yang already level 12, making it to level 13. Yeah, such a gigantic gap. Well, due to the composition that WE just selected, Miyamoto Musashi, he should be a threat to Dianjie, to Qiaoxi. But due to those deficits that he's mm -hmm. suffering right now, can't do that during the team fight. Yeah, but here in the TLC can use his second ability. He can use the master, the master Lupin's chains to take him away. Yeah. The Imperial Order comes in taking Anne to one third of his HP bar. Wow. So for W right now, Marco Polo need to undertake. Shadow is being brought back. Things looks not that good to WE right now. Maybe the mid. Power, they're just gonna let it go. They, they cannot let that one go. If they let if they let that one go, then what for they're gonna have a throw you combo, right? <laughs> like the idea of that throw you is that the mid turret is gonna stay there for as long as possible. Yeah. Oh nice movement. Killing spree goes to my Shiranui. My Shiranui takes one more kill. It's it's just the time issue. Wow, though that we really don't want to give up this mid tower, but the fact is, due to those deficits that they are suffering right now, they they have no idea. It's just time issue. It's just a time issue. Mm. That's right. Oh, Chelsea being taken extremely low. Miyamoto Musashi just taking that kill. That might be gigantic for Shadow Seeing you trying to start the fight. One more time, Mashirino with the flash comes in. It's going to be wide. Marco Polo trying to take her down. It's going to fall. And it's going to be one more kill for Nguyen Yang. It's going to be a double kill for the man. Well, it's already a really nice chance for WE. And they do catch it. But again, because of the gold deficit, they can't successfully make that kill. And we can see how fast the support is how fast the backup is for Beijing Weibo. They're just gathering together swiftly and let Nui Yang get in. Instantly got double kill. Now, even though, even though Chelsea fell, right? Mm. But then the W had to pay that with their jungler and their marksman. So it was a very good trade. Look at that. 2v1, all the abilities that were just used to try to finish on Chelsea. Seeing you know that he's tanky enough to take the damage. And then just that, my Shiranui, the double assassin combo yeah. that uh -huh. Beijing w just, WB just decided to take. Again, another team fight just happened in the mid. You see how huge Nui Yang is to be a threat to WE. Tian Shi just fell in there and then his precious mid turret fell with him. As we mentioned, it's just a time issue. They don't want to let it go, but we can see like there's already a 8,000 gold lead goes to WB. 8,000 gold lead, and right now they've got the doors open to take this Dark Tyrant. Yeah, it's 10 minutes mark. And after they take down this Shadow Tyrant, they've even been more powerful, be more devastating when they're during this team fight. What's John Fist doing? He's like... Just standing wow. right over there. He tried to use his might to come in and try to steal that Tyrant. But... He made the gamble and did not pay off. 
Yeah, but the point is, in this kind of time, in this specific moment, he don't need to hazard to, to that tyrant. Yeah, he doesn't have to. Yeah, he doesn't have to. As long as you're alive, you're helping your team. Yeah. As long as you're alive. For most, first you need to stay alive. Anyway, so after such a huge deficit, now W is going to be a little bit or really hard to deal with the situation right now. So she just being extremely dangerous in there, right? Mm. Like he just landed two Imperial Orders straight to Marco Polo mm. and to Qian Shi. Mm. Landing those abilities, if he could have just jumped in, that's sort of easy, easy kills again. And for Marco Polo, it's not easy for him to get in. Mm -hmm. For Marco Polo, these kind of heroes, he can do some poking, but we can see because of the gold deficit, actually it's the most really tanky enough. It's really solid. He's going to be like flagrant, just be there. <laughs> 7,000 gold already for Zumo, right? Yeah, no one can push him back. He just stand there just like, you bent me for two top laners. <laughs> I like, love it. Stand there. I love the option that Chelsea is going for, right? Like he's going uh, with Blood Rage. Yeah. Blood Rage for his next item. Mm. That's going to allow him to deal more damage. Look at that Atta disappears from the map. The Blood Lost is going to be proc. It's not going to be enough. Right now, Trump is going to fall as well. The turret is going to follow him. It's only Shadow, Tien Shin and Pei and trying to protect the high ground. More dragons are on their way. And also, there's a Vanguard spawn in the mid wave. What can WE do to deal with it? Now, again, want to initiate the team fight, purify the pull back, purify the ultimate. He can escape from it, but what about Miyamoto Musashi? He just get in, but this is a one versus four. Rampage goes to land. There's still a Vanguard at the top lane. What's gonna Marco will do without that ultimate, without the purify? Crystal just be taken down. Victory goes to Beijing Weibo. Beijing Weibo being a landslide. A gigantic Beijing Weibo presentation. Great performance for the boys. Take the victory, make it all the way to two points. Wow, we need to admit like for today's game, it just made me feel like Beijing Weibo just totally lead the game, lead the whole pace. And they just really know how to tear their opponents up, how to like manipulate their opponents. Good performance for them, right? Like Nguyen Yan, the way that he was just farming around non-stop since the beginning. Yeah. And great, great, great rhythm for them. After yesterday's loss, after yesterday's performance in that last game, the boys went back to their hotels and this is the kind of Beijing Weibo that we are expecting in every single BO1. And this game is quite a big proof to them to let everyone know the strong, the tough, Beijing Weibo come back again. Congratulations to the boys. Sad for Xi'an, for Xi'an WE, right? Mm. Xi'an WE, they tried their very best. They tried to find solutions to the problems, but didn't work out. It just made me feel like under being put under such a huge pressure, mm -hmm. that we just lost their pace. They don't know what they're gonna do. They don't yeah. have like quite a core player or like they don't have a main strategy about yes. how we're gonna turn this around. They have no idea. They are just kind of lost during the game. I think that Shadow was the, the completely targeted since the beginning. Mm. And when you have a Miyamoto Musashi as a jungler, you need to have advantage. And Lam and Nguyen Yam just completely just taking everything. Yeah. It didn't matter that Zemo was targeted at the beginning, right? Like, Zemo <laughs> was targeted at the BP. Zemo was targeted at the beginning of the game. And his teammates were able just to stand up and mm. try to help him out. And that's one thing that why we all always consider Beijing Weibo as such a strong team. Yeah. It's not because if one of the players is quite me mechanical, it's not because one of those players is quite talented, it's because five of them, all of them, just being such a huge threat to their opponent. Yeah. Beijing Weibo, another team that made it to the round one of our KPL qualifiers. Sadly for them, they weren't able to win on that best of seven. Mm. And they were put into this bloodbath that is gonna be during these four days. <laughs> True, and um, after seeing this performance that they gave us, now I'm quite confident with Beijing Weibo right now.
Yeah, mm. uh, they they showed what they're what they're meant, what they're supposed to be showing every single time. Mm. They're a strong team. They just need to be stable, and then hopefully after the nine games, I would say that they are a very hot pick for taking one of those four tickets to the next group stage. Mm. Bajuan, mid laner from Beijing Weibo is going to take the MVP, 27.5% damage. Gigantic Huajuan as well. For this game, actually you can see the Mai Shlanui he played. Mm -hmm. For this rotation he did, you see like, he's always be there, being such a huge threat and he always want to use his skills to do some burst damage. Yeah. He knew exactly whom to look for, right? Mm. Just completely locking in on Shadow and look at that. He's going to proc the flash. Boom! Straight <laughs> up, Marco Polo launched on air. Take down, set back home. One more time, look at that. The fan comes in, taking the mid laner away, taking that Marco Polo away as well. And you can see, like, from those big team fights, actually, those CC are quite completely be used or mm -hmm. completely be um, followed up yep. by his teammates, right? Everyone just doing that control step by step, and every damage, every CC just come up together. Kwajun knows that he doesn't need to be starting fights, right? Mm. Like, Kwajun knows that his job is going to be the same as Nuan Yang. Mm. In the moment that the fight starts, Right after Xiao Tun Si Mo, or after seeing you have been soaking in so much damage, they know that they need to jump in and then just take away mm. their backlaners. Yeah, and um, that's maybe one of the reasons why Weibo chose to show such a aggressive uh, composition combined with both Lam and also Maishan. Agent Weibo making it to two points after mm. three games. Right now, they're going to be tied in third place. So actually things goes pretty well to Beijing Weibo. And one thing that you just mentioned is like being stable. That's quite important to all of those teams, being stable. Yeah, of course, mm. stability. Mm. In this meta where we are always just favoring the mid laners that can always clean way fast, right? <laughs> We're always saying like the options here, Shen Mengxi, Zhou Yu, Zhao Jun, uh, those mid laners that can clean wave and then allow them to rotate. We can see that my Shiranui would be a very good interesting option against them. Mm. And if you can really master this hero that can bring you a victory. Yeah, mm. true. Now, let's move on with our game after interviews. So after game interviews, let's see who we got. We got Zimo from Beijing Weibo. Hello, Zimo. Let's give you a hand. Hello, I'm Beijing Weibo Zimo. 啊,好,那第一個問題想問一下,在這個班pick環節的時候,看到他們對手其實是兩班都針對到了你嗎?對此你有什麼想說的嗎? Uh, 呃,也沒什麼說了吧,就是就是正常打就行了。Okay, so our first question was like during the ban pick phase, actually their opponents are uh, aiming at the mall and ban away several top laners and what he wanted to say towards their opponents and the just said, nothing special, just let them do it. <laughs> let them come. <laughs> yeah. So uh well the second question would be we can see like after yesterday's matchup, actually today you guys really buck up and did a better uh, performance, what, what's the secret of doing that? Uh,我们看到在昨天其实最后一场实力之后呢,但是今天看到你们状态非常的好啊,请问你们昨天是有做什么复盘或者有做什么准备吗?呃,大家就是把状态调整一下嘛,就是把比赛当成最后一场来打
<laughs> straight to the point. Yeah. Straight to the point. When you are confident and then when you know that your destiny is in your hands, mm. there's not that many things to say. Yeah, just like nothing special. We just do our best and that's it. Perform well. Sure. Mm. That's true. Well, let's check on the highlights from this game too. There's a couple details that we want to share with everyone. So whenever that you go online on the game, like you can always try your very best to imitate what the professionals are doing, right? Mm. Look at that. Right over there. This is very important. That was at the minute, not even one minute of the game. Seeing you being there trying to do, trying to, to stop from 556 to move in, allowed CNC to know that the most HP bar was very low. So just CNC being able to clean the wave and move in is exactly what you want to do in this meta. Yeah, and that's actually a highlight done by Qianshi, done by WE. Look at that Huajin coming from, from the red buff mm. jungle. Comes in, and the double, double assassin. That double assassin strategy is <laughs> lethal. That's, we can, like, we can highlight this tight, the smooth coordination between these two junglers, between these two core players. All right. Game three is going to bring us Shanghai EDGM against Jinan RW. Let's have a little break and let's be back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to today's third game. EDGM play against RW. We can see like we already saw the performance that EDGM offered us from today's 
first game that they play against DYG at the first round and they successfully won that game by using Meng Tian paired up with Long Bo. And also we can see like t for today, ED Gems are showing their aggressiveness. They're trying to gain themselves more chances which is going to be a really good sign for them. So on the other side, we can talk a little bit more about Jina RW. Well, today's going to be the second day and for yesterday's performance, RW quite surprised us while well, they had two games for yesterday and one win, one loss. And for the last game they played yesterday, they played against Guangzhou TTG and they won that game in quite a smooth pace. It just feels like RW really did a lot of preparation for today's KIC for this tournament. We can see RW, they try to prioritize their bottom lane, uh, which is going to be yesterday's Dianjie, which is going to be played by Hua Yun. And he really undertake that responsibility and help RW to gain that victory. So for today's game, actually we we might see two different types of playing style. Because for these two teams, I, I know that a lot of you may already know that EDGM are playing quite aggressively. So might on this time, on this round, on the red side, they still gonna be consistent with the composition that they selected for the last time, for the last turn, which is gonna be two very solid tank to be the front lane and also paired up with some aggressive winning lane for those marksmen or for those junglers. And on the other side for our for yesterday's performance, they're trying to do those pushing forward strategy rather than doing, rather than initiate those big team fight. It seems like they really prefer to just show such a great protection to Hua Yun and protect him to push forward by using those minion waves. Yes, let's wait and see if Jin and RW can keep showing us the great performance that they had yesterday. And let's see if Shanghai EDGM already taking one victory today. Can they make it two? Let's Can they see. make it two? Because after today's game, actually, EDGM is going to finish most of their games, most mm -hmm. of their chances. Yeah, right. this is going to be their fifth game mm. in, the, in the series out of nine. This is going to be their second game of today. Mm. Let's see if they can make it into one more point, make, taking them all the way to three. And to our surmise, we suppose EDGM just want to be consistent with the last composition that they selected in the first round, which is going to be Meng Tian paired up with Lambu. Let's see, will they do that? Or will they change to another thing? Master Lupin seems hmm. to be the option right now. Hmm. Master Lupin, Meng Tian, Shen Meng Xi. Hmm. Hmm. Well, quite solid but they need something more aggressive. They need some core players. They need yeah. some core heroes, which are going to be the marksman and the jungler. They want to use these two positions to do the counter pick. They're not going to have Lupin number seven. Definitely, for sure. RW was like, you want to finish it? No. <laughs> but then see, we know Meng Tian, mm. one of the best combinations would be Jing, right? Jing is mm. still an option, still out there. Could be an option for them for EDGM trying to play that gene in there as a combo with Meng Tian. Yeah, that's gonna be a really nice choice. Yeah. So let's see. Well, they just take Jin because we saw the performance. We saw Yuan how he performed for the first game. He's really in his good mood right now. Yukio Tachibana is going to be the option. Ooh, they oh. wow. Well, after we saw those band picks they already did, mm -hmm. after we saw the positions they are already settled, yeah. I believe this game is going to be explosive. Everyone just do it head to head. You can see it. The game is going to be explosive. The option from RW, Dong Huan Taiyi, mm. Dong Huan Taiyi to try to protect Gong Sun Li. Is it going to be enough as you were going to have Meng Tian on the other end? The thing about that Forsaken contract, mm. the, the ultimate option um, for Tung Huan Tai, mm. if it locks down on Meng Tian, Meng Tian might even become tankier than that Tung Huan Tai, and that Tung Huan Tai is going to die before even <laughs> Meng Tian is going to disappear. Yeah, that's something really important for those heroes, for Tung Huan Tai, because once he suppresses someone, 
it's going to be a H bar trade. Mm -hmm. So once the one, the target that's surprised by you is much more tanky than you, what are you going to do? <laughs> You're die first, right? <laughs> Let's wait and see. Dinan RW is going to go with Song, Aoshen, Chen Feng, Hua Yun, and Putsi. Putsi is going to be playing support. Mm. Let's see if he can allow Hua Yun to have more options. We've seen already to in, after today that then when Lady Sun does not have mm. a big advantage at the beginning, when mm. Lady Sun cannot farm the way that she needs to farm to get into the mid game, the damage is not going to be that big a threat. Yeah. And actually from those compositions, we can see RW did some change because if we go through those compositions that they have for yeah. yesterday, these were not that kind of aggressive uh, yes. composition. It's more like they just want to make sure they're just smoothly form up and just push the lane. The most important goal for them is to take in down those towers. Mm -hmm. But on the contrary, we can see for today's first performance that they're gonna do, they showed us such a early game playing style. Yeah, but very much aggressive, right? Uh. Very, very much aggressive from the side from RW. They know they need to go all in. Mm. And come on, there's nothing to defend in here. <laughs> they played yesterday two games. They had a good win yeah. against Guantro TTG. Mm. Um, they could not beat Chandu AG, but taking a dub right now against Shanghai DGM mm. would put them in two points out of three games. Yeah, if they won it, mm. that's going to be a huge chance for them to make it through. So let's take a look. Anyway, like in short, these two teams, they're going to be explosive for this game, especially after upgrade to level four. After they make it to level four, right? Like mm. the rank uh, of that Meng Tian is going to level up a lot right yeah. after level four. Let's see what Ata can do in that top lane. The same as for Dong Huang Tai Yi from the blue side. So let's just take a look. Wow. We can hear those crowds. The crowd going crazy for yeah. their Jinan RW and for their Shanghai EDGM. The first two minutes are going to be critical for EDGM, right? Yeah. Because RW, RW has put C that before level, before level four, it's not going to be a huge threat. Mm. If Monkin can make it to level four before Song, that's going to be another power play. Let's see, Yukio Tachibana starts on the blue buff. Mm. So it so. means that for the two minutes mark, mm. he's going to be already there in top lane waiting to see what Meng Tian can do. Yeah, and what's more, we can see both of the junglers, their passing routes is the same. Yeah. From the red buff to, uh, from the blue buff to the red one. Yeah, both of them are going to clash mm. on the top lane in about 15, 20 seconds time. That's something to do with the ultimate that we've just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Once Meng Tian just upgrade to level four, that's gonna be the first chance for EDGM to call for attacking. Exactly, and that could happen at any moment. As right now, we can see Yukio Tachibana on top lane already moving in, trying to spot where Ata is. Ooh, want to initiate those brawls and force out Yen Ming's flash. Yen Ming's flash Yen is going to be forced out. Fuji mm. is still on level two, is going to have to proc his flash to run away. Cooldown of 120 seconds. Well, we can see Rock is really in his condition. Yeah, he's been so good today, right? Like, oh. First game was an amazing performance. Oh. And right now, even though he's facing uh, Kung Sun Lee and Tung Huan Tai combo in here, like, not looking bad, not looking weak at all. Yeah, and even more, we can see Hua Yun already used his frenzy, but he didn't shut down Rock's HP bar. Yeah. So that's quite, wow, impressive. After the first two minutes are gone, nothing that EDGM could do mm. um, in their strongest moment of the game, right? Like that two minutes mark was critical for them. Mm. They could not take any profit, any benefits from that. And let's see how the pattern of the junglers is going to change after it. Because after all, these two teams for these two compositions are going to be really explosive. Everything could happen, and once it begins, it's going to be big team fight. Look at that, it's going to be Yen Mong that is going to be locked down, it's going to pay, and it's going to be first blood for Jinan RW. 
It's a quite smart movement, quite nice cash done by RW because they know Lu Wan's flash still in cooldown, mm -hmm. so they just catch the chance. They just have to go for it. Like you need to have that kind of information, right? Mm. For a lot of people who are new to our game, communication and how to transfer that information to your teammates is vital when making this kind of decisions. Putsi already on level four. His ultimate is available, not his flash though. Oh. Suppressed, going down, but it's exactly what we talked about. Yen Mong being tanky enough to take that forsaken contract. Putsi is going to fall, is going to level things to 9,700, 9,800 gold. The reason why Putsi tried to use the ultimate to suppress Lu Ban, mm -hmm. it is because he will gain extra damage down by those turrets. Yeah. But he seems like forgot it's already, it's still before four minutes. That also means Lu Ban's gonna be under the protection offered by that turret. Well, sad for him. Mm. That's the problem when he when he just used his flash mm. at the beginning, right? Like he could have actually just waited for Master Lupin to lock him in and then use his flash to go on Lady Sun. Mm. But he need he just wasted his flash in the first one in the first minute and a half of the game. Yeah. And his flash was still in CD. Oh but on the other hand, good news is well he saved it. Well maybe, <laughs> right? <laughs> Everything has like two sides. Every corn has two sides. <laughs> it depends on it depends on how you want to see it. Yeah. And it depends how he's gonna use it. If he just save it but never use it, that's gonna be useful. Yeah. Ninja being taken extremely low. He does not use his ult yet. He knows that he wants to keep that ult if to fight mm. for the tyrant or the overlord. And now Uchi, he has his flash right now. Yeah, that's gonna be the, exactly the time we mentioned about. Here comes Ata. Look at that song coming from behind. It's going to come in. They're not gonna try to nail down the EDGM players, but that turret is going to fall. It's going to be a bottom and top lane trade Destroy for the turrets. It's gonna be a fair trade, Destroy tower for tower. Now. From the, from now on, everything just wanna well go chaotic. Because since Hua Yun, since Gong Sun Li is released from the bottom lane, actually that's gonna be a good news to RW. Yeah. You need to understand the timing of mm. the game, right? Like the game has different stages right after Gong Sun Li is out of that lane in stage. Mm allowing her to move around that's when the big fights when we're gonna have a lot more um, a lot more fighting in other areas yeah for heroes like Gong Sun Li he need freedom he needs yes. to be liberal because that also means he can like accelerate the pace he can lead something Ao Shen's farming speed is not being as fast as Yuan that's actually some problem that we yeah. solve for today because that's exactly the same thing that happened from the the formal match. Yes, exactly. Like they're going, they're trying, mm. um, but the difference on the junglers is going to the, the speed that they that they just farm mm. is going to define the rhythm of the game. Yeah, it's more like a one-one solo, not yeah. like you are doing a melee fight. It's more like you're just having sort of competition about who's gonna fall me off quicker, who's gonna fall me off faster. That also means who gonna, who's gonna offer much more damage during the team fight. Tell you, the Flames of War trying to take in that turret down to half. But that's gonna be a little difficult since these two mages that both teams have selected are oh, look really at Putsi. good. Look he's going to suppress, but what he's going to lock down is gonna be a monkey, and Monkey is going to survive on that. And right now it's going to be Gong Sun Li that is going to fall out of Proxy's old, but it's going to be wide. Right now, Yukio Tachibana comes from behind. He's got a great positioning. It's going to be a 2-0 trade for EDGM. Such a nice team fight. And that's exactly because of the crucial team fight tank. That is Ningzhi, that is Mongtian. He soak up so many, he soak in so many da damage that yes. dealt by the opponent. Like he's against so many abilities, right? Yeah. And I feel like all the crucial abilities from RW all of them were just sucked in by Ninja. And this is the point that you just mentioned during that draft. 
Once he suppressed, someone like by Dong Wang Tai Yi. But what if no damage can do that burst damage to put him down? That's gonna cause a problem. Yeah. Because everyone just used so many damage, waste on Meng Tian, but could not take that guy down. So what's gonna do for the next? Dong Wang Tai Yi is a very interesting support, right? Because mm. by just being able to suppress mm. heroes down, you completely just take them out of the formula, right? Mm. But if you cannot suppress Kung Sun Li, if you're not, if you're not able to suppress uh, the marksman, for example, if you're not able to suppress the mid laner, um, you're going to die so before that... you can actually take on a person down. Yeah. So in another word, it also means like the flash gonna be gonna be really crucial. Yes. He need to know exactly who's gonna be his target. Not Meng Tian, not gonna be Meng Tian, maybe Lu Ban, but he need to follow up by the damage dealt by his allies. How do you go around Meng Tian? Mm -hmm, like, that's, that, 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 that's the That's the thing, like that's a, that's a huge question for everyone. Mm. How, how do you get around Meng Tian in order to get to the back lane? And that's something that we can talk about by Meng Tian, by this specific hero. Yeah. Because something made it to be such a meta pick, meta tank, it is because he has got a troop once he uses his ultimate. Look at that, Putsi is going to do the Forsaken counter one more time Ooh. against non carries. It's going to be taken on Yen Meng. Yen Meng will survive, but Putsi is going to fall. Well, to be honest, like want to do some initiation, it is a good thing like mm -hmm. it shows your aggressiveness but sometimes you you can't just you know rush it you can't just like go too deep to it you need to like stay clear stay calm and think about what's next what you want from this team fight and yes. that's going to be the point you can't just go for it straightly go for it mm, that's not the way that this game works mm. it is not the game there's, there's the way that this game works 10 minutes shadow tyrant one third of HP. Let's see who's going to take it. Look at Meng Tian. Oh, flash oh, in! Flash is in. Trying to deal more damage. It's not going to be enough, but the Dark Tyrant is still being available. It's going to be EDGM that is going to lock that objective down. Ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly <laughs> the main reason about what makes Meng Tian such a meta pick. Once he used his ultimate, it just made him from an individual to a troop. He's gonna be the general which gonna have or surrounded by four soldiers and make it to a lineup. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult for you to like sneak around, sneak to the rear. That's gonna not happen. It's not gonna happen. Once he summons the young generals, ah, look at that. Pull back. Ah, being taken extremely low. It's gonna be pulled back by Yen Mong. It's going to give them the power play for 30 more seconds. That turret on mid lane is going to fall. The rotation is going to keep going all the way down to the red buff jungle. We can see Lam try to do something. Lam is invisible for EDGM. He's ambushing in somewhere in the rear. It's going to be a nice position, but trying see. Trying to find Ming, EDGM but Ming is just being very, very careful. They got that kind of awareness. Yes. They're finding Lime. They're trying to find him out. They know that if Lime is not visible on the map, that someone needs to have that responsibility, right? Yukio mm Tachibana. -hmm. Yuan's taking this responsibility. Oh, the kitty bombs come in. Zhou Yu's been taken extremely low. Now it's going to be Yuan that is going to fall. So they're going to be a one to one trade, but Huan Yun is going to follow them as well. Boots, he taken extremely low. He cannot survive. Ooh. He won't be able to protect Ocean. And it's going to be only Song and Putsi, the responsible to try to stop this parade. It's only 12 minutes and from this 1-3 trade, now the mid lane just arrived. Let's see what RW gonna push back. But Anta just be pulled back by Luban and the damage down on him, he's been taken down. Another killing spree, it's gonna be an ace to RW. Still got Minion Wiz on the bottom and now they're heading for the victory. Go for the crystal, congratulations to Shanghai EDGM. Shanghai EDGM taking the second win of today, making it all the way to three points. Wow, we can see for today's performance, EDGM is really into this game. Mm -hmm. And it seems like they are really well prepared for every battle, for every matchup. 
Nice one, such a nice performance. And also EDGM, they are doing it step by step. They know exactly what they want and they know who's gonna be the core player and they show a fully understanding towards the matter, towards the composition. Good understanding, right? Like mm. EDGM today has been having um, great performances, rock being gigantic today in both matches. Mm. And also Yuan, like these two core players, mm -hmm. they really undertake their responsibility and bring the victory to their team. A thumbs up from Ningzhi to his, uh, to his team members. Like, good job, bro. <laughs> good job. Good job. Well done. <laughs> Another win goes to Shanghai DJM. I think that RW had an idea of what they wanted to do. Mm. They got on that Dong Huan Tai pick for mm. their support, right? But when when the other side has Meng Tian, when the other side has Master Lupin, heroes that are very versatile, heroes that can just protect uh, their, their backliners so well, mm. it's, it's almost impossible to go around them. Mm. So Putsi's option with the Tung Huan Tai might, ha might not have been the best. And I guess that's something that they need to work on mm -hmm. because yesterday's uh, match up, we've already seen how great they are of doing those farming up, of doing pushing. Yeah. But instead, like for today's matchups, for today's first performance, they take out such an aggressive composition, but maybe some small problems still remain in their team, so that makes them lose this game. You cannot just change mm. the way that you're playing from one day to the other, right? Mm. They thought that they could have be a little bit more aggressive against EDGM, but sadly for them, it was not the result that they were expecting. Mm. So, well, actually, once they take that composition out, we were expecting like maybe they prepare something new. Yeah, they prepare something like different. But it shows out that they still need to do some work on it. They still need to work a little bit on the details, but mm. well, they still have a long, 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 long time, right? Like, they <laughs> played only three games, mm. and they won one out of those three. Mm. So they're not in that bad of a position. They just need to go back to their hotels and really think about mm. what they're going to do. Yeah. They still have one more game today, so they really want, they really need to think about it. Yeah, first thing, if they do want to use those uh, those kind of composition to show their aggressiveness, maybe they need to like have a really nice composition and mm -hmm. find out the problem. That's going to be the first thing. And the second thing is, if they do think like they are not able to master that kind of aggressiveness, maybe they just go back to the composition that they are most familiar with. Go back to what it works. Mm. If it is not broken, don't ch don't, don't don't change it. Mm. There's no need to fix anything, something that is not broken. Yeah. So um, let's wait and see what they can do. On the other side, EDGM. Oh, I'm quite surprised about today's performance, yeah. to be honest. It's quite like, well, for EDGM, we all know like they are quite aggressiveness, yeah. but sort of unstable. Mm -hmm. uh, they really need that kind of state. They really need that kind of momentum you know yes. they need to be in that game then can help them to get a better performance and for today for today's matchup all of those matchups they did a great job Yan Meng is going to take the MVP for this game EDGM's Yan Meng their support mm. damage taken 32.6 percent almost invincible that yeah look at that comes in he just waits, trying to spot where Hua Yun is. Mm. As he comes in, locks in Hua Yun, nothing to do. It shows like the thing that he's doing is not only just simply want to initiate the team fight. It's more like he know which gonna be his true target, and he just go for it. Look at that one more time. Mm. Just allowing um, the core players just to survive. It is not only about initiation, mm. it's about like being able to help your teammates to find the right spot in the map. That's it, like take down the core cool player. No matter how many kills you get, you need to take down the main character in your opponent's, comp uh, in your opponent's lineup. True. Well, Jin and RW, sadly for them, they're gonna have to wait mm. until a little bit later on today. They still have one more match today, right? Yeah.
they still they're gonna be have... playing they're gonna be playing Beijing Weibo on our game seven mm. on game seven wow well, for RW they still have goal time they still have goal three matchups to go like let them to have more time to just settle down to calm down and find out the problem and let's see like what they can do for the next end matchup and we can see the rank changed again and for EDGM for the day when it just started they possess at eight right yeah and then they go for four and now temporary they're now the first place they're top of the league right now they're at the top right now they've got three wins mm. they've got three wins and let's wait and see what EDGM's players they have to say about their performance let's go to the interviews have a short interview. Let's see who's going to be with us. Hello, Yuan Xin and Dada, Zhao Hu Ba. Hello, 大家好，我是上海一队金文元。嗯，那恭喜你们啊，拿下了今天这一场比赛的胜利。呃，看到其实你们今天的状态是非常非常好的。呃，请问你们在这个比赛之前的话，是有做什么特殊这种加油打气啊，或者之类的吗？呃，我们可能就赛前调整了一下心态吧，估计。啊、oh, ，OK， our first question is what made him like be in such a good uh, uh, com uh condition, right? What make it? Um, and Yuan just said it's because they uh, really cheered up before the matchup and also like uh, they do believe each other. All right, for the next question, it's going to be like uh, for today's matchup, we can see we you really had girl, got a really nice composition and also you show your aggressiveness, especially you guys keep watching on the core players from your opponents. What's the secret? Uh,那我们看到今天的这一局比赛当中，你们有意识的在盯对面的一些关键点，就是团队的协作好像做得非常好。这个沟通是怎么样处理的呢？ Uh, 沟通的话就赛前就和训练赛差不多吧，叫他们多打捞一下，就嘻嘻哈哈的，可能就在比赛中心态不会那受影响，可能就话多一点。啊，好的。Uh, <笑> uh, uh, so the answer is they just act like they are doing those trainings, yeah. and so they do have a really nice vibe, and that makes them to go through a much better conversation. Okay, so congratulations again for you to got this win, and looking forward to those follow matchups. 感谢你接受我们的采访，然后也是期待你们更加精彩的表现。I love when Yuan just said, like, you know what, like, we just need to get, like, in the rhythm of the game by just enjoying the game, right? Mm. They, they, just need, they just need to talk. Yeah. If you talk to your teammates and you enjoy the game, things start flowing better. That's for sure. It happens in anything in life. Every time that, that you start doing what you enjoy, mm -hmm. and when you're enjoying the process, the results are just going to be the ones that, the ones that is, are going to be fair to your performance. Yeah, sometimes you just go for, like, why so serious? <laughs> Take Twice it easy. <laughs> that is true. Well, let's keep going moving forward. The highlights are ready here. We want to show you a little bit more about those techniques, right? Let's put it, let's pay attention. Look at that. A 2v2. Mm. And then that over there, the Atta, just the way that the Atta just completely locks in everything. We talked about this one on how Yen Meng take the MVP because he was able to find the right moments to come in and then just lock in the carry players from RW. And that's some highlights that we saw from EDGM. Also for this one, we can keep our eyes on Lu Ban. Not only on Lu Ban, like Ming played really well. <laughs> True. Like Shen Meng Xi just with the kitty bombs. Mm completely destroying down the HP bars from the other players. Like the teamwork was so tight. Yes. Mm, everyone just coordinate and everyone just play it together as a team teamwork. All right. Game three is gone. Game four is on its way. Let's have a little rest. We'll be back.
Game four. Chengdu AD against Shenzhen DYT. These two teams have already showed their showcases before. For AG, they did a really great job yesterday, and for Shenzhen DYG, unfortunately, they lost the first game that they pre, uh, performed for today. So this is going to be their second chance. Yep. Shenzhen DYG already playing four games, still have two points. They took wins yesterday against Changsha TES and Guangzhou TTG, mm. and they sadly have lost against Sutro KSG and today against a gigantic Shanghai EDGM. They were unable to go out with the victory. Yeah, we can see actually DYG has their own understanding towards this matter or how they're gonna build up their composition because they sort of be consist with using Xia Houdun as a mm -hmm. support, right? Well, but sadly they didn't got the win for the, today's first game and now they're need, they are going to play against Chengdu AG Chao Wanhui who already got two wins in a row. Yep, Chengdu AG already two wins. Shenzhen DYG already two wins. Mm. Whoever that takes this one is going to tie EDGM on top of the league. <laughs> so that's the like the most interesting fact about doing BO1. Let's see. AG on the blue side and on the country, DYG on the red side. Chengdu AG against Shenzhen DYG, the first rounds of bands. Mm. Donghuan Taiyi and Meng Tian and Gong Sun Li, gone. <laughs> All of the three of them, gone, gone, gone. Zhou Yu, gone. Oh, wow, wait a minute. Da Chao's outside. Da Chao's open. If it is open and if it is out there, I need to take it. And pay attention, Foods is also open. Foods is open. Now, what is Shenzhen, how is Shenzhen DYG going to answer to that? That's we know question. that that's, this whole, this whole Dacia strategy is just so strong. I know that Gun Sun Li is not, mm. is not an option, mm. but Chengdu AG, they could still take Fu Zi. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's going to be the one. <laughs> it's going to be a Fu Zi and Dacia. Another good, and there's a lot of very good options for marksmen whenever that you have a Dacia composition and you don't have Gun Sun Li. Mm. Um, Dear and is one of them. Li Yuanfang is one of them as well. Yeah. It just feels like once you got Da Qiao, it just, you know, just increase your um, increase your ceiling, we can put it like that, you yep. know. Just like put your composition to like offer it more flexibility. And since for DYG, they need to deal with it. Let's see what they're going to do. For the Tatsiao strategy, just having a very quick mid laner, a mid laner that can clean wave very fast, uh, it's important. Zhou Jun, mm. an option. Now the, run, the second round of bans is going to be critical for Chengdu AG because they do not want to allow DYG to have any heroes that could destroy their system. Guan Yu, one of those heroes. Uh, Nakoruru, another of those heroes. Xiang Yu, one of those heroes. Uh, they don't want any hero that could push everyone out of that TP tunnel. I guess Xiang Yu may be the one that they want to ban away. As you just mentioned, if you want to deal with Da Qiao's teleports, oh, Lü Bu, the same. Because, you know, actually our game is a 3D game. Yeah. So the exact time that when Lü Bu land on his ultimate, the height that he's gonna knock his opponents into the air, if you see that moment, it can let you, you know, get away from the teleportation. So it means that they would just lose their opportunity to move into the TP tunnel just by oh. Lupu landing oh. that Fallen God at the right time. The same as the Ultima down by the Empu and also the second skill down by Xiao Qiao. It's oh. the same height because it's 3D game. That is so nice. That is an amazing <laughs> piece of information for everyone at home, right? Like even more ways how to really counter that Tatsha strategy. Mm. But that's kind of tricky, you know. You mm -hmm. need to like exactly see that moment. Let's see. Concert U is mm. going to be the option. Concert U kind of going to be nice. And more, it's just like once 
Well, whenever they take out concert you as yep. a marksman, it's more like a de defensive marksman. Mm -hmm. It's more like, okay, I don't want to put my bottom lane to lose, to fall behind. Yeah. So I just use it to clean the wave. Nothing more. You just need to clean the wave and mission complete. In a matchup against Lady Sun, mm. Concert Yu does not want to have those 1v1s, right? Mm. As you just mentioned, it's just cleaning wave and then just moving away. Yeah. Um, Concert Yu's damage is going to be online very late in the game. Mm. Um, one of those very item dependent heroes. But I don't see a lot of magical damage that could be dealt from DYG, right? Mm. More than what Shenmong Si can deal, um, there's not much magical damage that could be um, a danger for Inuo. Oh, see, DYG is being so consistent with Xiao Hou Dun. Mm -hmm. Well, it's gonna be a good choice if DYG really can initiate those big, big team fight because for Consort Yu or for those damage can be dealt by AG gonna be really useful towards these two solid front lane, which gonna be Zhang Fei and Xiao Hou Dun. But the problem is, I guess AG don't want to do those big team fight with you. No, AG doesn't want to fight. Mm. Not at least, at least not in the early game. Yeah. There's nothing for them to take in the in the early game more than just moving around and trying to take turrets. Mm. That's how it's going to be aggressive by taking smite with with her, um, moving in, going and invading, mm. TP in a way of that. I think that they they don't want to fight. They're mm. just moving around, trying to slow down the other team's jungler. You just mentioned about really interesting thing. Like once he's carrying smite, actually, yeah. once she like just carrying smite, it's gonna be sort of risky mm -hmm. because usually that's how would carry with uh, disrupt yes. or like purify. Mm -hmm. But using smite, if she just you know prioritize the second ability with Jin and just go there, steal it away, and come back home. That's gonna be sort of annoying. So if Tatsuya and Jin are going to start invading, right? Uh -huh. Like taking that double smite, um, what does Xiao Yi and Trinian want to do? Do they want to try to defend that jungle or do they want to go and trade jungle um, with Chengdu AG? Well, actually for those compositions that DYG selected, they are tough enough to push back. But the time is, if they really want to do this ping fight, the ultimate provided by Zhang Fei gonna be really crucial because yes. that's the only ability they can push all those enemies away from Da Chao's second ability. Let's wait and see. That ability has a very long cooldown. Yeah. That ability is not available all the time. Let's wait and see what's going to happen. Let's see the rotations in mid lane. Let's see what DYG and AG can do. Ooh, let's check DYG. Got yeah, DYG jumping in. That's quite smart. They just use these two tanks to yep. go to the opponent's blue side to distract them. Feeling like, okay, we're trying to invade, but the true plan is, look Miyamoto Musashi, what he's doing right now? He took the red, oh. and no one has yet even having an idea that he's doing that. Yeah. They haven't spotted they haven't had the idea, no, the time or the opportunity to go into the opponent's jungle. When Jin is gonna make the rotation down to her red buff and realize that there's nothing there for her, that's gonna be heartbreaking. Yeah, it just like when once he go into the red buff, he was like, what? Is there any <laughs> thief? <laughs> what, what just happened what to just all my happened? resources? Why is this disappeared? Or just like something goes wrong with my field. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing has spawned. Yeah. See, are you already in level four? Well, that's Wei Yang, something. Wei Yang has nothing to do more than just come into mid lane and try to get gold from the minions. Yeah, because once we saw, we, we saw before would be like it could be some trade. Mm -hmm. But for Xiao Yi, he just goes straight in that and grab anything he can get. He yeah, cleaned up all those monsters. You just touched a very interesting point, right? Like how the tanks mm. just gave the idea that they wanted to invade the blue buff. Everyone was just so worried about protecting the blue buff that nobody thought yeah. I'm just going down to red. That's quite brave, but it still bring him the profit. They're quite glad about this beginning. Since now Xiaoyi has got a level lead. And also that's quite important to heroes like Miyamoto Musashi. Because that also means he can quicker to pile up his items. And now DYG doing the rotation. Moving in from top lane straight into the blue buff. 
Weyan does not have the ability to protect that one. It's going to be fights on both ends. It's going to be Traujun taking the first kill on Trampe. Yeah, it seems like UIG has split up to two different battlefields, but after it's already been done, this is a 1-1 trade. Support trade for Jungler. A jungler. Ooh, yeah. So actually, DYG is gonna win the upper hand. Of course, like Weyan didn't have to engage in that fight. Mm. Like there's nothing that you can do to try to protect that blue buff. And at the end of the day, he was taking extremely low, and he had he had to pay with his life. Yeah. So that's gonna be so painful for Weyan. And for Jin, this kind of hero, he's gonna be the core player. Yep. Once he lose all those buffs, all those resources, he don't want enough money to buy more items. <laughs> I just love Xiao Ying in there, just showing up a 1v2 and he can still take the kill. And that's something to do when you got gold lead or level lead when you're playing Miyamoto Musashi. Ian moving in down. They just might still on Trini and Trini is gonna have to proc his ult. He's receiving a lot of damage. It's not going to be fatal though. Mm. Four minutes and now there's a little bit gold lead goes to DYG. And everything seems pretty well since Xiao Yi got such a huge advantage. Look at that frozen down, Chuan's taking to half of his HP, the kitty bombs come in, trying to stop Weyan from coming to protect this blue buff. Weyan knows he cannot die one more time, he just decides to let the blue go away and then just take it for DYG. Mm. DYG is playing quite smart. They're just like, you know, keep attacking. Wait, yeah. let's check the riverside. Look at that, Trinian being taken down. Sage Might is going to defeat him. Foods are taking one kill. And that's gonna be the turning point for AG. Once they take down Zhang Fei, that also means without the double smite, Yuai is not able to keep invading to AG's field. So that's gonna buy AG more time to, you know, just get back on track to go for their own step strategy. Blue team has I don't think that Weyan has been able to take even one blue since the beginning of the game. <laughs> Poor guy. It's been five minutes and I don't think that Weyan has been able to take his first blue. It's all Xiaoyi everywhere. So Xiaoyi already in level nine, moving forward towards level 10. Yeah, Xiaoyi is quite experienced and also Xiaoyi this guy mm -hmm. has been played for such a long time and also he's been rotate both jungler and also he played marksman before but both four players if you know how to play if you know how to play on different positions mm. that gives you a different understanding of the game the sage's might is going to lock chuan down xiao yin cannot control make the control c mm. and also he don't want to waste his control c on xiao Dun. that's going to be sort of wasting so they just want to save it and do more like important things. Again, the blue buff was spawned. Oh, Trinian with a vital ulti that is going to send one, two players from AG down. There's nothing they can do to protect this turret. 2-0 trade for DYG. This ultimate was like unpredictable. No one was expect that Zhang Fei would do that ultimate from that side. But he no just directly did that. it. Look at that, Trinian comes in from the side. <laughs> Boom! Wow. Two people on, and the two of them just vanished from the map. Wow, this, comp this combo just be like fully used, and it's pretty nice. And this game, DYG is such a huge advantage right now. Because actually, they keep attacking, you can mm -hmm. see it, right? And by those attacking pairs, actually they just break the strategy that AG want to do. They're never able to do those split up push. They are not being able to split push at all. They're too busy to do those counter attacks. DYG just has full control of the game right now. Look at that, yeah. bottom lane, 1v1. Jin's gonna proc her mirrors. Yeah, he's gonna try to keep going. He does not have his ult. Away and he's going to run away. Whoa. You can see this totally two different states for those junglers which just show up mm -hmm. <laughs> behind our game board. 
way on, only in level 10 and Xiaoyi already in level 12. Wow. There was nothing he could have done in that 1v1. Yeah, and also for Miyamoto Musashi, this hero, once he piled up, once he's fully decked out, he's mm -hmm. going to be a huge threat to those backliners. He's going to be a threat for Xiaoyi, right? Mm -hmm. I think that Xiaoyi is going to be the one that is going to be the most <laughs> aware about that Miyamoto Musashi. Well, because as we mentioned about uh, those compositions when we're doing the band pick phases, for AG, they don't want to push back. They yes. don't want to take those team fights. They just do want to do those uh, like split push. Yeah, they want to split push, but it's not it's not working really well. Mm. Right now, it's going to be the first time that I'm going to see the rotation from Tatsiao and concert you from top lane to bottom lane. Trying to gain some time, trying to buy more time for the for their team. Eight minutes and thirty seconds of one thousand and three hundred gold lead for DYG. Oh, nice ultimate. Bound down Fei, but what's more? They need to teleport to back to home. The so. damage was not enough to pull, to force Junian to use his ultimate. Mm. Junian is not afraid of those small AOE damage or those poking damage right now. Because as we can see, there's a huge good lead right now, especially most is depends on those jungler. Xiao Yi has got 2,000 gold leads. Only Yan has a little advantage for, um, for AG. But he's a fool. There's like little things that he can done yeah. to turn this thing around. And he's only got Ominous Premonition. Mm. He doesn't have any other items but that Ominous Premonition. Those things that he buy, those items he, buy, he bought, just build up his HP or just like offer him more armor defense. Look at that, the Eye of the Whirlpool comes in. It's going to bring back Ian that is going to come in. Does he have his ult? He does not have it allowed. It's going to be a 1-0 trade as it's only going to be Trinian, the support from DYG that is going to fall. Nice catch by AG. Mm -hmm. We can see from that combo that AG just made, the ultimate offered by Zhao Jin and also the first skill offered by Da Xiao. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These like small mean uh, like combo help them to take Zhao Fei down. Ian is just like locking in whoever that he can lock in. Yeah. I love that. Like he's just not waiting for the he's just not holding to his ultimate for too long. Like he's just being very aggressive. We can see that right now the tyrant, the dark tyrant is gonna go for AG. It's just like Ian said something like, I had no choice. I just, anyway, I just go for it. <laughs> just jumping in, that is true. Inuo is going to be the core player That's for it. AG if they want to turn this tide around. Like everything is going to depend on Inuo being able to find the right moment to lock in Lang Chen. Mm. And the most thing he needs to do is first build the most crucial item to offer him the armor piercer. Mm -hmm. Because the front laner goes to DYG is quite strong, quite hard to be a dealt pretty, with. A pretty tanky DYG, right? Yeah. So maybe I guess Starbreaker is also necessary in this game. Starbreaker is going to be a necessary item. The TP tunnel Ooh. is going to be wide. Ian does not get in. The reason why he didn't get in is because he supposed, like he in his mind, he mm -hmm. thought there's going to be a chance because he pulled two men back. Mm. So he tried to step forward, but the, the the problem is, as we've mentioned, even he pulled two men back, but there's no more damage can be done to those solid frontline. Shadow Ripper, Eternity Blade, and Starbreaker, the options for Consort U right now, three damage items. Consort U's damage is right now is something to be worried about. Mm. So for AG, they need to keep Rino into a quite mm -hmm. um, safe position. Yes. Let him do more output. 11, 12, uh, 12 minutes right now. 2,000 gold lead, most on Xiaoyi. <laughs> they have the vision, they know that Jing is not going to be part of this fight. Now Miyamoto Musashi just trying to find Jing. If they are going to do a solo, I guess, Xiaoyi is going to win the upper hand due to the gold lead. Yeah, That's such a big gold lead right now. 
So for Jin, for Wei Yang, he just need to sneak in and push some lanes forward, but can't go furthermore. Just need to push one lane and retreat. Wait for the next chance. 12 minutes. Well, for DYG, they really try to force some team fight since Sun Chang Xiang already has some uh, important items and Xiao is quite good. And also, these two front lines quite solid. Whoa, nice that, one! One more time, the Sage's Might is going to be proc in. It's going to take on Xiao Tun. It's not going to be enough. He's taking extremely low. Still taking damage. Jing is going to disappear. And the same as Xiao Tun, they're going to fall. It's going to be a trade, a top laner to a jungler. But again, this 1-1 one -one trade is again jungler for a top liner which is going to be a deficit for AG. Well, as long as Eno is, is, is alive, uh, there's still hope. Yeah, that's it. That's true. Jue Ming's damage is pretty low. It's pretty high already. Mm. Forcing Eno to decide to take on the Succubus Cloak as his option for his fifth item. Because we can see for Jue Ming, those items he chose, he tried mm. to pile up those magical pairs, right? Yeah. Void stuff, right? Mm. Three of the items, all for like building up those um, magical pairs. He knows, he knows that he's going to be critical to get Concert U, right? Mm. Because Concert U's ability allows her to be immune to physical damage, but, but not, not magical. magical damage. And that's going to be Jemin's, that's going to be Jemin's goal. Like his job is going to be trying to let that Concert U's HP bar at least to half using those kitty bombs, the range from his attack, limiting a little bit what Inuo could do. Especially when Konsol Yu wants to deal in some damage or using her first skill, she's yeah. just going to stand there. So it's going to make him to be an easy target to Jimmy to Shen 14 minutes. Shadow bangers are spawning in. And we can see DYG unleash the strongest vanguard on the top. That Yan's being completely attacked. Jing's jumping in. Prox her mirror is not going to be able to survive. Lady Sun is going to take on killing spree. Multiple players are going to TP back. That turret is going to fall. Wow, and now all of those lanes are under pressure. They need to lean on Inuo, they need to lean on Konsol Yu. But what they're gonna do after facing three lanes under pressure, there's too many vanguards to be dealt with. They need to take pace. It's too many of them. Mm. And Wei Yan, sadly for him, and he brought his ult, tried to survive, trying to find the rotation around to get in the TP tunnel, but... But not, it's not, useless. Not, not, mm -hmm. And I feel so sorry for this guy, you know. This game seems to be so torturing to him. From the very first beginning. From the beginning, we just said that it was oh. going to be a tough game for Wei Yan since... Really tough. At the beginning, Xiao Yi had such a big, such a big advantage compared to him. Yeah, that's something. That's the most striking standouts for Xiao Yi mm -hmm. for today, even because of the like the original invasion that Xiao Yi did, mm -hmm. and he cleaned up the opponent's red field, just do such a huge harass and slow down Wei Yang's farming up. And Perfect. that just look at that. Means... Wei Yang just trying to find Lady Sun. Mm. He misjudges the distance in between him and Lady Sun and then just puts himself just right in between the battle. Oh, you can see he looks a little bit worried right now. And also, this is definitely going to be a tough game. Oh, nice first mm -hmm. skill! You know, take this red buff back by using his first skill. A long 16 range. minutes and 30 seconds. Inuo almost decked out right now. It's already on 12,800. Almost 13,000 gold for Inuo. He's the last hope. He's gonna be critical if AG wants to turn things around. Because right now I can only see him as the key option for them to solve this huge problem that DYG is becoming. Yeah, so AG need to lean on Inuo's damage right now. And also, in addition, Ice need to use his second skill wisely to try to transport Fuzi or other allies back to the crystal and be restored their HP, or they can get another chance when they turn back. Oops. I the Daybreaker 
another crucial item to conserve you. Daybreaker, that means that that Eno is already full, completely stacked, six items mm. already online. Ooh, you can see his damage. Look at that. Chuan being taken very low. Trinian is going to... Quick, Trinian is going to have to proc his ult, pushing everyone out of the tunnel, but it's not going to be enough. The minions taken on the bottom lane. The bottom lane is taken extremely low, already to half. Ooh, the Overlord is going to be for DYG. Not looking good for AG. We need to admin, admit that it's, it is because of the bottom lane, which gives AG such a great pressure. Wait, 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 let's check the Riverside. Look at that, Yan's gonna have to TP back right now. It's Yamoto Musashi, the one that has already Inuo locked in. And he's gonna disappear for the next 40 seconds. DYG got the opportunity right now. Take that, that, that Shadow Tyrant and try to push for high ground. From this team fight on, we can say DYG is gonna have a huge percentage win rate for this matchup. Because they just take down console U and got two, like two, uh, those neutral objects in their hands. Uh, just the way that Miyamoto Musashi was very decisive in going in and just straight locking in on Inuo. He did not care about anyone else. Mm. He just knew that Inuo was the key. He is the option. He is what he what needs to be eliminated. And that's gonna happen again and again during the next following up matchups or team fights. 45 seconds for the Tempest Dragon. UIG has one bottom lane as for their winning range, so they actually has got a high priority to gain for this Tempest Dragon. They don't need to worry a lot, they just need to like make sure they have quite safe position and control some of the vision. The Tatsuya composition, on the other hand, is allows them in these big fights, mm. like for example, Tempest Dragon, Overlord, Star Tyrant. Mm, the Tatsuya composition just allows you just to go back and come in with full HP. True. So that's gonna be the most important point about whether AJ is gonna win this team fight or not, because of if won. they use the that teleport wisely they still have got chance but if not or if they push back by John Fist ultimate that's gonna be a huge problem Yan just trying his very oh, best okay. like he said just might on Lady Suen <laughs> yeah he really tried to do something I'm seeing everyone chipping in Winter's here, the flash with the Sage's Might, but it's going to be wide. The front face, Wild Blood coming in right now. Look at Jin Wayans trying to find the position. He's unable to do that. And the Eye of the Whirlpool is going to bring everyone back from AG with full HP. They've got priority over this Tempest Dragon. Yeah, AG need to make a decision right now because the bottom lane isn't that good. So they need to be decisive what kind of things they're going for. First is the mid tower. In the moment that Jing is going to show Vision down, it's going to be the cue for DYG just to try to push, try to engage. Because that also means you have someone lost from the beginning. Look at that, Ian is going to TP back, coming in full HP. Wow, then the plays be reset. Every, everything just like turn to its original feature. 21 minutes and 30 seconds, no one has priority over this Tempest Dragon and they know. Even though DYG right now has a gold advantage, even though they have the upper hand on the bottom lane, they don't want to rush it. They know that that Tatsuya strategy is something to be careful about. And the point's gonna be John Fist Ultimate. That's gonna be the most crucial thing, the most deciding factor about whether they're gonna win this team fight or not because it's the only thing only mean that they can rely on to push all those opponents away from the teleportation offered by Dachau's second ability so Junyan yeah, need to just waiting in the bush yeah they need that. 
fighting for vision. It's just the peace before a huge storm. 23 minutes. No one actually spots him. Ian trying his very best. Mm -hmm. Like he knows that he's one of the few initiation options that they have. Yeah. He needs to lock in either Juemin or Lantern. And the beta is gonna be Flash combined with his ultimate to bound Lady Sir. That's gonna be the best. But and both of them are available. Look at that. Ooh. Moto Musashi comes in, he locks in on Inua. Inua is going to go down. He's going to resurrect, trying to jump in, but he's Whoa. going to fall. Ladies and is going to take the kill. And now it's going to be Trinian trying to go down. He locks in in the bush. One of the players, Jing, is going to fall. And it's going to be two kills. Wei and Inua go black screen. And right now, DYG is on the driver's seat. Two kills goes to Long Chen, goes to Lady Sun. And now DYG has such a huge advantage. They can just use those minion waves or even they can go for the Tempest Dragon to secure the advantages they gain from this huge team fight. Such a nice, accurate movement done by Xiao Yi. No one has already spot him. He just jump in and go right for Inuo and take him down. We're all very quiet because that's exactly what was happening in the yeah. map, right? It was just quiet. And then Xiao Yi comes in, he finds Inuo, stuns him down, proxy stage sanctuary, not enough, falls down again. And then the way that Wei Yang, Wei Yang was just trying his very best to survive, three people locked him down. Couldn't do anything in there. Wow. And we can see how tight that combo was. Yes. Everyone just, once Xiao Yi locked Inua down, everyone just used all of those abilities to target on Inua and take him down. Well, they won the Tempest Dragon. Let's see what they can do with this. Are they going to be able to try to jump in? The top lane, the top lane high turret is going to be the one goal. Taking on that high ground turret would give them both top lane and bottom lane advantages. That's gonna be a huge advantage, especially in the late game. Because yeah. neither the Tempest Dragon is gonna spawn, they're gonna have a winning lane. Look at that. Lanchen cannot jump in. He knows that Ian's Sa Sage's Might is going to be a huge trap for him. Top and bottom lane are going to fall. AG, they are now facing a quite tricky situation. And for DYG, if they really can take AG down, who already got two wins in a row, they're gonna build up their confidence a lot. Look at that. Dragon's Shine. taken to half of its HP. And over. Try to push forward. But DYG is just being patient. They know no mistake can be taken, especially in these kind of moments. Everyone just waiting for the best moment to have the fatal strike. 26 minutes. Maybe DYG is looking for the next Tempest Dragon to be spawned. Well, it's going to spawn in the bottom lane, right? Mm. So it means that cleaning that top, pushing a little bit earlier in there, 45 seconds right now. That's something really interesting about our game. That is, once it gets closer to those like important moments in those late, late games, mm -hmm. every team's just gonna calm down. They don't want to rush. Because in this game, in the late, late game, everything could happen, even one team fight. It's all about the vision, right? Mm. Just who's gonna be able to spot where the, where the carries are going to be. Mm. Who can spot where the back laners are going to be? Look at that, Ian holding to his flash, holding oh. to his ultimate. Ian has such a tough mission. Yes. He need to do the initiation, and also it is him need to gain those vision control. It depends on him. Mm. And also he's the only solid front lane that AG can rely on. Now let's see what AG is going to do, right? Because mm. Miyamoto Musashi trying to find a way around. Mm. He knows he needs to find a way straight into Inu the same way as he just found it in mid lane. That's going to be the key to win this fight. That's it. 
And now we can see DYG is using this Tempid Dragon to shred the HP bar down to half and try to seduce AG to take this team fight since DYG got a winning top lane. AG is always be also being cautious since they already made that mistake that they didn't spot what, where Miyamoto Musashi was. Mm -hmm. So now they're trying to first know where Xiaoyi is and then to decide whether they're gonna take it or not. They cannot start this dragon right now mm. as Lady Sun is gonna go first for the red buff. Mm. But Miyamoto Musashi, look, he's just waiting there. He's gonna clean the wave and then they're gonna have priority there. Look at that. Yes. Ian jumping in very deep. Oh, he's taking very low, all the way to half. And we can see that's the importance, why you need... Holly to... Emblem, oh. they're gonna try to start this, they want to finish. The Kitty Bombs come in, the Sage's Might is gonna come in, he's gonna get on Lanchon, but his teammates are gonna run away. This is gonna be tragic for Foots, the Lanchon is going to survive. We're gonna have everyone, it's been broken, their Sage's Sanctuary. It's going to be a revive party now. And now we can see Jonathan just use his ultimate to shred and to block away all those enemies. Since DYG did this 1-2 trade, they only had one person miss. The Miyamoto Musashi is still alive. They still got the priority to control this Tempest Dragon. And then Inuo trying to move forward. He knows that he needs to be aggressive right Again, now. Miyamoto One Musashi. more time. He jumps in, locks in on Tatsuo. He uses it to save the Sanctuary, but it's not going to be enough. Inuo taking damage from left, right, and the front. It's going to be 3v1. They lock him in. He's going to go against the wall. Well, he did it. He takes on one. He takes on one person. He takes on two. It's not enough. The Sage's Sanctuary is going to be defining factors of this fight. And double kill goes to Lady Sun. Foot is only one who has got back to this field. But still, DYG got two person remaining. Especially they got Lady Sun. They're not going to pay attention to Foot. <laughs> but they're going to pay it off. They, all, all the things they want to do is take down that crystal. They just totally ignore Ian. But Ian just undertake this responsibility and buy enough time for AG for another chance. Wow, they wanted to finish the game. They rushed a little bit and then they did not see that Wei Yang is the one that jumped yeah. in, right? Ian just used the Sage's might and then immediately Wei Yang just saying, you know what? You still need to respect me. I'm still a jungler. For DYG, that was so close. Mm. That was so close because the top minion waves just arrived, so they just want to get that crystal down. But never underestimate any of those heroes, any of those opponents, especially in this late, late game. And after this Tempest Dragon goes to AG, they've got another chance to gain them the vision control, to gain them the chance to push forward. It's gonna be a 70 seconds. Wow. That's gonna be a long, long time. At least right now, AG is gonna be able to breathe a little bit. And they'll be able to try to push on, try to get on a high ground turret. They that mid, that mid lane turret is, got, is, is looking very, very, very bad. Super unhealthy. Look at that. It was full HP a second ago. Right now, it completely disappeared. And AG, they just want to fully use this Vanguard, this mm -hmm. Tempest Vanguard, to help them at least get some high ground tower down. Wow. Now I can even feel, I can even smell the tension in the air. <laughs> Everything looked like DYG had the option just to finish, right? Yeah. But they overstepped in there. Look at that, Ian, he knows that right now he's super tanky and he's got through damage. The bangers coming in. Vanguards, that's gonna be something DYG need to pay attention to. There's also another Vanguard spawn on the bottom lane. All right. AG's chance is arriving right now. They the are heading for the crystal. Fools is heading is for gone. the crystal. What about they're gonna head forward? They want to do this fatal team fight, but Miyamoto Musashi just came in, tried to lock Console U down. The destiny was out, but this kill was still goes to Console U. And what DYG want to do, get back to the 
Crystal, and we can see just revive his HP, try to gain some chances. Another ultimate provided by Wang Zhaojun, try to block him away, and then everyone just teleport back to the field again. But all the minions has been cleaned up. That is the problem when you have a touch of strategy. You cannot survive to that. Right now it's going to be lunch and trying to clean those minions. He needs to use his positioning to try his very best Whoa! not to let them in. It's not going to be enough. AG is going to turn tables around and go home with the victory. Such an excellent matchup. What? Like... DYG has got such a long time for their priority. They were so close to take down that crystal. But AG just stand there solid and just tell everyone once our crystal haven't been taken down, there's still a chance remained. And for this game, they not only show our their aggressiveness, but also for their resilience. Such a nice game performed by AG and now we can say AG got three wins in a row and especially the end of this game in such an unexpected way everyone will remember this game especially for this team now they tell everyone we came back 33 minutes very 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 long game right that's just the problem. Like, if you want the Tempest Dragon first, you need to make the right decision. You need to either just push and then just have a complete, complete understanding that you want to get the game or just replay. I'm so sorry. Like, it is a 2v1 against a Futsu. We know that Futsu love that kind of situation. That kind of situation just put Futsu with the upper hand. We know that the abilities, the mechanics of Futsu allow him to survive on that 2v1. And then Wei Yang coming in in the last minute. Wei Yang that was spotted, that was completely, completely targeted since minute one. Comes in at the end, becomes a hero. Just cleaning, cleaning in that moment. Wow. Like, in that specific time, I feel like both of the team, they are really engaged in that game. Yeah. And for DYG, we need to admit like that was a huge pity because they were so close. And as for AG, they withstand it with such withstand such a deficit, and they made it. It's, it's a B on one. That's unbelievable. it. Like you need to be able to take those points because they're going to look back at this point, and they're gonna need it. Right now, right now, Shenzhen DYG still two points in five games. They needed that victory. They needed that point. Because right now they only have four more games to go. Yeah. That's a max of six points. They would need to win all their four games to make it to that magic six. That's can, gonna... they, can they win their next six games? They've got very tough matchups. They still have to play against RW. They need to play against Weibo. They need to play against WE. They need to play against Nanjing Hero. Can they win all four of them? That's going to be really tricky. They like how they're gonna tackle that difficulties would be the most important mission for them. And most important, or moreover, while well, they like conquer that kind of disappointment. Yeah. Because they were so close to take down that crystal. That is true. So, well, the that's first a huge thing, blow to morale, right? They need to recover from that game. Yeah, from that's that a, shadow. That's a very, very, very huge blow to their morale. Um, how are they going to just psychologically just jump back? Mm. Um, you were this close to the victory. You see yourself just committing those little mistakes that they just could take you out of the group stage, right? Yeah. Like you need that point. You need that extra point. And right now they're being forced to win all four next matches to make it to that magic six. It's not looking good for them. Yeah, so we hope like they really can recover from this defeat and hope that they can make it, mm -hmm. though it's going to be really difficult. But as for AG, I was so surprised about this team. Mm -hmm. It feels like even your fall behind in such huge deficit, they still just, you know, undertake that kind of responsibility, especially Ian. Yeah, MVP <laughs> for the game, AG's Ian, right? Not only for the damage taken, right? He took a 34%, it's just that last, that last play. That last play over there just 
protecting the crystal. Yeah. Look at him. He goes, uh, goes in, cleans the wave, and then Lanchin and Jemin thinking that they could just directly just push destroy. on the crystal. Just destroy the crystal. Not enough. They're one quarter away for, from the victory. Even at that moment, they just try to step away a little bit mm -hmm. distance. It won't just end up like this, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Miyamoto Musashi trying at the end this very, very last hope, trying mm. to get Inua down, but nothing that could have been done. Yeah. And for AG, such a relief, especially after they end up this game in this way, mm -hmm. in this unexpected way. They're also going to build up their strength and also build up their like bond. Yeah. Everyone just go through such a unexpected game. They're just like be fully trust to their um, team members. And they're going to need it, right? Because mm. Chengdu AG still has um, one more game, two more games today. They're going to be playing in our ninth game of the day against Nanjing Hero. And they're going to be playing against KSG in, our, in game 11, right? KSG, that was the most um, the most solid team from yesterday. <laughs> yesterday, this, their, com their, their performance was amazing. And that's some matchup that we're really looking forward to seeing. And we can see our rank just rearranged again. And now AG is in the first place. AG undefeated, three gains, three wow. wins, three points, right? Mm. Amazing performance by the boys from Chengdu AG. This game is really, really amazing. Mm -hmm. Like for this game, we not only see like how AG is going to tackle those difficulties during the game, and also they showed a really strong power about their teamwork to us. Right now, it just looks like they there's not there's no other team that can beat them, right? Mm. Like the, the only team that I could see right now is KSG that in game 11, they're going to be facing them. Yeah. So let's have a short interview and let's see who's going to be with us. Hello, Xiao Yin, Xiao Yin, Xiao Yin, Xiao Hello, I'm Ai Si. Hey, oh, oh, okay, now we have a very important question. Ai Si, okay. Uh, so, after the game, I want to ask you how you feel right now. I'm going to ask you. Uh, I'm still excited, because it's a big game. 嗯，呃 ，the first question like after winning in this way, how do you feel right now? And the answer is really excited and thrilled because they really did a like huge overturn for this matchup. All right, so the next thing would be like under that kind of pressure, how's the conversation or how's the communication goes during the game? 呃，那其实你们在这一局当中一直都承受着比较大的一个逆风的压力嘛？那整体的团队协作和沟通是怎么样做的呢？这就稳扎稳打嘛，因为我们后期还是比较强的。嗯 ，All right, so they didn't like rush to do it and just keep calm and just won it in that way, pace by pace. All right, so the last question would be: You've already got three wins in a row, and um, how do you feel about the next matchups? 啊，你们已经是三连胜的状态了。那对于接下来的比赛，有没有比较期待的队伍，或者有没有什么呃想要说的呢？呃，虽然现在就是三连胜嘛，但是其实我们还是有很多这个细节方面的一些问题，然后也是失误比较多的，更多的还是想呃做好自己。Uh, okay, so the answer is, though we already got three uh, one in a row, we still feel like there's some of mistakes that we made during the game and we hope we can do better and we'll just, you know, just execute our strategy and gain more wins for us. 好的,那也是,谢谢你接受我们的采访啊,谢谢艾斯,辛苦了。That was a surprise. That was a very big surprise, but it's alright, like at the end of the day, AG right now taking three victories. Mm. I feel like the boys right now are in their best premium performances, right? Like they're in great state. I hope that they can just keep going like this and bringing us two more amazing games that we're going to have them on today. 
Mm. And uh, we are really looking forward to those next matchups, especially those one we highlight before our casting for today. Mm -hmm. They're going to be the 11th game, which is going to be KSG play against AG. Yes, exactly. Well, let's watch the highlights right now and let's just pay a little bit more attention on the mechanics of everything, right? Let's, let's see what notes we can put on and let's just shine that spotlight on the greatest moments of the game. Look at that. Xiaoyin taking on a 1v2 and just falling in, being successful, caging in people down, using his ultimate to deal the damage. And we can see, actually, Zhi Nian, for this round, he really had a nice ultimate and get control of a lot of opponents. Well, actually, I feel like in these kind of huge advantages, actually, DYG could be more decisive, could be yes. more aggressive. Yeah, exactly. Like, there were moments in the game where DYG had like a clear, gigantic advantage, mm. and they should have just gone in and then just pushed in for the last for the last push. Like, that's something that they need to improve, like in that kind of advantages to be more aggressive, to be more decisive, and just win a game in a more smooth way. Game 5, ladies and gentlemen, C and WE and Guantro TTG. Can the boys from Guantro TTG, after two big losses yesterday, jump back in the game? Let us see. Are WE going to be able to move forward and they just take their second win of the tournament? Let us see as well. Everything is in the air. Game 5 out of 12. We're almost halfway through. Yeah. We can say, like, we've already been speaking so much things on uh, TTG, yep. right? During even those like, pro casting uh, before our like official matchups just kick off. So we really like had uh, held in, like high expectations on TTG on this rotation because they made a huge change right now. So we need to see if they can put it into effort. If they can exchange it or not. We talked at the beginning, right, like about how Puran and Pinchan mm. were going to be subbed out, mm. and right now we're going to have Mingyan and Snow. Um, what do you think is happening? Do you think that is the TTG coach just saying like, okay, we're just missing something in jungle and support, or it's not a matter of 
pointing fingers at anyone and is just trying to find solutions to I guess. some inexplicable, inexplicable situation. Mm. I guess maybe he has got like various reasons. Yeah. It's going to be like only one reason. Well, some of it maybe it's because he need to change his strategy. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's because he thought the marksman, Qian Cheng, is still doing great. So yeah. he wants to pair him up with a protective support, which is going to be Snow, mm -hmm. and try to highlight that point in their strategy and see if they can do like during today. Snow is one of my favorite supports <laughs> the whole KPL history. Uh -huh. I'm going to be very straightforward with you. Uh -huh. A really cool guy, amazing person to talk to. Every time that I have, I've had interviews with him, mm. he's always super happy, a really nice person. Um, the way that he plays the game, mm. he's won trophies with QG Happy before, right? Mm. And right now in his moment here in Guantro TTG, he might have the experience to just find the solutions that they need. He might. So, like, as you mentioned, like, I know that you've been, like, really great uh, friends and also, that also means Snow is pretty experienced. Mm -hmm. He's been through so many difficulties. He's been through so many ups and downs. True. So after he's been rotated uh, to this game, see what kind of things that he can bring to this team. This is the moment where you have experience and uh. you're facing these kind of challenges. Mm. You better just use those experiences and you use anything that you have in your <laughs> toolbox to turn things around. If in three games, Quantro TTG is going to go with three mm. straight defeats. That's going to be the huge mistake or misfortune for yeah. them. Mm. That's going to be our biggest, our biggest hmm, I know surprise, what you want to say. We could say? Yeah, yeah surprise. That would be the biggest surprise of the tournament by now? Yeah, because we know that TDG actually, they've been through the first round. Yeah. That kind of proved how strong they were back to the whole year. Yeah. So we didn't expect that they performed in such way during yesterday's performance. So just take a look. Let's see. While well, they recover from the defeat. They allow the Tatcha strategy to be out in the table and WA is going to take it with both hands. <laughs> they really like that strategy. Uh, and Tatcha is a really nice like hero. And also we can see that we chose Tatcha with Miyamoto Musashi. We already see like those strategic importance showed by Dachao, right? Yes. He has several different ways to play with, several different ways to do that strategy. It's more like WE try to use it to build up a really solid or really high effort tolerance rate um, composition. The Dachao strategy in this last two days, 100% win rate. Any That's single quite time that it has showed up in there, mm. it's been always a win. If it hasn't been banned, it's been taken. And it has been taken, it's been a victory. It just made me feel like, you know, from those teams uh, from KPL Origin, yeah. uh, during the whole year, the Da Chao's composition or Da Chao's strategy kind of be their main courses mm -hmm. or compulsory class <laughs> during their study. Compulsory class, that's yeah. true. I like that term. You need it is to compulsory. Yeah. You must know how to play the meta. Yeah. You cannot just like, oh, there's that show in there. Yeah, I do not want it. Or, oh, I don't know how to use it. Mm. You're an athlete. Come on. <laughs> Get it done. So you can see that is pretty confident with Dachao. And also, Fuzi, though it has been banned away mm -hmm. from TTG, they still can pair it up with some tank um, top laners. Yeah, like right now, you can see they decided to ban Futsu because they knew that they had Gunsun Lee as their first pick, right? Mm. So no Gunsun Lee, no Futsu in that strategy. What are the options for top laner? Well, anything, in, as long as it's tanky enough. Mm -hmm. Xiaodun or Lianbo, okay. all gonna do it work. Or Ata. Lianbo is already on the side of TTG, ah. right? Then Xiaodun or Ata is gonna be a nice choice. The mid lane it's been it's being countered as well, right? Like they mm -hmm. have, don't have Trou Yu or, or Trou Jun. And we mentioned that it's very important for the strategy to clean mid lane first. 
it's not only about the top and the bottom, it's just like that mid lane needs to be cleaned quickly. And mm. it seems like their option is going to be Yixing. Yixing, not bad, but mm -hmm. it's more like Yixing needs to um, at least level up to two. Then he can gain the priority of cleaning those medium waves. What about TDG? Oh, Liu Bang paired up with Lan. Liu Bang and Gong Sun Li, yesterday it was a pretty Pretty common combo yesterday, right? Mm. There are multiple teams that to play that they played that Liu Bang and Gun Sun Li. I remember Guangzhou TTG yesterday played that. Mm. And let's see for today's game, they chose they take out Lam and for Ming Mingyang. Let's see, like these two new rotation would bring them like new things to this team or not? We talked about like how to get. Uh, people from the Tatcha strategy out of that TP tunnel, right? Mm. And their option for Guangzhou TTG is going to be seizure. Mm. Do the kind of <laughs> compulsory pull out. <laughs> compulsory pull out. <laughs> it is. It is interesting for Seizure, right? Because normally Seizure <laughs> is going to use her second ability mm. to try to pull people out, right? The mm. Silky Beauty is trying to take them out. Seizure is a very good counter to the Stachia tunnel, mm. or yeah, a very good counter for the most meta hero in top lane, Meng Tian as well. True. Like for Sishu, the reason why TTG take it is they want to use it as a counter pick to yes. that out. Uh, everything is going to depend on Joe Wei right now. True. Can Joe Wei really, really like be accurate enough to take people out of the tunnel? Uh, Joey is not gonna be dealing no damage whatsoever. Like his up, his up, his job is just gonna be disturbing that strategy, trying to be an obstacle, trying to force them into mistakes, and see what their junglers can do. Because um, Xixu is more considered as a utility mage. Yeah. He don't need money. He don't need gold. Or he that. That also means he can't be able to deal much damage. So it's most because of the control ability that he offered. So if no gold is needed for C it mm. means that we're gonna have junglers just completely taking control of that mid lane gold. Lamb is going to take farm so much. Liam Po does not need, does not need that much gold. C doesn't need that much gold. They're just gonna be completely feeding on Ming Yang. A very big responsibility for someone very big. that just came in from the substitutes. Well, for Mingyang, it's not only because how important he is for this typical composition. Yep. It's more like, well, he brings something new to this team to buck up his bodies, to let him, like, drag him out of that nightmare, of, the, of that up circle, you know, to just buck them up. Let's wait and see what's going to happen. Can Guantro TTG get their first victory? Or can Cian WE just push them down the abyssum? Cian yeah, WE already got one win in their hand. So they need this win to help them go for them all. Let's see. I'm your caster, Isaac Peña. I'm your caster, Nora. Nora, ooh, straight into Frenzy. Wow. <laughs> Aggressive. Love that. Mm, be quite fierce. Maybe that's the reason that we just mentioned about. Maybe mm -hmm. the coach thought Tian Chen's performance quite well yeah. for yesterday. So let him still even want to hide. Wow, him. look at that. Three people against one. He won't be able to survive. And he's going to have to proc his flash, trying to go around the walls. But it's no Ooh. use whatsoever. And TTG is going to take the first blood. Not even one minute in the game. First flight goes to Jing Ji. Well, this is also quite a surprise. It feels like TDG, after like yesterday's defeat, <laughs> when they're back to their hotel or back to their restroom, they must be tortured by their coach. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. I, I, I'm very sorry for the boys. I'm really, really sorry. Maybe Coach Care just got back and they just told them, you know what? <laughs> We're practicing right now. No sleep for us today. Yeah, just like, wake up! What are you guys doing today? And they're just like, all right, I'm sorry. We're going to do better tomorrow. And they really did it. They're really doing better. The beginning is quite good. At least for, so far. Uh, so far, yeah, exactly. Mm. 
snow being vital, just getting the vision, mm. allowing Lamb to know where the opponents from WE are having. So for TTG, the beginning is quite well, and also let's check what Minyoung's going to bring to TTG. Mm. And for WE, they just want to do some trade. And try. Take him to half of his HP bar. Mm. And his flash has been forced out. Tianxi without the flash, that's good news for Lam. Yeah, because Lam just can get <laughs> straight towards him and I use his ultimate to pull him back. No way out. To be one, Tintin being launched on air is going to have to replete. Now everyone just vying for the priority of cleaning this mid wave. And we can see how fear or how aggressive Tianxi is playing yeah. right now. Almost three minutes of the game, mm. Shadow and Minyan, still both of them on level six. Not a very big advantage. Lian Po with the righteous <laughs> lamp puts three people on air. Tianxi is going to go out. The Eye of the Werewolf is going to bring him back. Lian Po is taking extremely low. He's going to have to proc his flash. Look at that. Mm. Minyan comes in and right now it's a feast for him. Did you see that crowd control offered by Snow? That was insane. The shield. Snow just gets straight in and he let four people be stunned. <laughs> I love it. Look Whoa. at that. Snow being right now the solution that TTG needed for this very big problem they had. Playing as a completely new team right now, Minyan and Snow showing that Coach Care might have got it right with them. Wow, they really undertaken the responsibility about what they're going to do and they really bring some hope to TTG right now. That's like, true. look at that. That, Liu Wang, that control, wow, that was <laughs> totally insane. It's really hard to do that, especially your Liu Wang. When you, when you have so many years playing this game, right? Oh. Look at that, the righteous slam comes in. And actually, this was the time I want to highlight Wu Liu. I, I want to highlight 556. Five, yeah. But then Snow just came in. Snow comes in Whoa. and just locks on all of them, yes. allowing Mingyang to come in. As I just told you, a feast for Mingyang. This is insane. And we can see, <laughs> oh, they're just cheer up. That's Way a good go. sign. That's a good sign. You, you really need to shout it out. Morale, you oh. know? It's all about morale. You, mm. you, want, you want your team to believe that they can win. Yeah, and sometimes those volume, those mm. voice can help. Yeah. You need to be able to transmit that power. Is this going to be the first time in these last two days that this Dacia strategy is not going to win? Mm. AG's Dacia strategy looked like it was not going to win either. They turned things around. Let's True. see if it's going to be the same narrative in this game. Especially the last team fight, we can see there's some standouts down by 5-5-6, five, five, right? Mm -hmm. The second ability, the timing, and also the ultimate, that was quite good. Until Snow just came in. <laughs> that was insane. Tension. Anyway. <laughs> Taking that second turret. Mm. And now for TTG, they, they have got three gold lead right now. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Almost 2,500 gold lead, right? Mm. Quite, quite high. Quite high. Axe of Torment, the item for Shadow. Now TTG just slow down and they try not to rush just try to be stable and do as it as the plan strictly follow the plan follow the lead and i guess that lead might be snow <laughs> Mm. There has to be someone. Mm. Look at that, Minya is waiting in the bush. She's waiting for Tinchi's cue. She just wants to clean the wave and run away. I love how Tianchi is just destroying all turrets. He's not engaging <laughs> in no fights whatsoever. True. He just got his eyes on the turret. Look at that, Joey locks in. One person is going to be Anne. Taking very low, he's going to have to TP back to, to, to base. And now this is the time for WE to rethink about what they're going to do for the next step. Mm -hmm. Because as they selected that as their support, that also means they need to keep a clear mind. They need to hold those overview towards the map. Yes. 
They need to get. They need to keep control of the vision, mm. and it's more about just like managing the the, the waves. The, the waves, right? Mm. Who's gonna be take that red buff? Console, you've got it. Console, you it. keeps the red buff for them. So still, there's now a four thousand gold lead goes to TTG. That's quite huge because it hasn't been ten minutes, right? If you have a four thousand gold lead and you're playing on this on this strategy, would you want to just go and engage? Look at that, Joey's position. He gets one and is going to be taken all the way to half. Chin Chin goes in, just pushing him away. Mm. The Push. fact that Joey is just going to be such a strong initiation. Yeah. That's good news for TTG, and it's a huge problem for WE. And now we can see they want to do something on the top, and he truly oh! dragged him out. Oh, dragged out of the tunnel. Sad. 5-5-6 five, five, is going to fall. Great movement by Joey. Such accuracy just showed by Joey. And now TTG really lead this game. They really can go wherever they want to go and also like the priority is in their hand. This is the TTG that we were expecting this whole week, right? Yeah, that's the Dominant. one they're supposed to be. Dominant. But I like this. But to be honest, as for WE, I don't think like they they, they just feel like they now don't have a really clear mind. Yeah. Because at that Who time, 556 five, with that purify, mm -hmm. he has the chance yeah. to just purify that ability down by Joey. But he Ooh, didn't. Oh, one more time. Look at that. The Heaven's Origin is going to proc. Hey, Chin Chin, three people on air. It's not going to be enough as all of them are trying to run in for the tunnel. The mm. shark comes in. Can not put his jaws around anyone, but Gunsun Lee is going to fall. But everyone just came back again with a healthy H brawl. Well, they chase further, but since Ann's HP ball would be shred down, they don't want to do it anymore. But this is a 1 1 trade. A 1 1 trade that just saw Shadow falling one more time. Hasn't been a good day for Shadow. <laughs> Look at that, Let's just see. caging everyone in. Mingyan has to go around for too long, too far. When he goes into shark mode, everyone does half a second. <laughs> half a second earlier, he could have taken at least four kills in there. Yeah. And we can say, like, um, for WE, they really had those master thing about the second skill. Oh, Tianxi taking very low, he's going to proc his ult. Runs away, but it's not going to be all the eye of the world, but brings everyone back full HP. That's the importance about using Dacia, and we can see Wu Liu really master it. It yeah. feels like he really knows the timing. The <laughs> and ten minutes, we get to the ten minutes mark. We can see Pei and actually having a little bit of a gold difference on top mm. of Tianshan, right? He now had 1,000 gold to lead. And on the contrary, if we pay attention to the jungler's gold, mm -hmm. we can see Mia has 1,000 gold lead. Oh, launch being on air. Shadow's going to fall one more time. Now he's going to be Mingyang taking in one more kill. Takes on Tianxi. It's a 2 0 trade. Right now, TTG has green light on top lane and bottom since they have. Two lanes with minions coming in. They want to make something happen on the top lane. They oh, really that. want to take the high ground tower down. It's going to be difficult for Peyton to clean that, right? And yeah. not put himself in danger. Look it's at that, dragged. manipulated, brain drag bound. It's going to disappear. Mm. It's going to be Minya that is going to take the kill. One more time. It's going to be Xiaohotun that is going to fall. Right now, it's going to be five people on TTG. If you thought that they did not have a chance, they're proving you wrong. And this Minius comes arrive on the top lane. Go for the crystal, heading to the victory. Goes to TTG. Congratulations. Guan Crow TTG just shot in those who didn't believe in them. Look at that. Taking the victory, having the subs, coming in with a completely different formation. And they go home with the victory. Great way to start for the boys. It truly is going to be a great start for this lineup. 
and we do need to highlight this rotation mm -hmm. and we do need to highlight snow yes this performance showed by snow and also this change this small change that happened in TTG we, we, we can feel it like now TTG is ready to come back now TTG is ready to show another form which is supposed to be their best condition and they want to bring that kind of energy to people and they want to tell everybody we are still that TTG that you all held that high expectation towards us they were in the round one of the KPL qualifiers for a reason, right? Mm. Because they were one of the top six teams during our Summer Cup. And that's the reason why they made it all the way there to round one. And the fact that they did not make it straight into group stages does not mean that they're not a team to be afraid of. And today they just showed us that by changing things a little bit, just having a little bit more tools in your toolbox, there's always a way how to get out of those difficulties. Yeah, you just need to keep trying. Mm -hmm. Never give up. Never keep give up. Keep trying and seize for a chance, seize for an opportunity. And this win is going to be such a huge relief to TTG. But still, since they lost two games yesterday, yeah. so for the next rest matchups, they need or they'd better to win them all. Well, it just feels like in the game when you just have, like give first blood away, right? <laughs> and then they just, they just come and invade on your blue buff, and then you just need to do something immediately just to stop it, just yeah. to stop the bleed, right? Yeah. And I think that they just did that, that this win is going to stop the bleed. It doesn't mean that they're in a safe spot. Like right now, they are very far away from safe. Um, right now, they still have more games coming mm. and hopefully they're going to keep the same level that they just showed us right now. That's the point. If they keep the same level that they just showed us in mm -hmm. this matchup, keep the same state, I'm sure that they can go further. Yep, they have Changsha TS going to be their next game. And then today, they're going to be part of our last match mm. against Nanjing Hero. It's still too early to, for them to, you know, lower, low down their guard mm -hmm. or just to cheer, cheer for it. They just need to keep attention and mm -hmm. pay attention to like those matchups that's going to follow up. That's true. That's true. That's true. For WE on the other side, well, right now they did not show today the pristine shape that they had yesterday. Um, today they came in not being able to really come back, mm. not being able to bounce back in the game. And sadly for them, still no victories. Well, the reason, actually, I am I feel like those conditions, especially for um, W's jungler, mm -hmm. need to like cheer up. They have to. Mm. They really need to because after two losses today, they better change things around. All right, let's Snow. see. Snow MVP <laughs> goes to his little ball. That was quite impressive. Like for today's matchups, even we are still in the fifth matchups. Mm -hmm. We already got several highlights. We already got several standouts. And I will count Snow, count his little ball for one of it. Yeah, exactly. Look at that. This. He knows that Xin Xin jumps in, then uh -huh. the battlefield command comes in, he gets in the mix. And he first hide in the ambush, yes. hide his vision. Hide in the vision, then just jumps in, and then the multiple control. Oh. Multiple stun, allowing just Minya to come in and take so many kills. This Four people insane. in that perfect control. Yeah. One and more time, look at that. And also, like Beautiful. those control skills done by Joe is also yes. very crucial. Oh, come on, Joey has has was a rock star during the whole game, right? <laughs> uh, Joey was such a rock star in that Sishu. <laughs> On the spotlight. <laughs> oh, like TTG, the whole TTG just played really well. You cannot just say like, okay, mm. uh, it all depended on Snow because he took the MVP, you know? Uh, everyone in TTG did amazing. Tian Chong just taking control of all the turrets. And the moment that Ming Yan jumped in, mm. um, he did not let anyone go. 5-0-3 for him in this game. True. So actually, for today's matchup, for both, like all of those five members from TTG, they performed pretty well. Mm. Mm. It was not enough for from WE. They had a team fight rate of 100%. Yeah. Everyone participated in all the team fights, but as you can see, just 
the gold trend that they had, they never saw it in their favor. Never, ever since the minute three and a half, mm. it just started snowballing to a gigantic advantage. And after we watch this rank again, I'm now a little bit worried about uh, Shanda B right now because mm -hmm. you can see they've got three loss. A one and three, right? Mm. That's not enough. That's totally not enough. They're going to have to bounce back because we really want this on day four just to be crazy. We want to get to day four <laughs> of this qualifiers and then just for it to be explosive. We want to get to day four and everyone having an opportunity to go in, oh. right? Oh, I'm really looking forward for those <laughs> matches because that's going to be something to look at. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that too. But now let's have some time with our interview. Let's see who's going to be with us. Hello, Joey. Can you say hello to everyone? Uh, hello, 大家好，我是广州 T G 的中单选手九位。嗯，呃，想问一下，就是昨天回去以后做了什么样的复盘？看到你们今天这样一上场以后，整体的状态都是非常好的。嗯，就是其实我们原来训练赛状态挺好的嘛，然后的话比赛的结果比较不尽人意，回去的话就没有太多的复盘，主要是解决好自己的心态吧。All right, so our first question was, what did they prepare after they lost the game yesterday? And the answer is they didn't prepare anything like quite special. It's more like they need to recover from the defeat and also need a really good mentality. And that's the key point. All right, so our next question is, after this rotation, like why did you guys make that decision? And how do you feel right now? Uh, Mm. Okay, the answer is um, the coach made this decision and it's basically because those efforts that they did during those trainings uh, like every day and helped them to gain the victory. All right, congratulations to you guys made such a nice victory and looking forward to your next matchups. Nice. It was really good to see. Like mm. They just need to believe in their coach. Mm. The coach makes the decisions, then you just try to follow the strategies, try to get to be able to develop the strategies that the coach is putting in there. And coaches the spend so much time just watching video and just taking notes that you just need to believe in them. True. Sure. And also that's the coach like play a really important role in the whole team. That's true. Mm. Now, highlights are here. Let's just check a little bit on what was the big difference between each of them. We talked a lot about this one, right? This is the way how Snow just waited for the right moment. Nice Comes in, point. stuns four people. That allowed them just to take that advantage just at three minutes of the game. That was the moment where they started snowballing. Mm. And we can see, like, they end up this game in, it hasn't been 12 minutes, right? They just quickly shut down the game and just win the road. Exactly. Mm. The way that Joey was able to just try to move around, trying to find the carries, lock them down, starts manipulating. That was critical. Mm. Game five, it's over. Game six, it's on its way. Let's have a little break and we'll be back.
sixth game, Sutro KSG against Nanjing Hero. This game, actually I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Once KSG, they've already had two wins in a row. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, Hero now, one win, one loss. And these two teams, actually they're quite competitive. 100% win rate yesterday mm -hmm. for Sutro KSG, right? They took Changsha TES and they took Shenzhen DYG. Both of them very strong victories. Uh, let's wait and see if they can do exactly the same against Nanjing Hero. Yeah. Did you notice that drum that just appeared uh -huh. <laughs> in our scene? It's one of those character um, like feature about mm. uh, Hero, this club. They have that drum and you know they fly from Nanjing to Shenzhen and they bring that drum too by air. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I just love how they just like really have that idea, right? Yeah. It's part of the culture. Ah. There is no difference between esports clubs and traditional sports clubs. You you mm. see it a lot in football, in basketball. Mm. Um, you see a lot like the fans culture. And in esports, no difference at all. Look mm. at that. It just like bring yourself or create such a vibe to make yourself at home. <laughs> Anyway, back to our matchup for today, for specifically this game. KSG, they showed a really dominating power uh, from yesterday's performance. Yesterday's performance is mm. taking two wins. And one of them um, with a Tatsiao strategy, right? Mm. And then the other one that they took was a Master Lupin and Lupin number seven strat. The point of, or the reason of why, may, uh, what, what's the secret of KSG being so powerful? Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's because both, like, all of those five players, first, they're quite experienced, and then, these days, they're really in their best condition. Let's for their jungler. Mm. Nanjing Hero yesterday started um, with a loss against WE, mm. but then they were able to turn things around and they took a very important win against EDGM. That's true. And also speaking to Hero, speaking to those rotations happened during all those teams, Hero is one of those huge changes that happened in their team. And it seems like they are really just trying to adapt to it and trying to gain themselves a really nice result. Let's see, it's going to be our last game of this first half of 12 games from today. It's going to have Nanjing Hero on the blue side with one win and one loss. And on the red side, it's going to be Sutro KSG. Mm. Two wins, still undefeated. And we can see Hero just ban food and let Na Chao out. And for the first pick, they try to use Meng Tian as this, such a strong meta pick. Meng Tian. That's going to be nice. It's going to be nice to be able to see Di Fang, Dong Fang is going to be on that Meng Tian. Mm. Well, Dong Fang actually is known as playing those tanky top laners or tanky heroes. Uh, and uh, since Meng Tian is really good at both provide such a solid front line and also deal some damage, so it's quite suitable for those players. Atai is going to be the answer to that Meng Tian, to yeah. that Meng Tian match. Mm. Ata not being able, I don't think that Ata is going to be able to withstand a lot of the monkey and damage coming in. But let's wait and see. It might just be good enough to provide some sort of defense for whatever option that they choose for marksman. Mm, but there's one striking factor about Atu uh, using this Ata is that mm. this is one of his signature heroes. He used um, seven times during the Summer Cup and had a such high winning rate. Atta is a very, it's a very popular pick right during mm. our Summer Cup and we saw it as well during the wild card stages. Good. It's gonna be Master Lupin and Lupin number seven combo. Again, mm -hmm. they used it again. As for Xiao Zhou, Lupin number seven is also a very suitable hero for him. Should we just point out the elephant in the room? <laughs> Mo Zi and Bai Li Shou Yue. Wow, that's quite a counter pick towards this Luban number 7. Since Luban 7 just need to stand there, use his passive to do more output. So those pet poking damage going to be a huge threat towards him. Oh, Mo Zi is, is able just to come in, jump in with the bombs, stun you down, mm. allowing Bai Li Shou to 
um, Pali Shou Yue, mm. just the very important, mm. this very important marksman that works as a sniper, mm. just to immediately just vanish your HP bar. Sniper gonna be the most feature about Pali Shou, mm -hmm. since he has the longest range of uh, like attacking range through all those uh, marksmen. Yes. Let's wait and see. It's going to depend a lot mm. on what the support and the bottom laner can do. Like if they can coordinate properly, mm. just for that combo, for that chain to happen, it's going to be bad news for Lupa number seven. So the accuracy and also the support plus the marksman, the synergy is going to play a really important role through this team. Let's see. Let's see what's going to, what's gonna happen. KSG is gonna be on KSG is gonna be under a lot of pressure. A lot, a lot, a lot of pressure. Geo is going to depend a lot on what Xiao A can do. If Xiao A is not being able to just stand in front of those bullets, the whole Master Lupin and Lupin number seven strat is gonna fall down to pieces. True. And one thing else, uh, actually KSG can KSG can chose those aggressive um, jungler as one of the, their jungler and they can speed up because as for hero they need time to farm up I love the way that Nanji here is playing right now monkey uh, monkey yeah I just, I, just, I just love it a lot of people yesterday while I was watching the while I was watching the stream were just asking why it's always the same heroes right like why it's always that and then we were just trying to just explain how different patches have different metas <gasps> and they have different heroes that they're very strong. Mm. But look at that, Nanji here just showing us a completely different understanding this, and just showing us a completely different composition. This is quite old school, mm -hmm. like using Bailey Shoyu as the mid. Yeah. It's quite like, it brings me back to those like <laughs> <laughs> earlier years. And also um, it is because uh, Bali Shouyue is in the mid, he can gain the vision control for his team and also bring Meng Tian plus, plus Guan Yu, both side lanes gonna be warriors that's gonna cause like huge damage towards uh, Luba number 7 Let's wait and see, it, it depends a lot, it depends a lot on how they want to play it, right? Like this is going to be a very, very unorthodox strat from Nanjing Hero it's not something wow. very common. Look at who's gonna be on Guan Yu. It's going to be Xinhan, the one that is gonna be taking on that Guan Yu. That's quite clever, I need to admit it. Because Xinhan was, was the side laner, was yeah. the top. He was playing the top, but he rotates to the mid. But there's only like few minutes for them to adapt to this kind of rotation. I really respect Jojo, <laughs> to be honest. The only thing that you can say right now from this whole strat, it's like it's super Nanjing hero. It's it is extremely, extremely, extremely Nanjing hero because that hero, Pai Li Shou Yue, yeah. that is just a key hero for Nanjing hero. It's just one of those heroes that whenever that you think about that character, mm. you think about Nanjing hero. It's just a matter of culture, it's a matter of history. Yeah. It's so many battles that they've been able to win with that specific character. Let's see. It's just like once you saw those composition, once you saw this kind of position, you will be like, what? But once you <laughs> saw team's name, you'll be like, oh, that okay, makes that sense. makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, true, true. All true, right, true. that's your job. All right. <laughs> I wouldn't expect that, that from any other club. Wow. And now it's just, you know, increase my expectations towards this matchup. So I, I, I imagine that there's not going to be like a very clear like who's going to be playing mid laner, who's going to be playing in the bottom. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of rotation. Yeah. To a moment that I don't think that we're going to have a very long, uh, a very long laning stage of the game. Mm. Like it's just going to become like rotations from bottom to top, from from top to mid, from mid to bottom. It's going to be like a Nanji Hero. Mm. They're going to have their steps up for today. That's for sure. Their step count today is going to come <laughs> up to 20, 30,000, that's for sure. And as for the beginning, I guess Bell, who's playing Bali Shou is going to be in the mid, and Guan Yu is going to play the top, and Meng Tian is going to play the bottom. It's just like two mice and mice. Let's see. Let's wait and see. That Munchie is going to be the first time that is going to show up for today. Let's see what they can do with that option mm. uh, for jungler. 
and we can see KSG, they really made a really like smart movement. They just play Xiao Zhou to the top yeah. because they already foresee like you would play Meng Tian as the bottom to bring you a winning lane, but they won't let you to successfully did it. So quite, quite clever. Quite clever, mm. KSG trying to do the invasion, trying mm. to take control of that blue buff been taken down, Atzo is going to use his might to take it away. Nothing can deal, they can do nothing to deal with others' invasion. Yeah, that's sad for no fear because right now it means that he's going to start the first rotation with no blue whatsoever. Mm. But it's quite interesting to see like for these two teams, well, wow, actually, like generally, we saw those tactics being mm -hmm. used, like after the game just kick off. Yeah. But for these two teams, they already set some traps during the drops, during the bantic phase, and also from the very first like laning phase. One seeing already in level four, mm. coming in trying to farm on that mid lane. He wants the minions. He wants the gold. He knows that the first two minutes mm. are looking really good for KSG. True. Because they uh, got like Luba number seven. Yeah. It's definitely gonna be a winning lane. Look at that. Xinhan can do nothing. He can only look at how this master Lupan and Lupan number seven, both of them just taking the turret down to three quarters of the, the HP. And that's some trick that KSG just used. Mm -hmm. They show you like, okay, we'll push Xiaojo as the top lane, but the fact is, after he cleaned up the first lane, he just, you know, rotate, roaming to the bottom lane. But on the other hand, Hero, they want to tackle uh, Luba number seven, so they put Guan Yu down. So that make Hero uh, put them into a deficit. Look at that Joku and Bell trying in the mid trying to clean the wave and then trying to support. Mm. But they have not been able to actually make anything mm. happen for them in the bottom lane. Has been defeated. It's been just Lupin number seven and Master Lupin just mm. very easily just farming and just farming and you don't want to let them snowball too much. <laughs> Look at that, Atzo has Again. been 1v2. I just keep trying to do those invasions because once he can take or steal away those blue buffs or red buffs or even some neutral monsters, it can just slow down the farming up by no fit. Different strategies. Very, very, very interesting. Right now we can see that Pali Show you have just made the, the run, the rotation down <laughs> to bottom. It's going to be a 2 2 right now here trying to slow down what Joe is doing right now. If it is a 2-2, if Hero is accurate enough for those mm -hmm. skill targeting, they're going to gain a win. Look at Guan Yu. Guan Yu is just trying to rotate from behind. He's waiting for the right moment. He's a man on a mission. Right now, Xinhan really wants to come in and take it. Ooh, he doesn't know if the damage is up. in. Joe is going to put in, he's going to go the race of cavalry, it's not going to be enough, it's going to be three, three people coming in, pushing him back. That's what we call awareness. Who would think that Guan Yu yeah, could exactly. be in your rear, but Zhao just told you, I got that kind of sensation that like there might be some enemies hiding in that bush. He disappeared for such a long time. Yeah. And then if for such a long time you cannot see him in the map, it's because he's up to something. Yeah. And we know that everything depends on just slowing down that Lupin. Wow, this matchup's going to be really interesting, really fantastic. It is already a very interesting matchup, right? Mm. And now we can see Bell, how quick he is. Mm. Twinkle his fingers. Adds of being able to control the blue buff one more time, right? Mm. Look at that, it's a 3v1, it's not gonna be enough. Like, it's gonna be first blood for KSG. KSG is quite calm, even though they kind of feel the opponent's strategy mm -hmm. or the opponent's composition is quite weird. Yeah. But they, they they didn't panic. They just, okay, follow our like own pace. Yeah. Do not panic, do what we should do, and just execute our strategy, and that's it. When you have the ability to control your own destiny, mm. there's nothing that you should be afraid of. Mm. But they, they, the only thing that they need to pay attention to is that um, 
as long as those outer tower has been taken down, mm -hmm. and as long as the team fight well start, KSC need to pay attention to watch out Guan Yu, and that's it. Yeah, exactly. Look at that. Guan Yu coming Ooh. in. The Razor camera is coming in. It's going to be Master Lupin. It's been vital to make Jill to survive that ambush. Nice flash down by Xiao Zhou and watch the bottom lane. Watch the bottom lane. Doomfound taking a lot of damage from left and right. It's going to be a 1-1 one, one trade. For this 1-1 one, one trade, well, we need to admit now from this brawl, mm -hmm. KSG has won those advantages. Especially, uh, Xiao Zhou did escape from that kind of team fight. Wow, well, I don't know exactly how he made it that happen. <laughs> Look at that, Doom Fang calling in his generals, dealing damage, taking as a very low, but he stayed for too long. Mm. Too many people coming in trying to put him down. Yeah, too many people. I know that that mountain is tanky, but every everyone's got a limit. <laughs> You can't do it like one versus five. That's gonna be too much. Well, and um, as you just mentioned, how Xiao Zhou made it to escape away from that team fight, from that surround. I guess that's something to do with the shoes that he selected. Oh. He chose the shoes of resistance. Okay. Mm. See, and that's it. He's like the time that he's gonna be stunned can be shortened. Excellent. Boots of resistance that are going to allow him Tyrant just to shorten the time that he's going to be stunned, right? Sure. So every time that he's going to receive an ability that might just lock him down and put him in a very vulnerable position, that choice of boots, it's going to save his life. And this is what, these are what we call details yeah. during our game. And that's quite vital because those details you need to make those details, gain you small advantages and put it into such a huge gap. As we're trying to come in, trying to lock down, but the ult is going to be wide. Bell still in a very healthy position. Mm. He just needs to keep practicing. <laughs> the only thing that Bell needs to do, <laughs> find the spot, turn around, put his rifle up, and look at that, that's already in my count, that's three in a row. Yeah, and also I guess for Bell, he's like very desire to have that siege breaker. Mm -hmm. Need that siege breaker. There's a there's a combination of items mm. that Bell needs to have, mm. not only to deal damage, but he's gonna need the armor pierce, right? Mm. Because that's the problem about play, about playing with a hero like Bailey Soldier. Yeah. yeah. Like, you, you only have a few chances. You, you have very few chances. You're so far away mm. that your bullets need to try to find the back laners. Mm. If you're just going to be hitting on the tanks in the front lane, um, there's not there's no much sense to have that hero. So armor pierce is going to be a very critical item for him. Yeah, and also those efforts that's going to be granted by uh, Siege Breaker. It's going to mm -hmm. be once his target's HP is below a certain percentage, he's going to gain extra damage. And that's quite suitable for those snipes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but who's going to deal the damage to put them under 30%? I guess that's going to be Meng Tian comboed with Guan Yu, like okay. fully controlled and let him to seize that kind of chance. So they're going to be extremely dependent to their positioning. Right? True, true. At the position of Guan Yu, the timing for Guan Yu to start. Normally, we wouldn't use Guan Yu that much as a first option for initiation, but mostly for counterattack. Mm. So actually, we would call those kind of com composition as like those miracle-making mm -hmm. compositions. Yeah, miracle-making compositions. Yeah. Like Love that turn. One movement or one big team fight, if you want it, you're gonna change it. But if you're not, you're just gonna keep being pushing backward by KSG, since KSG chose such a solid composition. Yes. Mm. Solid composition, very steady. Slowly but steadily, mm. they've already built a 2,000 gold, um, a 2,000 gold lead. Sure hit, time stand for Joku on that mode. That also means he haven't missed any shot by 10 10. Oh, Sinkhan being brought back. The Pig Span is going to lock his way. He's going to have to run to the sides. Look at that. If Bell cannot find the spot 
to shot on Seocio, mm. that's gonna be tough for him. Because right now his abilities are not strong enough for the tanks. Flying you again. Flying again, time. trying to come in from behind. Seocio being pulled Wait, back perfectly hit. by Xiao A. Saving him is only gonna be one scene when Guan Yu just had a clear opening on that Lupa number seven. But this is a zero one trade and gain hero more time for them to do something. Because we exactly. can see. Look at that one scene aiming. jumps in, <laughs> but he's just being locked down. Mm. And also the tyrant being still away by mm. Bell. We can see since the top time passed by, the accuracy that Bell had just being freezed. <laughs> like the beginning of that game, actually he missed some shots. Mm. But now, actually it's like 80%, I'll give it. Wansi and Xiaojiu are going to be the ones, the mm. richest people on the valley as right now. Mm. Once you make it all the way to the 9,000 mark, but not far away. No fear still. Again, that Monty still trying its best just to go in. To harass. Ooh, a kill goes to Mozu. Good, good control from, from Mozu, right? It's just like keep control. Like Aza has no idea about what he's gonna do or how he's gonna escape from such a constant control. Mm -hmm. I start feeling like Bell's damage is starting to go online, right? Ooh, Look at that, Guan Yu raises cavalry from behind, is going to force Ichi to proc Ichi his flash. And that mid lane turret is going to fall. I would love to be able to see Bell's uh, items right now, right? Mm. Uh, just to see exactly what's going on with this man. Well, I would say it's, it's not going to be bad, or it's going to be really close to have that thief breaker, or he already has it. <laughs> Let's just check it after we saw the ball. But the point is, we can see, like Xin mm -hmm. like this Guan Yu, he really know what what timing he can catch to just go in and split up those battlefield into different parts. Like the whole hero, the whole hero team, like the way that they're moving around, uh. the coordination in between their movements is just close to perfect. Look at that. Guan Yu pushed away from bottom lane. Mm. Just make KSG to make to try to make a decision. Do I want to go and clean or do I want to come for this dark overlord? True. And also Guan Yu plus Monkey and their synergy is quite good. Yes. Look at that. On the top, Tung Fang's yeah. going to find an opening. He comes Whoa. in, but it's been locked down. <laughs> And now it's going to be tragic as the Winters here is going to deal so much damage on most of the backlaners from Hero. What has just happened? Like Hero just pushed everyone to that small camp. Mm -hmm. Just like get him around, surrounded by all those people from Hero and did such a nice big, big team fight. You see like Bung Tie just pushed everyone in that small yes. space in this complicated landform and Guan Yu just let in, just step forward and just break all those battlefields, split it up. Tung Fang and Xin Hun, that's been critical in their ally. We talked about the synergy between the hero team members and look at that. Tio Tran knows that this is exactly what he wanted. Yeah. He knows that this is it. If Mung Tian can jump in from the left and Guan Yu can jump in from the right, where is that Lupin number seven gonna go? And that somehow shows Jojo jo, jo really fully trust his team member. Yes. Because this kind of weird composition mm -hmm. is quite risky. You need to fully trust those mechanics that yes. those members have, then would like select such compositions for them. We talked about KSG having a gold lead. Mm. That's been completely wiped out of the map. And right now it's Nanjing here are the ones that they are 1,000 gold ahead. Mm. But as for KSG, it doesn't mean like they do not have any chance. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, for this composition, it's quite solid. And like the, the error tolerance rate is quite high. So they just need to have someone to keep watching Guan Yu's entrance. And that's it. Keep eyes on Guan Yu. No, Don't they need to keep in. eyes on everyone, right? <laughs> like if they keep eyes on Guan Yu, that opens, that opens the space for Bell just to find a direct line mm. towards the, back, the backliners. 
Ooh. Wow, look at that, exactly what we're talking about. Everyone is just looking for Mountain, looking for Guan Yu, and opening, and Xiao Jiu is going to be taken extremely low. And we can see they're now trying to take down this high ground tower on the bottom lane. Since they got this Vanguard, gonna strand them up, and they can successfully did it. They're gonna be successful in just taking that high ground turret. And now Nanjing Hero looking like they have control of the game right now. True, since they've got this high ground tower and advantages, that also means they have got the vision control. Starbreaker, Siege Breaker, Eternity Blade, the items that Baili Shoyue already has. The problem is, well, we can see actually uh, Hero, these two heroes are keep doing those long range poking. Yeah. But the heroes from KSG, which they selected, they can have little chance to just sneak behind and mm -hmm. cause some threat on Bell or on Woods because they always keep it quite safe or long range or distance to keep you away. So it's kind of be a little bit tricky for neither Wan Xin or Ata to approach those backliners. The, back, the fact that Xinhua is playing on Guan Yu mm. completely opens the front line. Yeah. Totally just opens the front line as everyone needs to be paying attention on where is this Guan Yu going to come instead of just standing in front of Xiao Jiu and just taking the bullets for him. So that's going to distract it, KSG. Wow, so let's Double see. Eternity Blade. Eternity Blade, two of them. 2,000 gold lead. Yeah. Trying to find Miyamoto Musashi, or ultimate, already pulls out. Already and trying to out. pull back. He's oh, nice. look at that. The damage is this there, but it's not being lethal all the way until Monkey oh. comes in. Pushing everyone against the walls. It's going to be one. It's going to be two of them, a double kill for Miyamoto Musashi as well. What's next? Like two of members from Hero, they are still chasing for Miyamoto Musashi. But on the other hand, No Fear just being killed by KSG. This is going to wow. be a 1-1 one -one jungler trade. But after all, in total, this is a 2-3 trade and KSG won the advantages. KSG winning the advantage in that fight, but they lost the, top, the, the turret on top lane. Mm. That's going to give them so much pressure on both sides as we get to the 18th minute mark. The Two more minutes for the Tempest Dragon and that Shadow Overlord is going to be critical. True, because if Hero taken down that mm -hmm. um, t uh, Overlord Dragon, they're going to offer them a lot of like advantages on those lanes. Yeah, look at that. Like, this battlefield just... I just love how the way, like, Wan Xin was the target at the beginning of the fight, mm. and he was the last one on falling. Yeah. Just and, insane. And I want to highlight the ultimate done by Zhou Jun. Yeah. Wow, caused the winter scare in there, right? Damage. Yeah. This is going to be a massive amount of damage. Almost 19 minutes of our game. No one seems to want to contest that Overlord. Mm. They don't seem to want to try to go and literally just go for it. it seems like it's not going to be enough time for any of the two teams to take it. Well, for Hero, it is because like for their composition, it's not allowed them to just rush that. Um, Shadow Overlord. Yeah, exactly. So they just like try to shut it down and see if they can do it or not. They just take the Shadow Tyrant. The Tempest Dragon is going to spawn. PSG, they still got chance. No, chance I, they I'll do have. It. Mm. Of course, chance they do have, and we've already mentioned it so many times. Mm. You get to 20, you get to 20 minutes. You get over the 50,000 gold, the 50,000 gold mark. It's already about the mechanics. True. It's already about like who's going to be better on that one-on-one -on -one and who's going to be able to take the chance for those main objectives. It's all about mechanics. And also the key point for KSG, whether they're going to win that team fight or not, all lean on Cao Zhou, all lean on that Nuba number seven. He needs to stay alive. He needs to stay alive. Though it's going to be really difficult, but he needs to stay alive. Let us wait and see. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. 
It's gonna be a mark. Go straight forward. In. Brute force taking that turret and it's going to be open season right now. That Guan Yu can just run anywhere he wants right now. That's gonna be a huge problem to KSG. They came into this game undefeated, but it's just looking very difficult for them just to get out of the valley still with three wins. Mm. Yes, you really need to be careful about their position. Mm -hmm. Really need to be careful about those positions. They need to spot Guan Yu. They need to spot Meng Tian. And also, at the same time, meanwhile, they need to get avoid of the bullet shot by Bell. Musashi Miyamoto won't be able to go back and clean the wave. The dragon taken almost down to 20,000 HP. It's quite close. It's going to be for anyone, but it's going to re-aggro. Guan Yu's coming from down there. He cannot find a good spot to jump in now. It's going to be Seoju that's going to be forced around. One time, two times. Seoju has a great spot. The crystal is being poked by the super minions. It's going to be one thing going back to clean the wave. Such a nice opportunity offered to Hero. And we can see they still got five men alive. And now they have such advantages provided by those minion waves. They can go for it. They can go for their victory. They could try. Let's see. Save the Sanctuary is going to be proc one time and two times. Right now it's going to be Dong Fang. The one that is coming in just pulling in. One C is going to disappear. Each is pushed back. All the way to the fountain is not going to be enough. Guan Yu takes the kill and it's going to be Hero. Nanjing Hero taking the win. Congratulations to Nanjing Hero. Such a nice matchup. And everything just went insane from the very beginning. Once we saw this drop, once we saw the ban pick face, mm -hmm. everyone just goes like, what, what just happened on this battlefield? But Hero just used this, what we call weird composition. But if it works, but if it's suitable, then it is. They used this composition to gain another win for them. And they showed another kind of play style to all of those audience. Yeah, very unorthodox composition, right? Like something uh, that you don't see every single day. But well, they came in. Um, they knew that they could try it, they, it worked for them. They wanted, they really, really, really wanted KSG to play the Lupin and Master Lupin um, combo. And they just gave them the bait and they beat it. For KSG, right, for this game, actually they really played quite well, even for that last team fight. They tried their best to avoid all those combo, all those CC, but there's like too much. It feels like endless. Everyone's targeting on Xiaozhu. Everyone's targeting on that Luban number seven. So they really made their effort to it, but can't turn this around. They had the, they had the advantage since early in the game. Mm. And Nanjing Hero, and whenever that you give them the advantage, well, they're not one of those teams that they're just gonna let it go. They just came in and they just showed that they really want one of those four tickets into group stage. True. And I guess that's something to do with their coach, Zhou Zhe. Uh, he's really a genius. He is a very good coach. Oh. He is a very good strategist. He knows how to create, how to create a lot out of nothing, right? Mm. Because nobody was expecting this combo. Yeah. That's what I mean by getting a lot out of nothing. That was not something that we had on our predictions. It was not something that we had on our cards. And then he just kind of like saw it there, put it together and came up with a good solution. That's what good strategies do. And it seems like he really had his own understanding about how to play with this best of one format. Just give it, do some counter pick, do some surprising pick and that's it. And it's really like work it out. And as for KSG, actually this game, it's, I know like it, it would be a pity, but I don't, I don't think it's because of their fault or any mistakes. It's more like they didn't expect like their opponents would show such a composition. They're just like, 
they really did a great job, especially in the early game. They didn't panic, right? They just follow up and stand for the strategies and go for it. But that's what we call like magical making composition. True. So yeah. They were taken by surprise, that's mm. for sure. We talked a lot about like how in this Lupin and Lupin number seven composition, like you need to be able to take care of that of that Lupin. Mm. Just make it your baby. You want your baby <laughs> to survive. And sadly for them, it was just pressure coming from all sides. Let's see, this time MVP goes to Xin Heng, he's mm. Guan Yu. And this is the most unexpected card that Hero had. Once we've mentioned about Xin Heng just rotate from top to the mid. And for this composition, he, by using Guan Yu, really showed his talent. Just the way that he makes the decision, right? Because mm. uh, Xin Heng, when we received our starting and uh, we had him as a mid laner. Mm. Right? Like we had him already playing in mid lane. And when we saw the whole BP, and we saw Guan Yu, and we saw Pai Li Shou Yue, we thought it was going to be a Pai Li Shou Yue in the mid. We thought that it was going to be Xin Hong, the one that it was going to take on Pai Li Shou Yue. But he just went back to his roots. Mm. So we can see like how talented he is. Mm. And also like the fully trust those team members had towards crucial. each other. Mm. Crucial, crucial, crucial. <laughs> really nice movement and really nice choice, and also uh, it bring it bring it out, bring That's them exactly. the victory. Double, double eternity blade mm. for Pali Show you. Look at that, double eternity blade, pure sky, siege breaker, and star breaker. He just went with everything just to have burst damage. He just need to like enlarge his damage to the maximum. That's why he chose such items to build up such items. One of the very few heroes that can do that combos composition, right? Mm, very few. Maybe, I guess, only Bali Shouyue can do it. Mm. Or other heroes maybe can use when we, like non-professional gamers, can use it during our games, but not for them. And we can see the stand standings, we can see the rankings changed again. Changing again, Nanjing here is going to move to third place, mm. just going up the, all the way to tie with Sutro KSG. But this ranking is still temporary. Mm -hmm. No one's going to expect what's going to happen during the last field of matchups because we are still in our second day of our round two. Now, everything could change. Mm. Right now, we just finished our game six. That's going to be halfway through. That's going to set us to the half mark for today's games. We still have six more matches that hopefully they're going to be the same electrifying as this first half. True. And like we can see for today's matchup, even like for the few um, six matchups, we already seen so many excellent performance. So we are very looking forward to the next matchups. And now we're going to have some time to have an interview with, uh, we can see the number, the member from Nanjing Hero. Uh, hello, Xin Heng. Xin Heng, da da ba. Hello, 大家好,我是南京黑友九金星河。嗯,那首先恭喜你们一下,第一局比赛的胜利啊,第一个问题就想说,选这样的阵容是你们特意准备的呢,还是说当时在翻配个环节的时候,大家商量一下觉得可以就
we can just flip the page and then just move forward. Mm. I can see that right now, KSG just taking their first lost, first defeat of the tournament. And Hero is going to make it all the way to tie them on third place. Mm. Now, all the six games are done. Nora, you get to rest from now on. <laughs> now we're going to have Kenyon coming in right after the break. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Stay online and we'll be back soon.
Should I begin? Go okay. for it. Yeah, just go for it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, hello. So, <laughs> very nice to see you all. So, we'll be starting off our seventh match of today. So, we will be witnessing together a lot of more exciting matchups later on. Six more games to go. Six more games to go. Mm -hmm. Nora is gone right now. We have Tianyun. You still got me, so yeah, you, you, I'm still here. I'm still here, gonna That's be here for the next news. six. That's some good news. That's some good news. You know, know, I've been watching the whole like previous six match mm -hmm. when I was, you know, making up, mm -hmm. you know, uh, on the dressing room next by. So definitely a lot of good memories have led me a lot of good impressions, especially the one that AG got, yes. like the huge turning over within one game. That's super nice. And obviously we're gonna have like more exciting matchups following up so we will be watching in total like six matches in the following second half of today so 12 b01 uh, battles will be taking place for today as the second day for our kpl region qualifiers we started the day with shanghai edgm taking the victory against shenzhen dyg then beijing weibo took a victory against cnwe then shanghai edgm just became invincible against Gina RW to take oh, their second it. victory of the day. Re really, really impressive one. Yeah, really nice to see the boys there. Yep. Well, then we had matches four, five, and six with Chengdu AG, Guangzhou TTG, and Nanjing Hero taking the dub. Now, game seven, Gina RW against Beijing Weibo. You know, a lot of things will be taking place, in, especially in the second half of today's matches, because like there's our four teams. They will have like three battles within one day. They will be Weibo, TTG, AG, and Hero. So most of the matches will be happening in the mm -hmm. second half of today. So firstly, Weibo, Beijing Weibo, a very strong team in KPL region. And firstly, the first pick will be going for straightforward to Gongsun Li. Gongsun Li, Chelsea's mm. Gongsun Li is gonna be wow. So good. So, so good. good. Like, Such I'm so good. sorry, like, for everyone else, Chelsea's <laughs> Gongsun Li and Ino's Gongsun Li. Yep. Both of them have been like top in these last two days. These two players can, you know, have the ability to show off the limitations of the single character. Mm -hmm. Usually we see how aggressive they can be during the matchups, and usually we can see how accurate can find a perfect location trying to deal the first damage in a late game, which will be a quite difficult task, they don't especially for Gong Zun Li to do. They don't it. depend that much on their supports, right? Mm -hmm. So it just allows the team just to have a different composition. They don't need to have like that, that defensive support. Yes. No, they can be a little bit more aggressive just based on the mechanics of one whole ADC. So a lot of heroes are being picked and locked in by both teams. You know, from the first three picks, a little glimpse here. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's like even trade here. Yeah. So we are seeing a lot of meta picks being taken in for both teams. For the side of Jin and RW Rogue Warrior, actually want to go for like very safety choices right here. Like two tanks standing in the front line, offering constant vision to the entire team. And there's a lot of options for marksmen that they could take, right? Of course, yeah. Okay. There's a lot. There's a lot of things that they could, that they could try to choose. Um, they, the marksman option is not a, it's not a rush for them. You know, in a B01 format, I think if you want to waste your band places, all trying to focus on limitation of the marksman, that's not a very wise yeah, choice. True. You'd better just choose to target in some specific strategies. Mm -hmm. For example, Da Chao, for example, Lu Ban, for example, yes. like Dong Huang Taiyi as the first band plays from Beijing Weibo. All right, let's wait and see. My Shirinui might be a ah. good option for Mage. I love mm -hmm. watching and seeing like, my Shadow game picked out because I love those kind of compositions where you really rely on the dive in time of your marksman and your assassins. Two assassins right here, Jin together with my Shadow The two assassin strategy already happened today in, yep. a, in a match. Mm -hmm. And we saw it that we saw my Shadow with Lam, right? And this uh -huh. is gonna be a my Shadow with Jin. And Having two assassins, just even though you don't have the wave, the, the wave priority, but it allows you just to control the rotation. The very first matchup for Beijing Weibo, the one that they have to be going against uh, Xian WE. Mm -hmm. So the mage right there, Hua Juan, actually just used my Xian Yui mm. and get one victory back to their base. So another thing may find out interesting, fun, I love this choice. 
because Fang can be also played quite like assassin. Yes. I love how aggressive like Song can be, and usually you don't need another support trying to protect Fang. Fang has a very long dash, mm -hmm. using the second ability, trying to avoid everything that he can possibly take. And I think Fang is a very good choice for R uh, RW to choose. It is nice to see Fang in there, right? Like a three assassins, three assassins composition on the side of Jinan RW. Mm -hmm. It's just like amazing to see because they're just gonna go for it. They know that Beijing Wei will come as the favorites in this in this match, but Jinan RW is just saying, you know what? Mm -hmm. We're gonna try our very best just to take this in the early game. You know, uh, we've been like watching in total this LAN together with Leoban duo mm -hmm. happening for a long time. So starting from the very like first like first period, like yeah. KPL region, the B07s, mm -hmm. we're seeing like XYG actually go for this kind of duel and performed perfectly during the team fights. So basically, we have to assume that this Liu Bang will constantly accompany Lam, trying to find a perfect angle, trying to make some team fights happening. And in the previous match that we had, Guangzhou TTG, yes, good one. Snow coming in and just showing us how that here is supposed to be played, right? Not only because the fact that Liu Pan can use the TP just to split, push, and do everything that we've been mentioning, but as an initiator as well, coming in, crowd control, four people at the same time, yes. allowing Lam just to come and take all the kills he wants. And you know, personally, I really like those teams who will like constantly looking for team fights. Mm -hmm. Team fights will be what matters, especially during this game, because so many assassins are right here. I can basically still see no like backliners who needs to be protected. Mm -hmm. So basically, mm -hmm. every single character are just going for and trying to get more kills to their teams. Ooh, aggressive. This is gonna be a nice tempo. It's gonna be such a high tempo, fast-paced game. Mm -hmm. Like, we're gonna come in, and then I can imagine we're just gonna be straight into it. But you know, if you just take a deeper look at the composition from the, both teams, I think initiative and the the ways that can try to force into the team fights, I see like more initiation coming from RW instead of Beijing yes. Weibo. So you really have to work closely with your teammates, especially for Weibo, trying to gain some advantages during the team fights. So here we go, dive into this match, the seventh match of today. Let's go with the seventh match. Is it gonna be RW? Is it gonna be Rogue Warriors that are gonna take the initiative and initiate fights, or is it gonna be Beijing Weibo that is gonna turn things around? I always love the idea that you use a very flexible way trying to decide who will be going forward to the first wave in the mid. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing like RW actually put Song, put Meng Tian in the mid, gaining the priority, while Mai Xianui caused some trouble to Nuanyang. It's trying to slow Nuan Yang down, right? Interference is what really matters. Interference, trying to slow him down, trying to do his very best. Uh huh. One of the things that Xiao Xi is going to have as an advantage against Fang is that Fang's first ability is just going to be an annulated. It's going to be it's going to be nullified by Gongsun Li's abilities as well, right? I think a lot of rotation might happen because RW still choose to let this Montian stay in the mid while Mai Xianui is using the flexibility going around. Oh, look at that. Puts is bringing down one more time. He's been taken to one fourth of his health bar. Montian coming in, but he still is not ready for a four. It's quite surprising to see Nuanyang get to level four in so like fast speed, mm -hmm. right? Almost, almost taking the nearly 90 seconds yeah. to develop himself to level four, gaining the with the ultimate. He's stepping on the gas. He knows that RW want to take control of this, and Nguyen Yan does not want to fall into this trap. It's almost two minutes time for both junglers to look forward to the dragon. Oh, Chen Fen in a very difficult position. Liu Pu with the Fallen God is going to come in. He hits against the wall. Not going to be enough. It's going to be first blood for Beijing Weibo. Look at the bottom. Even though Chelsea has been brought very low, but he managed to go back to the base. Nothing happened down there. So it will be a like very good beginning for Weibo, gaining mm -hmm. the very first blood. Gaining that first blood, right? Like my Shiranui, we know that the idea of having Mai is that you can rotate around. <laughs> but but they just saw it and then four mm -hmm. people surrounding her. Yes. 
You can do the rotation, but you cannot do it by yourself only. Sure. So you need your teammate to stay apart from you, maybe closely. While in your danger, you will be some, you know, assisted by your members. You need to be extra careful with that. Almost the three-minute mark. Not a big goal difference. Beijing Weibo just started really well. RW, the Rogue Warriors won it and had an idea of what they wanted to do. Chen Feng one more time is being pushed against the wall. Zimo does not, is not scared of that Mai Xiu at all. Mm -hmm. It's about the time where the top laners should switch into the mid, trying to gain the vision, mm -hmm. while letting the Nuan Yang, letting the jungler take in all the resources on the top, so that they can make sure that this Lom will have extra gold against the, the opponent. He's going to... Oh. Poor Putsi. <laughs> like today, Putsi has been just countered so much. In that previous match that he already had today, it was very difficult for him. It was like completely, completely nullified from the, com from the game. Another thing might happen down there. Oh, immediately using the flash to dash away. Quite a clear move, you know. You have to do it in a quick speed, or otherwise we, you will be stunned. Oh, he, he saw a four people rotation, right? Uh -huh. Like yeah, he saw a 4v2. Look at that, a monkey and does not Ooh. care about anything. Comes in, takes on Chelsea. That is going to fall from Liu Yuan Fan's ability. Now it's going to be Hua Jun trying to protect the turret. The turret is going to fall. Good trade for Rogue Warriors. Nice moves, gaining an extra kill and gaining the tier one turret in the bottom at the same time. I think that's a huge step for mm -hmm. RW trying to let set Hua Yun free. Mm -hmm. So right now will be the point where the marksman will be rotated to either mid or the top, gaining extra towers to their team. It's trying to rotate, like Hua Yun is free right now just mm -hmm. to move around. Yes. And we know that Liu Yuan Fan, because of its passive, like can just go around without having to fear for its life. And just see how deeply like, they invade into the jungle because they gain the tier 1 turret in the bottom. So that's a reason why Rogue Warrior can finally get some invasion down here. Look at that. Simo is going to jump in. The Fallen God is going to come in, but it's going to be Pucci that is going to block his ult as well. My Shidanu is going to fall wow, right now. We got Jin no taking a one more, but it's not going to be enough. And it's going to be seeing you that is going to protect his backliners. I think this game just gets started because Nuan Yang gaining extra kill to this jungler. This assassin will be extremely rich when it comes to personal gold. And you don't definitely want to give a, a lot of money to Nuan Yang because this player is so famous for snowballing yes, constantly exactly. all the time. And we can see some happening, what's happening down there. Very good ultimate by John Fei, trying, trying to have some crowd control ability onto the backline so that Chelsea have to go away. Did you see exactly what Xin Yu did? Uh -huh. What you just mentioned at the beginning of the game, that Liu Pang and that Liu Pang and Lam combo. In the moment that Lam comes in and he starts dealing damage, Liu Pang uses his battlefield command to come in, add on more damage and at the same time of add course. a shield. You have to make this chemistry really going on. The reason you choose this kind of duo is to try to perform this yes. kind of team fights. So like best is a very perfect demonstration of how these two heroes can collaborate together. Look at that, now they're on the hunt. Wow. One more time, Chen Feng goes in, tells the fan, but it's not gonna be enough. Oh, Pucci trying his very best, trying to get one more kill. Chelsea is going to fall. Now it's gonna be Chen Feng, the one that is gonna be killed by Lam. I think a lot of huge threats are being put onto Chelsea. Chelsea have been killed like two times mm -hmm. on the bottom. It's well, like a very dangerous place for this marksman to go. <laughs> Look at that. Nguyen Yang comes in, takes on one more kill. He keeps farming. People keep falling, but Nguyen Yang is always yeah. standing. Mm -hmm. So even though after the whole team fight just happened, like two to two trade, mm -hmm. I will say the number is quite fair, but as some consequent, like look at the results. The assassin Nuan Yang kept yes. stealing lives away, and that's one thing that Rogue Warrior should be really pay attention for. You don't want to start up the team fights where you cannot find uh, anything in return. Look at that, dive into yes. backline, finish my Shenui, get a kill in three to a Nuan Yang, and then diving back looking for more. Tries to look for more and he comes in and takes two kills. Mm -hmm. Like literally, that just allows Nguyen Yan to be farming so, so fast. Definitely. That right now, look, he has full control of all reds and blues around. 
Uh, seeing you taking extremely low, he's going to fall. It's going to be Chelsea that is going to fall him as well. Now, Nguyen Yang comes in and takes one more kill. Ocean's trying to run away for his life, but Nguyen Yang is a man on a mission. The mirror is going to be propped. Another kill might happen since Mai Shen Yi get the kill to her side by killing Lu Bu. Zi Mo slice will be pinned down here. Nuan Yang standing solo against you, enemy. I think it will be a wiser decision yeah. trying to escape away. Just to run away. He came in and he did exactly what he needed to do. Mm -hmm. He comes, takes the kill and song, and then it's just come back and keep farming. So a lot of things have happened, but you pay attention and look deeper closer to the dashboard 501 KDA to Nuan Yang. That's something huge. But another kill in spree happened when Hua Yun gaining back a kill to RW. Xing Yu is just overstepping a yes. little bit too much, right? Like he thinks that he's tankier than what he actually is. Yes. He's taking too much damage. He needs to be a little bit more careful with his positioning. So you have to know where your teammates are before you have you want to, you know, gain some vision for your yeah. team. Get prepared. Get prepared it is. 8 minutes and 45 seconds. Wow, the gold difference. The gap is quite huge, right? Almost 8,000 gold to Nuan Yang. <laughs> exactly. It's almost a 2,000 gold lead only for the jungler, right? But on the other hand, you can see the marksman. The gap is quite huge as well. Ooh, look at that. It's going to take it on a solo. But then after that, Singy just comes in just to finish sealing the deal. Take a kill one more time. And in the mid lane, as Zhang Fei had used the ultimate, it will be the turn for Wei Wu. <laughs> I love that. Look at Nguyen Yuan. He is a man that has a target on Zimo. No, it's going to be on Song, and Song is going to fall. I love the idea that Weibo is trying to help the marksman, trying to give Chelsea a life, trying to gain yes. some kills over to the marksman, trying to build up the gold and trying to chase up to their opponent. While on the other hand, we can see like three versus four actually want to fight for, in favor of Weibo. Oh, come on, like the RWCR, like their composition is made out for fighting. Yes. Like they just need to wait for the right moment to jump in. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that I haven't been able to do. I feel like they're just jumping in face first instead of just waiting for an ambush. Goes here, but I think Rogue Warrior really should be retrieving back because there's no ultimate for jumping. Look at that, Lam and Nguyen Yang are coming from behind. Chen Feng is taking extremely low, he's going to disappear. Now Lam has completely an open space just to keep making some more kills. Take one more on Chen Feng. You know, from that angle, Nuan Yang is basically doing about one versus five. Yep. With the assistant using the ultimate from the Obao, managing to take and do a lot of damage to the back lines. And he's mobile enough just to come in, take the kills and run away. So cool. In a 1v5, you normally, you know, like, okay, I might just jump <laughs> in and die. <laughs> but no, he comes in, takes the kills, and says, well, I'm yeah. going to go back and keep farming. And another thing helping Nguyen Yang doing this is using off this pure sky. Yes. Enabling him to endure a lot of more pressure, even with the towers, and that, that's okay. Because using Qing Yu's ultimate together with assistant support while constantly getting Nguyen Yang so many choices, shoot yes. whatever he want to dive in. So cool. The fact that the mod jumps in and then Nguyen Yang knows that Everyone's gonna run away from that Lupus ultimate. I think that allows him just to come in and take the kills. Easy. Like the whole teams are showing their understanding of the compositions. Mm -hmm. No, they know like individually what should they do and what should they uh, not do during the team fights. True. Ones. I think for RW they really change it a lot because you compare it with the summer season the performances. Yeah. I think RW are definitely getting some improvements, but some like job need to be done like more clearly because they have to choose whenever to start a team fight. They have to get prepared before they're trying to dive in and initiate into the team fights. They're trying to go like too straight. Like yes. you know like you have three assassins. Mm -hmm. Just wait. Wait for the right moment. I know you want to fight. Yeah. But not just like head first, right? They're just going head first into all the fights. I think they're just heading towards any time that randomly choose to initiate in trying to get some kills and don't rush too much for that. Mm -hmm. You have to wait for the right moment and look, pay extra more attention on the mini map. See where your teammates are before you act. And now that you just mentioned the minimap, you can see how in the minimap everything yeah. is just turning blue. Beijing Weibo has full control. Look at that Chenfeng with the Ooh. flash coming in, taking Gunsu Li out of the map. Now it's going to be Zumo, the one that is going to follow him. It's going to have to run away. 
微博 can safely retreat, but but what a nice move by Chen Feng. My Xianyue use the flicker and just vanished. <laughs> Chao Xi just got vanished instantly. Completely, it was just full burst damage, right? Uh -huh. Chen Feng just with the with the fan and then immediately with the flash right after. Nothing that Xiao Xi could have done to run away. I think Chen Feng has been waiting for this moment to happen for a very long time. Mm. So this player have kept this kind of gaming style constantly all the time, nearly like 13 minutes. He had been waiting for this moment to come and finally he gets it. Siege and it's good that it comes at 13 minutes, right? Yes. Because that's the moment where you still have a chance to try to level things down a little bit because it's going almost for a 4,000 goal lead for Beijing Weibo. You know, this solo kill is extremely important and favored hard and significant towards the side of our Rogue Warrior because this will be the time where Weibo will start trying to do the slip push using mm -hmm. the vanguards. So losing the marksman will cost Weibo a lot of time trying to reform and trying to find a new way to turn this, uh, to start to, you know, give pressure to a high ground tower. Oh, look at that. Huajin taking extremely low right now. It's going to be Bootsy, the one that is trying to go and follow, but it's not going to be enough. Jin that is going to proc her all. Now everyone is being extremely low. Nguyen Yang is trying to come from behind, but it's not going to be enough. He tries to take on Bootsy, brings him back, and it's going to be a kill. Can he get to the second one? He can, because the man cares about no one right now. This nice combo showing up in the team fight just happened and now Weibo may be trying to look for more <sighs> because for everything. on the bottom lane, Rogue Warrior trying to clean the wave and they did it. Using the diving by Ao Shenzhen, finally clean the wave and trying to make sure that they will buy themselves extra time for Hua Yun to revive from the base. It's gonna be five Bootsy seconds for Hua Yun to come so in. They will be able to protect the crystal but both turrets for bottom and mid lane are going to disappear. Well, that's a close one, you mm. know, for WB. So let's see, let's see the team fight. Basically, a Rogue Warrior have some advantages before yes. everything happened. They successfully bring Quadrant really, really low, making this mage disappear from all the time. But it will be the exact moment where Chao Xi, together with Xing Yu, True. using the ultimate dive in and get a kill. Every single assassin are played so well during this match and today's, you know, particular match right now. Rogue Warriors used all their abilities trying to get rid of Chelsea. <laughs> yeah. They were successful, but at the end, they forgot that Nguyen Yang was nowhere to be seen. <laughs> it means that he was on his yeah, way to come in to take some kills. <laughs> You know, Chao Xi, uh, I couldn't remember the last time I, I, I saw this marksman with this kind of low KDA. Yeah. So, he had been like killed for over like four times or nearly five. Exactly. Look at that. We're getting back. No action on top lane. It's Legendary. going to be Lam taking on Mai Shirenui. Mai Shirenui is going to disappear. Now it's going to be Chao Xi taking away the jungler. It's going to be two people away. As we can see, the super minions already coming to the crystal. And Hua Yuan still managed to keep himself alive. A flicker is not enough, not enough to keep him alive anymore. So it will be an ace in favor to Beijing Weibo. They're just waiting for the wave to dive in and rush the base and get this victory back. What That's a play. going to what be very well played. Gigantic Beijing Weibo takes one more victory. That's going to make them three points already. I think Beijing Weibo is kind of expected to play in this way yep. since they are the teams who went through a whole B07 in the very first round in the KPL region qualifiers. So they are expected to be the top ones, the top two mm -hmm. within the 10, uh, 10 games. So yesterday we have the watching them going through a lot quite you know trying to adapt to the new b01 format yes but after watching today's match i think they are fully prepared and they're not planning on letting any kind of scores out they struggled end. a little bit yesterday of right? course, yeah like not only the fact that they lost their b07 they come in with low morale come into the first games a little bit hesitant but the same as Guangzhou TTG, they came in today with a completely different attitude. You're just witnessing like together how quickly these two teams 
like manage to change their mentality mm -hmm. within one single night. So Guangzhou TTG, on the other hand, they change their startup list. But you, we can see a lot of a lot of chemistry happen down there. So their change in their startup list is actually working. But for Beijing Weibo, I think they stayed in this fixed formation for a long time. And today, uh, a lot of things are happening. We're seeing how perfect the combo chains are stick together and how like closely and how deeply their yes. communication is so that they can form in such perfect combo and team fights. And as their opponents for Rogue Warriors, I think they're spending a lot of time trying to do a little changes in their gaming style. They really tried. They really struggled a lot. Oh, Rogue Warriors played really well. Yes. I do feel like Rogue Warriors came in not only from the BP, right? Mm -hmm. Like from the beginning of the game, they really had an idea they wanted to do things, they wanted to make something happen. Yep. It was just not the right decisions, not the right moments. But you know, um, I always like seeing those teams where you can see the spirit. You yeah. can see mm -hmm. directly through their movements that they want to make something happen. And this kind of bravery, this is kind of encouraged from They're going to fall, view, yes. they're gonna fall fighting. Of course, right? yeah. They're not just going to go quietly into the night. Like they really want to try their best. I mean, their team name is Rogue Warrior. You uh -huh. should really be like one, right? You, you, should, you, you always, you know, coming for battles and you don't fear about losing. Do you remember the first final that we, that we casted? Rogue Warriors was there. And Rogue Warriors is just one of those teams that they've been with us for such a long time. Yep. The culture is there, the culture of never giving up. I just hope that they're going to be able to get back, go back to the board and get better ideas. Of course. Best wishes for them. And MVP goes to the jungler in the side of Beijing Weibo, Nuan Yang. 10.05 oh, KDA. 10.05 KDA, there's nothing else that you can do. The man <laughs> is not starting the fights. He just coming in at the end. When everyone's just running away, he just coming in and just being an assassin, doing exactly what he needs to do. You know, I have this kind of sight after mm -hmm. Nuanyang started getting the three kills in the very beginning of the game. So that's the reason why I kept mentioning the idea that Nuan Yang is getting the kills in yes. return after each team fight happened. So you have to pay attention to this jungler. You don't want to lack this kind of player earning a lot of kills or otherwise you will be facing a lot of problems like what Rogue Warrior just did. Poor Chiao Xi was the price that they had <laughs> to pay for Nuan Yang to be able to farm to the size that he got at yep. the end, right? Yep. Like Chiao Xi was just kind of like surviving on his own. But then look at Nuan Yang just coming all the way from top lane in there. I think Chelsea acts like a bait, you yes. know, in the strategy mm -hmm. where we, we we would like to, you know, put our marksman in front of you and trying to attract your attention while our assassin going towards your back directly and kill everything. Wow. Cool. Amazing performance. I hope that everyone at home is just taking notes on how Nuan Yang is playing because he's considered one of the top junglers in the KPL region. Yes. To see how well he farmed up, 15,000 gold right here. <laughs> 15,000 gold, and we didn't make it that far into the game, right? Yep. Like, it was not actually a very long game, just making 15,000 gold. How much gold are you making per minute? Almost a thousand, probably? A little bit more? <laughs> yep, maybe. Closely one. Wow. And see the team data, so the damage dealt is pretty much the uh, like average one. So we can see like even Zimo have contributed a lot of damage during the team fights. Everyone in Beijing Weibo just playing really well. All of them all together coming in to take that victory. Mm -hmm. And that is going to put Beijing Weibo right now in second place. Good ones. But I, we can see like the teams are chasing after one another really yes. closely. So even you can pay attention to the gap between the very like number one and number four, even like one point yeah, and, standing behind. And it's gonna be like that during today, all the way until we finish our game 12 and the whole day tomorrow. Tomorrow is gonna be the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be just them just trying, you take one point, I'll take one from you, I'll give you one, you'll give it back to me. Of course, yeah. So our whole qualifier, the second round, will be lasting for two, uh, four days. So yes. it's only the beginning of our qualifiers. So we are pretty much ready for our interview and let's see who will be doing the interview with us. Hello, Hua Juan, give us a call. Hello, 大家好，我是北京微博花卷。
，这一局比赛看到使用了特别特别多的呃刺客，然后团战爆发的特别特别多，打完整体这局感觉怎么样？整体的话就是暖阳太 C 了。All right, so we have seen a lot of team fight taking place in the fight just now happened. I was wondering what Hua Jun might be feeling right now. Mm -hmm. So after doing the matchup constantly to the, like this one, the only thing and the feeling Hua Jun is feeling right now is, wow, what a jungler we have. Yeah. So powerful. Uh, 听得到你非常非常这个看好啊，以及就是给暖阳的这个表现有很高的一个评价。花卷之后的赛程里有没有特别想和谁交手啊？和谁交手嘛，就剩下没打都打一遍嘛，因为我都挺期待每个中单的那个特点啊，或者擅长的东西。Okay, I was wondering which team, specific team, like Hua Jun want to have battle with. So basically, Hua Jun is looking forward to every single left and ones. So uh, he want, he was kind of wondering what kind of strategies the other mid, uh, mid laner will be applying and pull off during the fights. Uh, Hua Jun, do you think this time's version, ah, that is, the mid laner, for you, is it good or bad? Do you have any choices you really like? Do you have any choices you really like? 选择的话，就是这个版本那个中路的兵线还没有增强嘛，就是那个物抗没增强，然后可能会有守约啊、元歌这种登场的机会吧。Okay, so um, there's a lot of meta changes in the current meta we're yeah. playing right now. So um, what Hua Jun think of the current meta is that because the waves is not increased, the wave is not tank enough, so that we will be expecting the appearance maybe in Yuan Ge or the mm -hmm. other uh, assassin, right? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Or Shou Yue. Nice. 很期待你的守约啊！谢谢花卷接受我们的采访，谢谢，继续加油。And it, it, it actually happened using Yuan Ge or Shou Yue to go to the mid. Yeah, of course. Like Yuan, Yuan Ge is not, not only... Um, it, Yuan Ge is so versatile that it could be played anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Like it could be played in mid, it could be played on top, it could be played even as a jungler sometimes, depending yes. on the patch. Um, Yuan Ge would be a really nice hero for us to see. I love the way that he mentioned that when you ask him, like, who are you looking forward to meet uh -huh. in mid lane? He said, everyone. Every single one. Every single one. I can keep this learning from every single person. You can always learn from your opponents. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, the highlight clips are ready, and let's see what kind of beautiful movements are happening just now. I always enjoy the time where we are watching the highlights together. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that. Lovely. Just the way that, just the way how everyone just deals all the abilities to try to take on the tank and that allows just the junglers to come in and just take the kills. Wow, this kills worth trying for, Chen Feng. The flash. Yeah, the flash. Just keeping your flash, holding to it for the right moment. That is just, that just changes the game completely. But you know, a lot of things are missing from Rogue Warriors um, team fights. Mm -hmm. You can see that they start up the team fight because they have some targets, clear yes. targets. For example, the, the team fight just now happened, like Hua Yun got Hua Jun really low, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, their jungler is not right there. The jungler just came back from the base. There's no lethal damage. Yeah, the like follow-up you, damage is not That like You can enough. really just get them down, you can get them low, but you cannot get them killed. Yeah. Uh, the game is done, and right now we're going to have a short break, and then we're going to be back with our next match.
All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Very quick to be back again. So mm. TTG versus TES, top esports. Top esports right now. It's going to be their third game wow. of the competition. Two defeats in yesterday's matches. Let's see if they can just turn things around, right? I think top esports is facing quite a huge challenge right here because losing two battles, mm -hmm. and this will be the third one, you don't want to start your journey in a BO1 format after the very first day. You're facing like two defeats. That's something you have to conquer with. But just like how excited that Kier is. You know, I know Kier so much. So basically, if you see this kind of smile on his face, <laughs> they are feeling excited. They're feeling extremely confident. No, come on. Like you gotta <laughs> you gotta give them you gotta give them some credit, right? Like, of course. Everyone was just so so critical on yeah. on them yesterday, mm. right? Like they did not perform really well. They came in today, Kier just thought about like how to solve that. He just changes the jungler, change, changes the support. They come up and they have a completely different attitude. Yeah, I actually read through all the comments yesterday. Oof. Some of the comments are quite harsh. A I lot of say. fire yesterday mm -hmm. on the web. So basically, they, they have been experiencing a lot of stress after losing mm -hmm. losing the battles yesterday. But um, you know, it takes courage to trying to make a sudden decision on your star battle list because these five players have been sticking together for a very, yes. very long time for Guangzhou TTG. So making this kind of changes happening must take a lot of decisions, a lot of determination to do this. At the same time, I don't think that it was a poor and impingent mistake yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. I cannot just come and say, like, okay, yeah, we got a finger, po you got to point our fingers to someone. It was poor and so it was Pinchon's yeah. mistake. Yeah. Now, it was yeah. a whole team mistake. Yeah. The only, the, the only difference that I can see between their performance yesterday and right now is the morale. Mm -hmm. The morale right now is at its top. So can Guantro TTG keep that good feeling? and make it a two wins, two loss draw? Or is it gonna be Changsha TES that are gonna take their first victory of the tournament? Very interesting ban pick right now happening. First ban place goes to directly to Fuzi, trying to put aside this Fuzi Da Chao, holding out. Oh. Uh-huh. Interesting because normally if you just put Fuzi out, do you still need to ban the Da Chao on the other side? Because they're on like, you know, the blue side. Yeah. So if they ban away this food, they're kind of forcing TTG to lock on this decision on banning Da Chao away. True. So True. Mai Shinanui will be the choice from Changsha Top Esports. So um, after yesterday's matches, this hero actually won a very low winning rate mm. after all the matches. But starting from now on, I think Mai Shinanui is quite good because Hua Jun uses th this character and came for the uh, victory. I feel like everyone is just like watching the other teams play, right? <laughs> like everyone's taking notes and whenever that you see someone uh -huh. just coming up and just being so superior, as an athlete, you'd really want to be better. Course, you want yeah. to be stronger, you want to be faster. So you need to go and try to beat them. And on the other side, let's see, from the red side, Guangzhou TTG taking Gong Sun Li together with mm. Jonathan, a very common choice, I could say, very popular meta heroes being choosed down in the bottom lane. Chan Fei yesterday being the second most picked hero, the same as Gong Sun Li, both of them came up in eight or nine out of our 11 games yesterday. Yeah, very popular picks right there. And from Changsha TES, like the duel, happening again with Kai Ooh. and Guan Yu together, locked in. Yeah, why, do, why does Kai and Guan Yu work so well as a mm. composition? Mm. Why, do, why, do they, why do they pick both of them at the same time normally? You know, in this current meta, usually we're expected to see a very core jungler like Assassin yeah. Jing, for example, Jing or Lam, pair them up with a tank mm -hmm. who can sacrifice all the waves and all the resources towards the jungler, for yeah. example, like Sha Houdun or Ata. So this duel is completely the opposite. You choose to lean your resources onto the warrior while the sky can be a tank as a frontliner. Yes, exactly. So you just switch into different modes, but the mechanics stay, stay the same. So it means that Kai is not going to be that resource dependent, yep. right? Like yeah. he's going to be sharing a little bit of that gold and then that's going to make everyone on Changsha TES just to have a little bit more resources, trying to build a little bit more items. I think talked with like Jayco yesterday a lot, mm -hmm. discussing about Sumo. So if you see this kind of ID, Sumo, this player, 
so good at playing this kind of soldiers. Mm -hmm. And that must be the reason why I like Chang Sha Ti is choose this Guan Yu, go into Sumo and trying to trust this player's like confident choice. Well, let's wait and see what Sumo is going to be able to do. On the other side, you have Trao Jun, mm -hmm. which can slow down that Guan Yu. And then we've been mentioning how Guan Yu needs to be able to get energy to be able to deal more damage and to deal his abilities. Uh, if Trao, is Trao Jun on the late game, on the big fights, might be a problem for that Guan Yu. I think Zhao Jun's ultimate might also cause some trouble and cause some problem towards Di Renjie. Yeah. So Di Renjie, only with a flash, will enable him to have a dash. So without the flash, he will be completely out of dash. So that's the reason why Di Renjie might become secondary comparing with the popularity against like Marco Polo or yes. Gong Sun Li. But Di Renjie at the same time, the reason they choose this kind of hero is because they have to make sure that somebody will be taken care of the Zhang Fei and the Lian put together. So with the ultimate, Di Renjie will have 50% extra penetration and that will be extremely fatal towards those frontliners, from, uh, very tanky characters at the, the same time. Imperial Order is going yes. to be a critical ability for that Di Renjie. Yep. That is going to have a mozi. Mozi is being such a popular pick today. I love this Showing hero. up a lot. Mm, I love this hero. This hero used to go to the mid, mm -hmm. but as the meta have changed a lot, so yeah. no need to discuss a lot of, uh, a lot of time. But Mozi, <laughs> after the meta changes, changed into a new version, comes into the support scene, and, and I think as a support, Mozi is quite good. When you're doing like the two versus two bo matchup down to the bottom lane, yeah. it's extremely powerful. It is extremely powerful. We're gonna see how good he can be against Gun Sun Lee. Yeah. Because we know that Gun Sun Lee's abilities allow her just to nullify all the flying objects coming towards her. Yep, yeah, you know, um, if I were Tian Chen playing this Gong Sun Lee, I will definitely go for the boost of resistance. Mm. So a lot of crowd control ability, a lot of CC chains will be happening during the team fights, especially if you a deeper look. Guan Yu Kai, Mai Shila Nui, and Mo Zi goes into the support while constantly giving Qian Chen a lot of pressure. They know that Qian so Chen is a force to be reckoned. Yeah, it's so, so hard to play. They're gonna try to target a little bit Qian Chen in there. In the first stages, we're gonna have Xiao Peng and Xiao Dun playing a 2v2 against Snow and Qian Chen. Snow being very good at su uh, support in a more defensive way. Mm -hmm. So he will be able to try to spot where Xiao Dun is and be receiving more of most of the damage hopefully you know snow is one of the player i could possibly like think of who have so much energy he yeah. has so much to offer to the entire team we actually have some opportunity in the chinese uh, casting stream mm -hmm. where we can listen to how um passionate they're trying to communicate a whole strategy going on and snow is the one member making that happen so i really admire this kind of movement you really have to bring some vibe here into your teams let's see is the heart of the team Snow gonna be able to motivate TTG to take their second victory of the day in a row? Let's wait and see. Another thing is, if you want to make sure that Qian Chen and Gong Sun Li stay alive during the team fights, yep. the performance from Snow and Qing Qing in together will be extremely important. The two tanks are responsible to keep this marksman alive. Oh, let's wait and see what's gonna happen in there. Tintin Tin is going to have a very tough day against Sumo. Wow. Bottom lane, one versus one. Tian Chen managed to use abilities, bringing Xiao Peng quite low in the HP. Xiao Peng already cleaned the wave, and right now he's going to try to go for the River Sprite. And, he and did he's it. successfully taking it with, for himself. No, got like half HP being stealing away from Xiao Peng. You know, Xiao Peng is one of the marksmen, like, very aggressive yep. during the matchups. Especially for top esports, very talented player. Oh, come on, like you need to be very aggressive. Oh, look at that. Chen wow. being taken extremely low, knocked back. They're gonna have to push back right now. Mm -hmm. you know, it's looking, not looking really good for them. DNJ is also a counter pick towards and against Tian Chen Gong Sun Li because mm -hmm. using the second ability not only offer a purify effect to this hero, and also you can just eliminate all the effect, the passive that Gong Sun Li give you. So we all know that with the fourth auto attack, Gong yep. Sun Li will be gaining extra damage mm. when the passive is being triggered. But one nice move using the second ability of the will successfully get Xiao Peng out of the whole like 
uh, activating. That's the, the re that's the reason why most of Gunsun Lee's just take Frenzy as their summoner skill, right? Because after you have the passive plus the Frenzy, it, you're gonna have some insane attack. Like early burst damage. Early burst damage. 10x sure hit for Xiaotu and Amani is very accurate right now. I think for top esports, the two V2 on the bottom are winning right now. Wow. Are definitely winning. Definitely winning and let's see if they can try to use that to invade and con take control of this blue buff. Yeah, that's what they're doing right now. Look at that, Xiaotu is going to be frozen. Joe Wade's been taken very low. The Ooh. winter scare is coming. Kai is going to take on Gunsun Lee. Now Gu Xing is going to try to survive, but he's been taken down extremely low. It's going to be a 1-1 one -one trade. It's going to be the marksman and the jungler. I think it still benefits t top esports because you have gained back the blue, mm -hmm. successfully do your invasion, and again, your jungler, who will not be a core, especially for Kai, yes. but you get the kill against a marksman, who will be one oh. definite core in the side of TTG. That's true. That's true. I think that right now, Xiaotun's performance is just being critical for yeah. this, right? Mm -hmm. Like, on that mode of being extremely accurate, I have not seen the man miss in this last three minutes. Oh yeah, a critical hit. Uh -huh. Every single time. Every single time. Three minutes and 20 seconds. It's quite surprising, you know, to see like TES changed a lot comparing to yesterday's performances. Like they actually won no nothing, you know, after the two battles. And today, I think they're fully prepared. They're fully prepared. They do not have a gold advantage yet, but just the way that they're playing just shows you that they do not want just to come here and let it go. Yep. They're trying their very best to make something happen out there. And we are like seeing the solution to solve the like previous mm -hmm. problem is that TTG choose to let the marksman go into the mid instead of doing the constant yes. matchup on the bottom. That's one way to save the question. You know how safely like Joey mm -hmm. is cleaning the wave just by simple using the ultimate will do the same thing. They don't even have to engage. They uh -huh. just need to have Joey clean the wave and they just move back under the turret yeah, this to is back one to safety. Good strategy, you know, pulled out from TTG. Very quick response to tip top east with strategies. Let's wait and see. We know that the bottom turret is going to fall. Right now it's going to be the blue team that is going to liberate Dirindia first. Their marksman is going to be liberated before Gunsun Lee. And actually they managed to protect the second blue buff to their side as well. So top esports trying to continuously do the invasion, but with the change of lanes by TTG's members, they managed to take them aside. Look at that, Ming Yang is coming. He's got his eyes on the blue buff from top esports. They've got multiple smites. It's going to be for Ming Yang, and right now it's going to be Gu Xin not letting Xin Xin get out of here easily. Yep. So uh, by a simple exchanging length, TTG mm. managed to turn this a little bit scenario over right now. So instead of getting invaded, they actually made another invasion happen yes. on site. Good like one. sometimes so you don't need to fight those invasions. Yep. You just need to understand, okay, if, you, if they come for my blue buff, I'm just gonna go for theirs. Yes. Like you don't need to just fight for the sake of fighting. And you need to know why you're doing it. So every single endeavor of invasion will be a result of gaining the wave's priority. So whoever comes, whoever wins the wave priority in the mid will have some opportunity and initiative to invade into your enemies. And that's the main point, why these two teams are like basically sticking together in the mid, oh. trying to finish off the lane right there. That was very scary. I thought that Sumo <laughs> had an opportunity there, but yeah. Gushin does not think that his damage is enough to take <laughs> that lamb down easily. Top Esports looking forward to this blue buff again. Oh, look at that! The Wild Blood comes in. Guzin is taking extremely low, but right now it's going to be Minya trying to move around, trying to find a good position. He won't be able to jump in. So it's no force to use his, his Wild Blood. Mm -hmm. So using the ultimate from Zhongfei, managed to keep TTG safely. Again, protect their blue to their junglers. But nothing happened. No kills are happening. No kills are happening right now. But slowly, 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 slowly is TES, the one that is gaining more and more vision over the map. Mm -hmm. I think the next target with next huge 
incident in this match will still be a team fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whoever wants to initiate that one will be extremely important. And let's see the goal differences right here. Um, it's very common, you know, yeah, you see a lot exactly. of leading scenario happen when the junglers are Lan against Kai. So Kai definitely will like, have a lower gold earn against Lan. It's going to have a lower gold earn, not making him a big member of those fights, right? Uh, but at the same time, his job is going to be mostly just to take in damage. Mm -hmm. TTG getting the top one tower down in the top. I think TTG's cores are quite well farmed up right now. So um, Ming Yang is facing the fact that he is farming himself up towards 6,000 gold. And for Qian Chen, almost 5,000 gold it is. They, if they have the items right now, Qian Chen just buying the Shadow Ripper. Um, their damage is going to be online. Yeah, it's looking good to the side of TTG. Look at that Guxin one more time trying to take on that blue buff. Oh, Qian Chen. Sees that. opportunity. Bring Mai Shenui quite low. Wow, Guxin taking extremely low. He's not tanky enough. He won't be able to survive. He's going to fall. It's going to be Guxin and Qian Chen taking one more kill as we saw Qin Chen taking extremely low. Almost out of the map. You know, top esports are too stick with the plan of doing mm -hmm. the invasion. Yeah. Even though that Yu Chen, Mai Shinanui is brought very low, you, but because of Qian Chen's ability, they're mm -hmm. still trying to do the invasions, but it will not be succeeding because they lack of the mag uh, uh, mages damage. The Mai Shinanui is not ready for a battle, but they rest for the Chu to invade at the same time. That's not a very wise choice. They should have just changed their mind, right? Yep. Like if you go in and then just your my Shiranu is just half HP in this. Just push back. Like you okay, let's go back. Don't, let's don't invade this time. Let's mm -hmm. just wait for 90 seconds and just yep. come back again. Yep. You have to be like more flexible yeah. with you your cannot, strategies. You cannot just call fight for the sake of fighting. You cannot just go because that's what you guys agreed to. But on the other side, like TTG is playing this game quite well using the pro primal portal. And we're what we're using together, like Ming Yang transport him from the top to the bottom and gaining an extra wave to his side. Ming Yang is farming up so quickly, and I think Top Esports is not ready for the battle yet. Top Esports is not ready, and if Ming Yang decides just to come in around the back and try to find on the back laners, there's nothing that TES can do to fight that back. I think for TTG right now is like to make sure the two cores are farming up peacefully mm -hmm. and by the time uh, Ming Yang have the Siege Breaker and for Qian Chen maybe another one more item build up, they're ready for everything happening. They're ready for the battle. I like the way that TES right now mm -hmm. is just mirroring everything that TTG is trying to do. Yep. If they go to the bottom for the bottom turret, like I'm just going to go for the top turret. If you go for the Overlord, I'm going to go for the Tyrant. They're just very clearly, they're just mirroring all the movements from TTG. Yeah, you don't want to rush into anything. It's just, it's just exchanging the objective and that will be enough. Because the gold deficit is not a huge. I think everything might be happening from this point to the last minute. Wait and see. The Vanguard are spawned from top esports base. That will help them, you know, clean the wave in a more efficient way. It is going to help them, but just Guan Yu is not, Sumo on that Guan Yu is not being able to find a good position just to run in from the back to try to, to try to jump in. The bad news, like the Purify has been forced out from Xiaodun using mm. Joey's second, second ability. Joey managed to do this. The Purify will have like two mini cooldown yes. and that will be extremely long. Again, the same place, froze down back there, but the Purify has already been activated. Sheldon is going to have to proc his ult on this last chance, last opportunity to help his team. And he is successful at just making this a one-to-one -one trade. You know, the left and the right bush vision will be extremely important if TES choose to fight in the mid lane because Joey will be constantly hiding in the bush, finding mm -hmm. the opportunity that the Xiaodun, the moods, they have been froze down there twice within like two minutes. Without the Purify, yes. they should be extra careful with that. Without the Purify, the only thing he can do is just to wait in there just for his screen to go black. Yeah. <laughs> so opening up the vision in the river will be very important for TES if they want to continue gaining one and trying to initiate in the team fight. But TTG definitely, very obviously, are taking cold control of the river right now. Almost 12 minutes. 
very clear gold lead by Guan Yu. Mm. Sumo has a very clear gold lead in comparison to Qin Qi, right? Of course. It's just a matter of like who's going to be core in this combo. Oh, out of mid used by Zhou Wei, trying to chip away a little HP bar from Xiaopeng. But using the second ability actually enables the Yuan to move faster. Mm -hmm. Purified all the deceleration effect. Be careful, be careful. Look at that. They're trying to use this Tyrant to try to engage. Oh, oh my Shirano is going to be erased from the map very easily. She completely disappeared. Great kill for TTG. And Mian dive into blue, trying to steal this blue away using the smite, but the smite is not ready yet. And he managed to give Guxing away so that he can use the damage, use the ability to gain this blue. That wow. little mistake could just turn things around because that was the moment. That was what TTG needed to happen. They just used that tyrant just to lure TES, TES into a fight. And sadly for them, my Shiranui, their second assassin, completely disappeared. You know, very interesting things are happening right now because Xin Xiaopeng, the marksman, are doing a ra blood rage mm -hmm. as an item to help him stay alive and last very long during the team fights. This, but there will be a defensive item usually made by those tanks. Yes. For example, Qing Qing, the, the, the character Qing Qing is playing, like mm -hmm. the M4. It's not a very common thing to see like the marksman use this item, but I think it will be working. We we're expecting to see how this item will be helping Xiaopeng, trying to gain himself a lot of extra time to do the damage. Yeah, exactly. The we're, choice of the item, but it, it is a good choice. Uh -huh. It's gonna be it's gonna be necessary just in the moment that he's gonna be brought down to under his 30% of HP, right? Yeah. Like after that, he gets to have enough time to prog that, to really just go with the active ability, he might have a way to counter attack. Because for like TES, their damage is enough. They have a lot of cores responsible to do the damage. So you don't want to waste another mm -hmm. block trying to buy more items. That the damage is not enough. The time is what matters to TES. Whether they can safely protect the backliners enough so that they can earn themselves a lot of time to do the damage onto your enemies is what is so important towards the top esports. 4,000 gold lead, Sumo has been taken wow. very low, it's gonna be killing spree for Tian Chung. Look at that, they take the kill and they take the turret as well. Tian Chung is playing so aggressively, using the umbrella, trying to initiate the team and manage to do so. Now we said that at the beginning of the game, it was gonna depend on how Tian Chung was going to survive that laning phase against Xiao Feng and Xiao Tun. He was successful at that and moved around. And right now, his damage is something to be worried about. You know, after yesterday's matches, by watching the, today's two matches till mm -hmm. now, I think TTG is really, you know, getting better, better one matches after ones. Yeah. So we can see that how the confidence are being built up using the ultimate yes. shrine to stun the Guai right there and the following damage are so quick so that Sumo cannot be like rescued away by his teammates. Pushing him against the wall and yeah. then slowing him down. Yeah. In the moment that that Guan Yu has been slowed down, there's nothing that it can do to change things around. Mingya and Tian Cheng, the wow. two richest spirit people in the valley. Almost. Um, having over 11,000 gold, and that's enough for these two cores. Mm -hmm. They have been farming up gradually to the state, and TTG is playing peacefully and patient enough, waiting for this moment to happen. And right now, I think you're just prepared for everything. The vanguards put in the shadow vanguard in the mid, trying to gain more uh, towers down. I know, that, doing. I know that the strategy was to give some of the gold from Guxing to Sumo, right? Yep. But I just feel like Guxing right now is just so squeezy. Yes. It's very, very, very squeezy. I don't, I don't think that he can take any damage right now. You know, getting a multi-core composition usually means that your composition will be like in shortage of a tank. Yes. So without the tanks, you can pay a deeper look on the composition right now. Every single character is quite vulnerable. No one, nobody can stand out at this particular moment, shouldering all the damage from their enemies. Don't shoulder in the damage. The wild blood is going to come in. Look at that. Guan Yu is coming from wow. behind. He's just trying to split up. But it's going to be Minion, the one that is going to be taking the kills. Guzheng, Yuchen, and Xiao Feng are going to disappear. Only Sumo and Xiao Tun are trying to be the last hopes. 
Another out target by Red gaining the double kill to Qian Chen and the Vanguards all are all ready to finish this match even before the seventh minute kick in. TDG all together putting aside into the base and getting the victory again, the second point of today. Quantro TTG having a completely different performance from yesterday. Coming in, enjoying the game, and showing us how it's supposed to be done. You know, as a caster watching those teams evolving from one version to another, it's really like satisfying to see them mm -hmm. changed even within one single night. You can see the looks on the players all feeling very yes, excited exactly. after taking the victory because they have been going through a lot of threat. I know that. And um, TTG are facing like two very competitive enemies today. Xian as and the rest will be Nanjing Hero. So that together with this and together trying to expect more on this battle. It will be taking place in the very next one. The very uh, last one will be uh, 12 12th battle for today. Yeah, 12th the 12th battle for one. today is going to be Nanjing here against Guangzhou TTG. It's oh, going to be our 12th moment. game today. You know, what a moment. Oh, that's going to be amazing. Epic, epic picture when you're like seeing the backs standing in, in, in you know, under the stage. Yeah. The two players used to go for and going up on the stage. It really, you know, brings a lot of thought yeah, at this moment. Goosebumps, man. Mm -hmm. For real. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sadly for TES, that's going to be their third defeat in this yeah. tournament. They've played three games in total, and they're not being able just to solidify the good strategies that they're playing. Like, I like the way that they that they're trying to be aggressive, but they, they have something in common with Rogue Warriors. Um, they're aggressive, but they're not being able to. I think top esports is kind of losing the hopes from now on mm. because if you gain an 0 to 3 in the win lose chart yep. it will be extremely hard for them trying to make it up into top four because it's a four out of ten elimination mm -hmm. you have to win for more and if we take a look at the like first half of the scoreboard right now, AG, three points. Yes. Uh, a lot of two-point teams, KSG, mm. DYG, Hero, EDGM, three points. Weibo, two points. So many things to be chasing up with. Incredible right now how everything is just becoming so much more closer. Like, six points is going to be ma the magical number. Yep, yep. That's the, that's the magic number in here. You get to six, you're straight, straight in. You get to five, you're in a good position. You depend on other people. Four might not be enough. Yes, yeah, so uh, basically for top esports, I think they should go for, they have to win every single fight mm. in the future so that they will still have some change, ha have some chance to be alive, make it to the top four. They need to hold to that chance. Wow. And that chance was completely erased right now by Qin Qin taking the MVP from Guangzhou TTG. I really like Qin Qin because Qin Qin, this player, he can like switch in different modes when playing different kind of yeah. heroes. Mm -hmm. oh, I, yeah, I remember yesterday, <laughs> yesterday Nora was telling me so much about, about Guangzhou TTG's Qin Qin, right? Uh -huh. like, she was like, Qin Qin is so good at this and Qin Qin is so good at that. <laughs> and then I was just really looking forward for him to come in today and demonstrate and that's literally what he was doing, right? Of course. Qin Qin used to be the player from DYG, actually made a transfer to TTG, mm -hmm. and um, TTG. Wow. Look Three at people the, on Yeah, here. look at the, like, the team fight just now happened. The combo chains, the crowd controls are linking with one another so perfectly. And I think that that's a, cru a, a crucial word, linking. Mm -hmm. It is supposed to be a chain, right? It's yep. supposed to be one link right after the other in a complete good coordination. Unison, you need to be able to just hear it from one to two to three to four. Yep. Now, let's see. It's going to be Guangzhou TTG taking the victory. Look at whew, the gold from Lam one more time, right? 15,000. That's a little bit less than 1,000 per minute. It's about 950 gold per minute, which is actually a very nice rate to be farming out. The team fight rate, Sadly for Sumo, was not participating much. He wasn't, he, a lot of the gold was given to him. Just expecting and hoping that he was gonna be that 
miracle maker in the, in the late fights, but he was never able to just jump in into a good position. The defense from TTG was really better than mm -hmm. the offensive side. And after the single match, we can see TTG 2-2 two two, make it to the 6th, ranked in the 6th place. They still, to work, uh, they still need to work on a lot, mm -hmm. trying to chase back, because losing like 2 points is very important for them. Yesterday's matches really hurts. They, <laughs> they, lost, they lost against the, the teams that they're going to try to get that spot from them, right? Like, they're direct competitors. And our interviews are ready, and just link it to the front scene. Hello, 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 give us a hand. Hello, 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 hello. So it will be really stressful to go on to the startup list in today for today's mm -hmm. matches. So I was wondering what kind of mentally pr preparation that you made before every single fight starts. So actually today actually Okay, so I've been feeling quite stressful before I went up to the stage, but I think on stage in my performance, the stress will actually become my energy. And all of my teammates actually said the same thing to me, so I was very grateful for them to like trying to encourage me. Uh, 接下来的比赛其实还是很重要的, 因为现在是两分, 两胜两负嘛, 接下来的每一场比赛, 想要广州TTG哪一方面做好呢? 就保持今天比赛赢的那种感觉吧。Okay, so for the rest of the battles, what kind of things that's no wish for the entire TTG to make? And the answer will be like, we hope that we could try to maintain the atmosphere we have mm -hmm. right now and let the atmosphere affect all the following up matchups. The feeling, right? Mm -hmm. The atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It was completely different from yeah. yesterday to today. You saw a lot more, a lot more people like happier, trying to smile, trying to talk to each other. Uh -huh. Whenever that they get kills, just really celebrating those victories, and those things build up into great confidence that has Guangzhou TTG right now with two games and two wins. Of course, and let's see and watch a little bit more of the highlights clips that we have just seen. The matchups are extremely impressive. And let's see the collaboration of TTGs, how they manage to turn this tie around because they are facing like losing the very first blood over to enemies. Yes, exactly. This one from Tianchong, just amazing. The way that he uses his ultimate just to stun Guan Yu, just to push him against the wall, allowing them. And then Tianchong here, so many people on there, stunning four people, launching them. Yeah, Tianchen really performed really well in this match. I think you can see, even though like he's facing a lot of problems during the two versus two matchup during the very early game phase, mm -hmm. but he managed to turn this around yeah. by gaining enough gold and make sure that he will be heading against his opponent. And he managed to do this. A lot of items being developed and we can see the final hit onto that sumo is very important. Amazing performances. And I know that the next game is going to have a lot of more electrifying <laughs> moments as well. Let's have a little break and we'll be back in a minute.
All right, ladies and gentlemen from all over the world, welcome back. And this battle will be taking Oof. place between AG versus Hero. I love this kind of place. Chengdu AG against Nanjing Hero, that's going to be really nice. Like, let's just check on what has happened today for yep. those two teams, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Chengdu AG taking a victory against Shenzhen DYG. Then we have Nanjing Hero taking a victory against Sutro KSG. Both of them have been winning, but one of them is going to lose after this match. <laughs> oh, good. You know, good like perspective yeah. of watching this uh, this matchup. A drum is being brought from Nanjing to Shenzhen as well. This is one str strategy from Hero. They have to bring this drum everywhere. They have to matches on. And you know, I really like the idea that Hero are showing a lot of you know. Um, imaginations, you know, on the compositions. I love the idea that using Guan Yu goes into the mid and trying to leave out the choices of a very common one, typical one. You usually want to create more things, more surprises to your audience. Oh no, of course, like, as, as we mentioned before, right, like, just the fact that you're able just to come up with that on the spot, thinking, okay, this is what we're gonna do, following Jiu Zhe as such an amazing <laughs> and experienced coach. You know, Jojo, what Jojo really good at is that he, he had the potential to see directly through what will be the best option to mm -hmm. the players to choose and to become. Mm -hmm. So um, for those of you who are not so familiar with Hero, we would like to spend a lot of time trying to explain more why and why the reason they have like choose two soldiers in the one into one single composition. So um, basically the five starting up list, there's a lot of change for Hero. So you compare Ooh. with the version in the summer season, they actually have like two top laners inside this five member. So Dongfang yep. together with Xinhan, they used to play in the same positions. Mm -hmm. And to adapt newly in this current meta, they transfer Xinhan, the top laner, into the mid. And that's a reason why they have to go in through a lot of exercising time, because you need extra time to try to develop more skills into the mid laner. And that just says a lot about Xinhan, right? Uh -huh. Very like, talented oh, player. Come on. Like if you are already playing at the top level and you're playing in a specific position mm -hmm. and you can keep continue competing at the top level in a completely different position, oh, come on, that's because you are <laughs> top of the top. And, you know, the story is not ending right now. Mm. <laughs> and before Bell, Bell used to be a marksman. Yep. But the last time he went on stage will be taking place in the spring season. So nearly half a year has been passed away. Okay. And Zhou Ku, who will be playing in the support pillar in the roaming, used to be the bottom laner to Hero. So the marksman oh. goes to the support, a new marksman join in the group. That's what happens in Hero, and that's what chemistry is going on in this team. I just love the way that Jiu is just thinking about like how to fix all these different situations oh, very, very difficult with one. the people that he already has. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, like you would be able to see, like okay, if I need to find a better player, I would just like go and buy a new player. Yeah. I could just like completely go and get someone from a different team, but he just believes in what in, what, in the man that he already has. Instead of buying one, I will try to create a new one. True. That's the strategy. That's how it works for Nanjing Hero. Hero. And basically, they have been applying this kind of strategy mm -hmm. for a long time. And by using this kind of strategy, managed to take them like five champions till now. Gaining themselves five champions. You need to respect the fact that the man knows how to win championships. Oh, the man out. has been in so many different finals. Yes, and he's been successful at just like managing the players, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen Jotro just being such a good strategist at the same as I've he's been a very good manager. Of course. Like I've seen him just being very happy with the players. I've seen him being extremely mad at the players. You just get what you see, right? You played well, you get happy, Jotro. You played bad. <laughs> you get not happy to draw. You have to build a, a build up an image in front yes. of your team members. You, yes. you don't want to be too friendly, too close with them, or otherwise will have they will have losing their tensions. You know, starting to get more rest in time than sh <laughs> than the one they yeah, should yeah. have. <laughs> no, no, and and at the end of the day, you need to respect that because it does bring the results. Like he's been using that same strategy already for such a long time, mm -hmm. making it consistently for Nanji Hero to be always in the mix of those teams yeah. that you want to be careful about. A lot of respect 
is paid to Jiu Jitsu. So we all know all the K KPL like audience, all the mm -hmm. fans know that Jiu Jitsu is dealing a quite difficult task because there's no mid laner available for the team to choose, and that will be extremely hard when you're trying to find who will be the most potential one, who will who can go to into the mid, who can change in that that short of amount of time, and that's a reason they came up the. the with the like two soldier plan, I yeah. really love the idea that he is trying to enlarge the advantages from his team members instead of you know trying to force him into some fixed formation. Let's see how Xinhan is going to perform in this match where he's going to be facing face to face against Xiao Ying. Uh huh. You know another fact that mm -hmm. if you have this kind of composition pool stored in your bank, yep. your enemies and your teams who is fighting you should do a lot of extra homework. Yeah. They will be extra careful when it comes to on the BP stage, but trying you know to figure out what kind of formula, what kind of atmosphere mm -hmm. you are hiding in there. After what we've seen today from this last Nanjing Heroes fight, <laughs> everything like, could a happen. Lo a lot of the coaches are going to have to go back home and do extra homework. <laughs> oh God. Some overtime is going to have to be done tonight because <laughs> that was not part of what everyone prepared before. You know, if that's a thing for like BO1, imagine, just imagine if Nanjing Hero managed to take into the deeper level, like uh -huh. the next stage, group mm -hmm. stage, or otherwise the quarter quarterfinals, or, or anyway, if we are playing in a BO7, the extra a lot of homework should be done if you're encountering like Nanjing Hero. Let's wait and see. Let's see <laughs> if Xiao Shou has this option, has the solutions to what this Nanjing Hero problems are going to be. Xiao Shou used to be a player, a mm -hmm. professional player. I remember yeah, him. Yeah, he used to be a player uh, representing BA, Black Ananas, uh, but the club just changed into Chengdu AG instead. Mm -hmm. So basically like Xiao Shou has been developing or the different versions in, in like the club of AG. Like a home. He's a he's a man of the house, right? Yes. Like he, the house wants him. He's staying in there. I remember him from the times from before, and from Black Ananas. Mm -hmm. Inua was part of Black Ananas of as course, well, yeah. right? Yeah, they're former players and teammates, and right now they're coaches and teammates. You Change gotta love in, that. Change into identity. Okay. So the uh, the this particular match is just get started and on common choices in the ban places because they're putting Lady Sun on their very first round of the bands. Lady Sun and Marco Polo just I don't not, know not very common first ban. I could think of a lot of meta picks <laughs> right True. now. Gongsun Li being available, Lu Ban as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of things should be have even Meng Tian, you know, could be selected by AG. Yeah, Moncton would be a good option right over there. We know that Lamb is not going to be part of the mix. So options for jungler, if we want to just keep going as what the meta uh -huh. junglers are, Miyamoto Musashi, Jing is another option as well. But Meng Tian, this character really bring, like brought two victory to Dungeon Hero. Yeah. So Dong Fang have been play, uh, playing Meng Tian twice. Mm -hmm. And these two teams and these two games, they gained the victories. Oof. Okay, so stealing away this choice. Stealing away this choice. <laughs> I think that they were just paying attention to you, Tian. Well, thank you. That's uh, flattering, right? <laughs> they were just like, you know what? Let's just follow Tian Yun. <laughs> Tian Yun's always right. Main coach. <laughs> <laughs> Something together with Lu Bu. Okay, flexibility right mm, here. Sun Bin Lu Bu, very strong in the late game. But there's always comes with a but. Yeah. It's very difficult to try to initiate mm, in true. first hand. In first hand. So it's gonna depend a lot on what kind of an option mm -hmm. uh, for a jungler yeah. they're gonna go through with. Like they need to go, they need to go with a jungler that not only uh, can deal damage but that can ambush and deal burst damage as well. So the first three picks are finished. We're diving into the second round of the bands. Monkey, very well known against your uh, against your enemies because mm -hmm. no fear is really good at playing this character one of the one of his one of no fears most familiar most characteristics yeah. um, heroes like monkey monkey that, that hasn't been a, a very common and familiar pick in this last two days and the same as for the wild cards um, but a lot of respect towards new fear like taking it out of the mix mm -hmm. The monkey will be extremely fatal when it comes to the fact that when he have enough items, mm -hmm. he just flat in, in front of you and doing a lot of auto mm -hmm. attacks to your back learners and there's no way out. 
quite a troublesome. So it can just go around Mong Tian, right? Yep. Which has been like the biggest problem that we've been facing today. I mean, the moment that Mong Tian is just in the front, mm -hmm. there's no way that you can get a good option just to go into the backliners. So Mong Tian and Tran Fei are gonna allow whoever that is gonna be the, mar the marksman option to have not that much pressure. Yep, so they ban away and taken the Zhao Jing away from the available remaining hero pool is because they want to eliminate all the choices who will decelerate them from the rotations. So they're basically trying to do a lot of movement, a lot of rotations by the acceleration from mm -hmm. Sun Bing. So he ban away those marksmen who have a dash and ban away those mages who are yeah. able to offer a lot of crowd control. So going with Deer and Tia first, instead of just going for a, for a, for a mage mm. option, we know that mage is almost always the last the last hero to be picked yep. in the BP, right? Um, going for that Deer and Jeff, we already saw a very good, very good combos with Deer and Jeff facing Kung Sun Lee. So we we're expecting that Inuo is gonna try to imitate what other players have already yeah. shown mm -hmm. to us. But Shenmong Xi, very, very long range. Yeah, Shenmong Xi will definitely be a target band towards our target choice mm -hmm. towards Dianjie. But th with the choice of Dianjie together with Zhang Fei, yeah, we are expected to see more aggressive plays on the bottom lane. So Gong Sun Li will definitely be facing a lot of troubles during the two versus two matchups. But a lot of respect are paid from Hero because they, they choose to steal this Gong Sun Li. This choice is not available. And then they ban away Lady Sun together with Fan, leaving Eno with only one choice, which will be Dianjie. Oh my gosh, look at that. Man, <laughs> again. Hero's gonna go again with no mage. Again. It's straight up, like straight two warriors, no mage. I'm just gonna have one uh, Sun Bin allowing us to move around. The Flux Capacitor is going to be the critical ability to move around the valley without having one fixed mage in the middle. You know, even AG starting smiling after watching, you know, the choices <laughs> from their opponent hero. I think AG is prepared for this strategy to come along. Let's um, see. They, after watching the very first game, from yeah uh, from today hero the performances i think the, all the rest teams are fully prepared for this to happen because Xinhan are re is really good at playing this guan yu mm -hmm. so instead of choosing what kind of mages you you feel comfortable with you know you just said bro just go for the picks just, just go, go for, for the confident picks just go for whatever that the player is the most confident with yeah. right yeah. at the end of the day you could have strategies you could have coaches you could have clubs but at the end of the day, it's just the players, the ones that they have their phones, the ones that they have their mobiles in front of them, doing, making the decisions in split seconds. So if he's confident on that Guan Yu, it's better for him to be on that Guan Yu. Course, Move yeah. the whole strategy around. But, you know, obvious like disadvantages and uh, and the advantages are appearing at the same time. Mm -hmm. So if you stick to the original plan by choosing the pick of Shen Mengxi, I yep. think the late game or the all-time game damage will be ensured. Yes. As long as Shen Mengxi is alive, you can keep your damage going on constantly, offering a lot of poking damage to your enemies. But if you choose Guan Yu, it will be a burst damage to the backliners. If you find the great angle, I think they can possibly just finish off like the Eno by a yeah, single move. Of course. Solo kill, it is. So you know you have like different choices, different surroundings, and different results came in with different choices in the mid. But definitely, I think Hero is going for the com confident picks. Now, Jin Hero is going to depend a lot on Bell's performance, right? Because <laughs> he's going to be the main damage dealer in this whole composition. What he can do, the way that you kill Tachibanaka and try to find the spaces in the bush, try to ambush and then get down to get to the power play early in the fight. And kill Tachibana will be also one good choice for the side of hero because uh, no fear this is one of the no fear best moves mm -hmm. ukyo touch bana extremely extremely aggressive in the early game trying to gaining themselves a good, very good beginning so let us dive into this match let's dive into the match let's see it's gonna be nanjing hero against Chengdu ag wow the two marksmen going straight forward to the mid i love this kind of competition you make rotations you have unexpected matchups. Unexpected matchups, and look at that, Mai Shiranui against Guan Yu in bottom lane. We know that Mai Shiranui is fan 
if he can if she can land that fan on Guan Yu, yep. that is lethal for whatever that Xin Hong wants to do. Yeah, it will be constantly stopped because of dur during the accumulation stage, yep. when they're trying to earn, uh, earn themselves a lot of energy, trying to keep running, will be interrupted by Mai Shinaru's minor controls. Completely different, well, not different, um, but not very similar page of farming right now. Yep. Look at that, Musashi Miyamoto is gonna try to move all the way to the top lane as we have Yukio Tachibana coming to the bottom lane. Yep, and Sunbi managed to gain some vision here in the river so that Hero can make quick rotations if they want to do it. But another rotation is happening from the side of AG. Managed to take Maishinui again back to the mid while Dianjie will choose to go to the top. Oh, Dufang is still level 3. He's been gonna be marked over there with two people. Sinhon is gonna be a 2v1. Nothing he can do more than just looking at Inuo, taking his turret away. You know, the wave win in status ball would be extremely important for Inuo because AG really relies on Inuo's survival, mm -hmm. trying to endure a lot of uh, more damage to Hero. So Inuo will be one spirit to AG, a very important call and role in this team. Not only, not only for what he can do in terms of mechanics, right? But yep. In terms of morale, like in the moment that Inuo is just built into his berserker mode, yeah. like just being like that Inuo that we've been seeing for so many years, yep. like his teammates are going to feel like, yeah, we're unstoppable. Of course. Ian is going to proc his ult, he's going to get his generals in. Bell coming in and just taking Xiaoyun to half his HP. Well, Hero is making good use of Sunbi, you know, with the constant acceleration offered using the second ability, making Hero very flexible. You can try to reinforce any kind of lanes you want to choose. And right now, oh. Sunbi company constantly with no fear, trying to speed up the farming yeah. up. Trying no to fear. speed up the farming, right? Yep. Like, they need to have an advantage. They need to try to fight for that advantage because Ian and Wei Yang, that two combo in there, it's going to be a very difficult combo in the next three minutes. Wow, three versus two right here. Wei Yang clean taking very low. The time lapse is going to stop him from ambushing. And after doing the little skirmish happened in the mid, Hero managed to rotate up and gaining the first dragon to their side. Exchange. Anyway. It's going to be exchanged because it's going to be Chandu AG taking the Tyrant and then it's going to be Nanjing Hero who's going to take the Overlord. Because it's a quite a clear move. So basically Hero is moving in front of AG, letting yep. AG have the idea that, you, you know, we are going up to the mm -hmm, top and mm -hmm. trying to gain this dragon so that AG can have this knowledge acknowledged and go down and trying to exchange dragons. Exchange objectives. Trying to exchange Catapult. objectives. Spark Forge Dagger is going to be the first option for Enod, his first item. Wow, a flicker into the back lines. Yeah, I'm playing so aggressively, gaining the first blood to their side. It's gonna be Lupu that is gonna come in for a counter attack. Look at Xiaoyun trying to find a place. He's not being able to jump in. And Inwa does not even jump in the fight. He's just taking on the turret. And Eyes, with the use of the smite, successfully steal this blue away from No Fear. Mm. Good beginning. Sounds very good to the side of AG. Again, another invasion solely done by the marksman. In no, taking away all the resources right here. It's already a 1,000 gold difference. Look at that. The snowflake flash coming in. It's not going to be enough right now. Inuo already in level 7. Oh, good play. I think AG is really changing a lot, improved so quickly. Yeah. After watching the summer playoffs, I think they should, you know, spend a lot of more time figuring out what should be happening. But um, just within like one more month, I think it's enough for them. If they they're just professionals, right? Like they just went back and they were like, you know what? Like we need, we're, we're, we have this KSC coming. Yep. What are we gonna do for that? And yep. Completely coming in as a as a different team. A lot of hard work. Must Lots be of hard work. I've been going through by them. Eyes <laughs> being so squishy, like it doesn't even feel like this Trump can take a lot of damage. Like he was poked three times and <laughs> half his HP bar was gone. <laughs> 
I think right now AG is like controlling the whole river vision. Mm -hmm. But for Hero, I think they're waiting for the right moment to dive in because it's tower. seriously like it's not the peak in time of their composition. They're waiting for like the mid game yes. where they're start started looking for chances, trying to find some chance on the back line. Oh look at that. It's going oh. to be taking extremely low way and was taking so much turret damage. Yep. It was a 2v1, but then Wayan just taking the turret damage to almost zero. But you know, the whole purpose of doing the action doesn't happen. Yeah. It's not to kill No Fear, it's to, you know, shred down the HP by making sure that No Fear cannot be ready for the blue buff. Okay. And once again, AG stealing away the blue buff again, making the second invasion to the jungles clear move. No fear without that blue buff is going to just slow down so much. Of course, yeah. Like it's going to give the advantage for AG just to take more fights into this as we're moving early into the mid game. Okio Tachimana, even though this character has no mana lines, but it really relies on the cooldown of the yes. blue buff, trying to execute more ab ab abilities, trying to speed up. You know, a complete 1,000 gold advantage on top of Bell. The same as Xiaoyin has a 500 advantage on top of Xinhua. Mm. AG standing in the river. Xiaoyin getting the side of Dongfang managing... Wow! To the Imperial Very Order well. comes wow. in and it's going to be eliminated. Lupu was going to proc his all was not enough. It's going to be one more kill for AG. You know, that is not expected from, from Hero losing yes. the tank. Just in, with an instant because Huang is looking for the chances to dive in, standing very far away from the, his teammates right now, choosing whether he wants to dive in. Oh, look at that, the Razor in. Cavalry one more time, trying to come from behind. Now they are on the hunt. They do not want to let Sinkhun go, but he's just faster than the rest. He's gonna leave, but Wei Yang is going to take the turn. Wow, this go down of Lu Bu is way too unexpected to the side mm -hmm. of Hero. Because I think the other invasion, uh, Hero can see it through, but with the, this Lu Bu, the tank will be the tank of this composition going down so quickly. That's something huge. The damage is just impossible to handle right now. 3,000 gold difference already. Yep. Mm -hmm. It is already like snowballing into a clear gold advantage in most of the lanes. The only, I, I, it's a complete absolute advantage in every single lane for AG. AG is completely winning right now in this current moment that of the game. Xinhua oh, now wow. is gonna be Xiaoyan that is going to proc his flash, trying to put him down, but this gonna have to run. The turret is going to fall. Musashi Miyamoto waiting in the bush, right over there in mid lane. Look, he comes in, he's trying to take Tunfan really low. No fear, trying to defend from what AG is trying to do. They're just completely going around but the Hero blue team. Needs to go back because the waves are rushing in. They have to protect, protect their high ground tower. And the next one will be coming soon. That will be extremely hard for Hero trying to clean out the waves. The timing that AG has right now is just magnificent. Wow, approaching to the high ground tower before 10 minutes kick in. Ian is going to fall, Guan Yu is going to jump in, Zon is going to come in, Sinhan is going to deal some more damage. If they're going to lose one member, but they're going to take that top lane high ground turret. I mean, the, the rest of the game will be extremely hard for Hero to handle, yes. because definitely they'll be constantly facing the pressure on the top. Losing your high ground tower so soon in a game will result badly, badly in a single team fight. It is. It is just the way that AG was able to jump in. Look at that, Xiaoyin one more wow. time trying to jump in. He oversteps, it's a 2v1, they're going to take in. And then this mid lane turret does not seem able to stand for long. Very good move from Bell actually, yeah. finding a perfect time using the Frenzy together, dealing that burst damage onto Mai Shinanui. So Xiaoyin without the flash cannot find a way to escape. And Xiaoyin just tried to completely disappear, to, to kill No Fear immediately, yeah. right? It was, he was not even aiming for Bell, he was aiming for No Fear. But then Bell showed up and it was a 2v1. But this might be a chance for Hero. Mm -hmm. They're trying to buy themselves more time in order to stall this time into the late game because they're ch exchanging the Tyrant again using the smite of Yukio Tachibana will ensure that Hero gets the dragon. 
It's Look a at that. Lupu is going to have to proc his ult to run away, but Monkin's dealing so much damage. Oh. Him and his generals take soon being down. It's going to be a power play for 30 seconds for AG. I think a single exchange into the Overlords and the Tyrants is not enough for the Santa Hero trying to make a little bit turning over scenario happen down there. AG still offers a lot of opportunity, a lot of initiative when they have like two of the Vanguard standing in front of Hero. Taking down the high ground tower in the mid, looking for more Guan Yu. Stays in the bush, trying to find the perfect time, but Jiu Hu is not alive yet. It's not going to be enough. Look at that Guan Yu. Xinko wow. is trying to come in, but it's going to be Wei and it's going to stop him from coming. Dong Fang is going to be defeated. The dragon's coming in on mid They're and bottom lane. The, the crystal won't be able to take it. It's going to be one push, two pushes, three pushes, and it's going to be Chandu AG taking the victory. Another score. It will be the fourth one in favor of AG. Oof. So AG has been unstoppable, undefeated till the very second day of the KBL region qualifier second round. I think Hero definitely does not see this coming, but I think AG is so prepared for the strategy that might be coming up with their enemies fully prepared. Very nicely, very nice job done by AG. They, they must be went through a lot during those months that we haven't seen them <laughs> I, let me tell, let me tell word, you something word, yeah. after all the research done that we were just preparing for these stages i did not imagine that ag could be so superior to surprising, every single, surprising, single surprising. other team the rhythm the pace how they just knew how to punch in the right moment and early in the game just early coming in boom one after the other one after the other like, I believe that Xiao Shou has been doing an amazing job with the boys. Yeah. If we have a little a chance, we're going to do it in the interview. I will definitely be asking on whether they are prepared for this Guan Yu, you know, to come mm -hmm. in the strategy. Uh, but I think for Hero, they have to make sure that they can perform better in the following up matchups because losing the game so quickly before it re even reached into the mid might result in quite a low mentality. I think they can pretty much get it recovered because they still have a match going on against CTG. Wow, they have a huge pressure. They have like the rest of the last three matches that we're going to have, all of them are going to be crucial for those teams that they're going to take part in. We're going to have TES against Beijing Weibo, KSG against Chengdu AG, and we're going to finish with Nanjing Hero against Guangzhou TTG. Mm -hmm. The next three matches are going to take everything to the next level. Well, I kind of like and love enjoying this kind of atmosphere right now because the coach Jojo is just communicating with the team member, trying to figure things out, what happened, what kind of uh, different decisions you could have been done if you yeah. got another chance. And you are just, learning a lot of things during the match. I, I like that word. Yeah. It's just for learning, right? Like he doesn't seem to be very emotional about the fact that they were not able to take the victory. But he just seems to be like, okay, you know, God, you know what? Like, let's just talk a little bit about it. How you felt about it? Yeah. Tell me, tell me, give me your input. What are your ideas? He's gonna take everyone's input and then just go back and summarize it himself. You have to learn from your mistakes. True. You have to learn more from your failures. So what really matters is that you can take back the lose, you can take back the defeats, exchange it into some kind of experiences, and those experiences will be extremely precious to you. It is important, very, very, very important just to learn from that. We, there's, no, there's no mistake yeah. in today's composition. It's just the fact that AG was just on point. AG no. was so strong. AG's fight started at the exact moment where they have the kill over against Lu Bu. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With that single kill in their pocket, AG just starts snowballing. We can see from the dashboard right here, Eno, the MVP, what contributed nearly 40% of the total wow. damage for the team. That's one best move from the marksman. That's what you're <laughs> looking for, basically. You have to expect your marksman to do this kind of damage to the entire team all the time, even though he's taken up a year like 26 percent of the gold and that's a fair trade that is a completely fair trade if you tell me that you're gonna deal 40 percent of my, <laughs> my whole damage i am You'll willing to give you 100 percent of the gold <laughs> i want to take my clothes as well take them with if you want it's a good investment you know totally mm -hmm.
100% investment in just return rate. <laughs> Uh, you know, I it's think insane. Eno is really feeling themselves in KIC. I, I'm really happy for this player because Eno went through a lot. Yeah. Also, a lot of stress have been taken on on Eno, and it's really glad to see him finally, you know, finding a new version of himself, playing so aggressively, even though the two remaining marksmen are banned away from Jojo. But, you know, after all, we can use the RNG, we can try to buy we ourselves a best location for the RNG to try to deal almost 40% of the damage to the entire team. It's been a little while since we've seen Inua being so happy while playing, yeah, right? Yeah. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say it and put it out there. Like, there was a period of time where I was actually worried that we had seen already the best of Inua. Yeah. Like, I remember a couple years ago, he was very strong, one very, of the best talented. marksmen that we had in the whole league. Mm -hmm. Then he went into a little bit of a batch and seems like right now he's ready to bounce back. Yep, so, yeah, I have like the same thoughts yeah. like you. So I was thinking maybe we have been witnessing the peak time for Inua. Mm -hmm. I think might it might be the case where Inua has passed the peaking time mm -hmm. of his professional career, but after watching the whole matchups in these two days, I think this player will be ready to be back to the game. He's ready for every challenge. He's ready for it, and we can see ranked number one, top of the league. Wow. Goodness. Zero loss, four wins, Chengdu AG. I'm really, really happy to see AG evolving this quickly because they have to a lot of they have a lot of changes in their starting up as well in the summer season trying to form up the best solution and hopefully we are seeing the final answer from them. Let's hope and see what Chengdu AG is going to keep doing today. They have one more match and then let's see what they're going to do tomorrow. Yes, and that started our interview with one of the AG members and let's see who it will be. Hello Xiaoying, give us a call. Hello, 大家好，我是成都 AG 超威效应。So you have gained yourself four victories till now. So are you kind of anticipated the scenario to happen before the KIC? 呃，你们现在已经积了四分了。在这个比这个 KIC 开始之前呢，有没有想过可以打得这么顺，拿到这么多积分呢？呃，没有想过就是拿多少积分吧。主要是就是全力以赴吧，每一场比赛。嗯。It is also a surprise for us, you know, to having gained four points back, and we trying to perform the best version of us, and I really think they did it. Ah, 那其实，在休赛期啊 ，AG 是通过怎样的一个调整可以来到现在一个这么全面的一个形态呢？小影，跟我们分享一下你们训练的故事吧。嗯，就是通过训练赛，就是不断的调整，就是团队上的一些节奏吧，还有一些团队上的问题。有，比如说沟通吗，或者是一些细节，有没有多一些的信息可以给我们透露一下呢？呃，不方便透露。<laughs> okay. Um. So during the recess time, they have changed a lot of group rhythm and their problems. Uh, when it comes to communication,、mm. and more details should not be revealed because we have to pr protect oh, our secret. Okay. Can be secretive. Acceptable. 谢谢肖颖接受我们采访。希望未来的比赛越打越好哦。You know. We will be keeping this as a secret. Will be a constant motto for AG every single time. I did an interview with AG member. They answer me with this single sentence. 不方便透露 I love I love that. Like our job is just to come and ask the questions that everyone at home has, right? But then it's their right if they don't want to answer them because they need to be secret. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's go and have a little rest, and then we're gonna come back with the last three games of today.
All right, we are back. Diving into the game between Beijing Weibo versus Changsha Top Esports. Changsha TES. Changsha TES right now, three games, three losses. They need to take this win. I'm so sorry, like, they need to take this win. If they don't take this win, they're going to be forced to win every single game for day three and day four. And that seems like a very big ask. But um, the worst news, like the bad news for TES is that if you're going to pick up a so, a so important ma ma battle, yeah. it will be more hard and more difficult, especially when you're dealing with Beijing Weibo. <sighs> Like from all the opponents that you could have in such a critical <laughs> yeah. moment, right? It's like in the worst You're scenario, facing yourself facing Beijing Weibo, and then just gave you the worst pick, so like so the powerful. worst pick that you could have, Beijing Weibo. Right after the previous Nuan Yang's performance and how the boys from Beijing Weibo just completely controlled their previous match. Yep. It looks really bad for T for TS. But you know, there's a saying that if you're gonna be a comma champion, yep. you're gonna face any single enemy. True. After all, you're gonna be facing a lot of teams if you want to make it up to the group stage. So um, it's a very bad news for TES because in such a, such a important matchups, they're dealing with and going against Weibo. But um, I think it'll be happening eventually. If you have some differences against your enemy, and that's where you should be improving about so um, best wishes for TES trying to do their best best wishes to TES as they're trying to stay relevant in the mix right yep. Aging Weibo in case that they take that victory gonna put them tied at four points with Chengdu AG four points at the top of the rank after five games that's solid very 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 positive future ahead of them yep so we could still see some differences when you have the chance going to join the very first round of the KPL mm -hmm. qualifier. It really means that you will be better when compared with the rest teams. So that's the reason why Beijing Weibo and Guangzhou TTT together are showing a lot of threats against the other teams. Yes. Because they have like ranked ahead of the, uh, the other rest and uh, yeah, it's a, a very obvious like differences. When we put these teams together, let's just look at the scores they rank in. Three wins, one lose against zero wins and three lose. That's something you don't want to see. And they're going to be on the red side, so they won't even have the opportunity to have first pick. Yeah. But they're going to have to be reactive depending on whatever that Beijing Weibo decides to take. That shall take him out of the table. Yep. My Shiranui being taken out of the table. I love Hualo's BP strategies here. He pays a lot of respect to the confidence picks yeah. towards those players, Yu Chen and Sumo, and together. So that's the reason why they take this Mai Shitanui together at, with Guan Yu on the first, very first round of the band places mm. here. It's like completely just allowing them mm. um, to have a little bit more of the winning lane, right? Like they want to have a, a bit of an advantage in there. They're gonna lock on that Kung Sun Lin, giving Chao Xin. Um, the option to just keep showing oh. how how strong he is. Like Lan. Hualo has picked this Lan for Nuanyan again, using ah. the same strategy. They're sticking to the old plan, old school. So yeah, we performed quite well. You're using this kind of composition, gaining a point back. So we're doing it at the same time. Look how excited Nuanyan get. Again, cool. I love Lan. <laughs> if it is not broken, then doesn't need to be fixed. And <laughs> look at that. Chao Xi on Gong Sun Li and then again. Again on Lam. Chao Xi again. <laughs> and Xin Yu is going to take on that Liu Pan probably. So, woo, let's go. You know, hopefully Chao Xi can, you know, gain some kills on the bottom instead <laughs> of being a target constantly. Yes. All their enemies. The, the last game for Chao Xi, the experience not very satisfying. It was not satisfying <laughs> at all. Like, he was just being a bait. <laughs> yeah. And like, just, just, just drop Chao Xi over there and then <laughs> have him soak some damage. It's all right. Take it for the team. <laughs> yeah, take it for the team. You're playing like a five people team. You have to unite together sometimes. If your sacrifice is worth doing, and do yeah. it. 
the second round of the band here, Lu Bu and Ata together, the top lanes got eliminated mm -hmm. from the side of AG and Wei Bo answering. Oh, I love this pick. Like Guan Pangu, you don't want to deal with Pangu. Yeah, Pangu because Pangu can disarm yes. heroes, right? Like he, just Pangu's abilities allows allows him to disarm heroes so they're not able to use their normal attacks uh, for a specific period of time. And normal attacks will be extremely important for Lan trying mm -hmm. to do damage to the back lines. So this band is pretty targeted, pretty designed. Okay, loving the idea from here. We're seeing like Shang Guan and Byron together as a combo who will be playing extremely, extremely aggressive in early game. We haven't seen Byron in a while. <laughs> like we haven't seen It'll Byron be one time. Like in the wild card qualifiers. Yes, in wild cards. That's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. That's true. In wild cards, we saw him once in these last two days. This is the first time that we see him. Yep. They're gonna try to experience with something a little bit different, right? Like the Lupu would have been a better choice. Yep. But just taking Lupu out of the mix and then going with an assassin mage as Shang Wan Wan. So the mechanics works in this way. The reason they choose Byron is because if Byron is doing a one versus one matchup mm -hmm. against Meng Tian, so because Meng Tian using the ultimate will enable him to be surrounded by a lot of soldiers. Yes. So that's the reason why Byron like it so much. Byron is one of those characters who really rely on accumulation of the energy. Yes. The, the more target he gets, the more excited and the more powerful this character will be so it will be like the counter against the choice of Meng Tian and hopefully the solo matchups will be extremely important and extremely amazing to watch. But Tian, could we understand this uh -huh. as the fact that Byron is going to be surrounded by a lot of generals brought in by Meng Tian mm -hmm. is going to allow him to get a more energy? Yeah, accu accumulate the energy quickly okay. so the more targets he gets the more the faster the energy accumulation will be done. So the higher power that Byron will be having. I have not, I have not had the chance to see this matchup. Yep. Just to have Byron yep. against Meng Tian, mm -hmm. and hopefully today Tsumo and Sumo are just going to show to us <laughs> um, a little bit nice that experiment that we are seeing. I hope, I hope that is going to work out but in a really you know, nice way. After all, I think Beijing Weibo's composition is quite risky okay. because this kind of composition will lose threat gradually as the time goes by. Mm. So if we are talking about the late game damage that like ladies and together with the protection of like Meng Tian yeah. with Zhang Fei too, these two frontliners will protect a lot of protection to ladies and the damage will be insufficient to the side of Beijing Weibo. So by taking this kind of composition, I think Weibo is looking for some early game and Mid game moves. Yeah, exactly. The choice of Shang Wan Wang Ar, right? Mm -hmm. Like Shang Wan Wang Ar, right after mid 15, minute 16, her damage is almost offline. Yeah. Because it's going to be in the in the big fights, Shang Wan Wang Ar's damage is just going to be separated and divided through all the different enemies. So Beijing Weibo targets there. Clear, you're looking for the game quite early. Wow. Look at that, poor Xiao Pong. Taking extremely long now, he's gonna be seeing that he's gonna have to proc his flash. Ladies oh. and gentlemen, it's only like 40 seconds. What's going on? <laughs> I was trying to get some water. <laughs> That's how determined that we will want to gain some early game advantages. But TES is like, you know, if you want to look for team fights, I will be joining you. Here together, you the flag trying to do more damage and gaining the first blood back to TES. Good mm. move by Yu Chen. So aggressive. Byron just being able to come. Wow, wow, look at the damage right there. I love I love the way that this game is going. <laughs> so like exciting. this is like really exciting for their last three games. Uh -huh. Being able to see this, like the pace is so fast. I uh, like this. Ele Mule has been working starting from the three o'clock <laughs> and now it's 9.15. It's so excited to see you got, you know, emotional again. Yeah, of course, come on. It's only been six hours of electrifying activity. Come on. It's gonna be totally fine. Look at the rotation on top lane. Mm -hmm. We can see already Yukio Tachibana trying to come in. It's gonna be a two against two. Zumo not caring about that monkey. Yeah, a lot of shield will be offered during the very early phase. 
Oh, another one versus one. Chelsea with the frenzy just jumping straight into Xiaopeng's face. Wow, good moves there. Avoiding the auto attack damage from Lady Sun. They are single move. You have to predict. Has to spot Yu Chen because Yu Chen is coming in right now. The kitty wow. bombs, you're Chelsea. dealing so much damage. Oh! He's gonna use the bombs, but it's not going to be enough. And right now it's gonna be Xiaopeng that is going to fall as well. He tried to go for the kill and he is going to be unsuccessful in that. That's the show of the talents. That's the show off of the limitations of individual talents that we're talking about. Chelsea using the best help with the tower damage yeah. trying to gain the, the kill over to Beijing Weibo. That's a one versus two. A one one versus two. managed to take one in, in return. What a move by Chelsea. Oh, I always love this, you know, this player. Just yeah. knowing how to move under the turret when you have not yet made it to the four minutes mark, right? That's always a strategy for you to be able to take. Look at that, so they're just taking extremely low. He's gonna be taken to one third, one fourth of his damage. Ah, had to run away, broke his ult, and now he's gonna go in cooldown. I'm still soaking in <laughs> those, those kind of solo kills. It's not like solo kills, it's like a yep. one versus two, right? Very nice move. Well, definitely goes into the highlight clips. No, that's gonna go into the highlights for sure. I'm just yep. still waiting for the replay. But just the game, the game space is so fast. Yeah, because the team fights just went going on constantly, and Nuan Yang using the ultimate from Liu Bang managed to escape away. MTS trying to slow down Zemo, but Zemo is so tanky right now. There's definitely no way trying to kill Zemo at this particular time. Chelsea right now already with Doomsday in hand. I mean, after gaining the kill on the bottom lane, Chelsea will be unstoppable because he has like one grade ahead against yes. Xiaopong. And this grade will be enable the Chelsea the flexibility of the whole Gongsun Li just trying to extend the, the advantages of going against uh, their opponents. Lady Sun will be facing a lot of problems right now. Look at Hua Jun. Hua Jun wants to try to do something in there. Yeah. Just allowing Zemo to get vision, just to go around. Like the most job is just gonna be to really put pressure on Yukio Tachibana. Just not allowing him to jungle, just to farm easily. His job is just to go in, get the vision, and then just send information to his teammates. I mean, a lot of heroes are, are threats mm -hmm. only by making rotation show their appearance on the side lanes. So only by showing Hua Jun up there yeah. will be making sure that Sumo will have to retreat back. You don't even need to engage into some kind of team fights. You're just basically showing your face there and the top lane should be going back. That's Psychological the fights, uh -huh. right? This will be like the threat strategy of using this kind of character duel in the early game. So Beijing Weibo so already building to a 700 gold. Wow, Zemo looking for some changes here. Wow, wow another the death combo coming. coming in. Hua Jun that is going to come in with the final stroke, but it's going to be right now Sumo trying to take revenge. Hua Jun been taken extremely low, but look at Lam. His command in a mission comes in, has so many different ladies on, ladies on. enemies coming in. Ladies and jumping in, taking one more kill. It's going to wow. be Xiao Tun that is going to fall as well. Now Xiao Pong trying to go for Xing Yu, but Xing Yu is going to go through the wall. Gigantic and super long fight. I mean, Xiao Pong's rotation is really good because how decisive this player is using the flash, which will be the one common skill used to, sell, to do the self protection. Yep. He just chooses it to go in forward and choose to end those kills, gaining the double kill to Lady Sun. So before everything started, Xiao Dun managed to use the ultimate trying to slow down four members from Weibo, waiting for the Xiao Pun to arrive at the scene. And yeah. using the flash, get closer to your enemy, doing an, an auto attack, and right now waiting for the cooldown, using the ultimate, exerting a lot of damage on their team, uh, on their enemies. Good I just ones. think that they use too many too many Ability, uh, abilities right? to try to take on Yukio Tachibana, right? Yeah. Like right after they used all their abilities, there was no way that they could have taken the fight back against Meng Tian and Tranfei. I mean, both teams are really feeling excited right now. So, like five, five plus five plus mm -hmm. ten kills. That's ten within, kills like, only in six, six minutes and a half. <laughs> six minutes and a half. That's something huge. Still, I love the positioning of Zemo, constantly looking for changes in their enemy's jungle area. That's extremely important when you're playing 
Byron. You need mm. to find opportunity to your teams. You don't want to waste your time. Because TES will become gradually powerful till the late game. Beijing Weibo just trying to find the opportunity right oh, there. Oh, look at that. The final stroke is not going to be procked in the right moment. He's going to have to run away. Byron takes him one more kill against Yukio Tachiban. And now it's going to be Monty that is going to disappear. Completely evaporated from the map. Another showcase of the talents here. So Hua Jun was basically stunned right there, standing yes. in the bush. But the ultimate is not stopped. He's mm -hmm. basically accumulated two steps. Two more dashes are available for the Shangguan to finally fly up to the sky and become invincible. And that's the exact moment where Hua Jun saved the rest two dashes in order to fly away. Nice moves. And right now, gaining the two more kills to the side of Weibo, managed to take down a lot of vision here. And Nuanyang trying to gain this overlord back to Weibo. Weibo started to do the snowballing 3,000 gold lead it is. 3,000 gold lead in that last wow, fight. So Tun does not no have his ultimate. And Sumo does not have, oh, Sumo does have his ultimate, but he decides not to proc it right now. Yeah, they're completely outnumbered. Look how tanky Zumo is getting the tower diagro by the two towers, but still managed to take away. Amanda doesn't <laughs> care about no tower damage. Like, he just comes in, just uses his abilities. Look wow. at that, using the flash right now. He, he needs to calm down, boy. Yeah, bro, don't went too far. It was too much. <laughs> Over excitement a little bit. <laughs> But yeah, this is like a commercial for Byron. Yeah, so yeah, after yeah. watching this match, I think mm -hmm. a lot of first-time viewers really, really want to play this hero, right? I agree. <laughs> I agree. I just love Byron because he, he reminds me a lot of Futsu. Yeah. You know, they're just like really good one v one heroes. Like in top lane, like they, they can just take a 1v1 against anyone. You know, the reason why it's always so confident, because you can see the goal differences. Uh, mm. If you take a comparison against Sumo, like over 1,000 gold lead ahead yeah. of Sumo, that's something. That's the reason, main reason why Sumo are playing so confidently. Thank you enough. And the damage, you can take a look in the future. Like, next team battle will be extremely huge. And then Nguyen Yan trying to jump in. The Kitty Bombs are going to push Chelsea back so he cannot participate in this fight. The invasion to the red it is. Wei Bo taking another red from TS Jungle. Uh, yeah, it's really difficult for TS to try to, to try to fight back because the goal lead and goal deficit are quite huge. Uh, not only the goal lead is very huge, it's the fact that Nguyen Yang has been so good at just controlling the tempos yep. of the red and the blue spawning, mm -hmm. right? So he does not give any chance for Guzin to try to take even one of those buffs. Yes. Look at that, the buff, the buff appears and then it's only two seconds and Nguyen Yang is already there. You know, with all the team fights, it seems like the Beijing Weibo, the rest four teams, Members are just looking for team fights, mm -hmm. randomly starting a team fight and finish off the kills. But they stayed in the same tune. They are kind of tuned in the same channel because yes. they kept rolling the snowballing and the rhythm stayed the same. By Nuan Yang controlling the whole mech, taking every single objective, every single dragon spawning, Nuan Yang will be there, trying to make sure that Weibo will defeated. continuously building up the gold lead. It's just continuous. Yep. Continuous building, continuous farming, just non-stop. Non Look at that, Yu Chen is going to have to proc his flash. It's not going to be enough as you can see Nguyen Yang right now has the damage of the gods and there's one more kill for the man. I think it's like the same thing happening again. You know, Nguyen Yang very rich with the help of Liu Bang's ult and mm -hmm. trying to get closer to backline and just get the kill. Either. That, that combo between Liu Bang and Lam for That's Beijing Weibo is something that the other teams are going to have to are going to have to work around. I think the time is not enough for TES trying to steal yeah. this game to the very late phase because right now, 11 minutes, the high ground tower goes down. The high ground tower goes down. Look at wow. that. Nguyen Yan just jumps in, not caring about anything. Simo is going to come in. He's going to proc his ult and he's going to take a lot of damage, pushing everyone back to the fountain. The turret is gone. It's time for Be for Beijing Weibo just to push back a little bit. The waves are still available, but TS have found himself a lot of time to try to clean it. But right now, Xiao Dun is so low in the energy, mm -hmm. it will be cost a little more time for this Zhang Fei to try to accumulate the energy, trying to have the ultimate. 
I think that's gonna be a free overlord yes. for Beijing Weibo. Of course. Not, not reason, no, no, no way that no PS way. No can way. go and contest that. Nguyen Yang is gonna take on that overlord on his own, as right now the whole map is just looking blue for Beijing Weibo. Yeah. Huge leading in the gold, huge leading in the control oh! of the map. Seriously. The ladies and just got vanished from the map. It was just a couple auto attacks, and then Lady Soon immediately disappearing. You know, this is a game of the gold. This yep. is not a game of the management, not a game of your down territory. It's a game of earning the money so that you will have extremely high damage trying to go for the kills against your enemies. Poor Lady Soon. Poor Lady Soon. Ne never stood a chance. Yeah. Never, never stood a chance in that Man fight. Yang. Look Again. at that Man Yang coming in wow. one more time. It's gonna have to force your tune to take on and turn right gigantic into the gigantic gorilla. It's not gonna be enough. He's gonna have to run back. It's gonna be Sumo taking low very much. Sumo is just taking damage from everyone. Takes on the turret. The bangers are coming in. There is no solution to this problem for TES. It's no already 11,000 gold. No solution it is. I think the next target and next move for Weibo is like waiting for the wave to come in at the same time and causing ex constant distraction to TES mm -hmm. so that Weibo can rush in as a team trying to take the base down. Look at Sumo, he's just on his own <laughs> taking on everyone on the high ground. Yeah, this is how tanky if you're gonna play in a leading game using this kind of character. Undefeatable, you don't see the HP bar going down. The shield were constantly offering back the like restorement, the recovery is like insane. It's insane, look at that right now. Shangomar is going to disappear, but he's gonna be seeing you trying to proc his oh, ult. He's gonna finally, be late. Finally. Now DES has the opportunity. Chelsea's trying to run away, but they are on the hunt. The super minions are coming in and they're gonna stop this chase. Yep. So Beijing Wave will have spent too long a time uh -huh. on the battle because they have they wanted to give it closer to the base, but unfortunately the clean, the wave are cleaned by TS members, and right now TS actually won the fight using the ultimate shrine to get the kill, but it's not enough. So Yu Chen finally get a vision gaining down and have gained themselves the Shadow Tyrant back to so their side. So look at that, just completely not caring about anything. Just Shang are just not being able to, to, to deal even the ultimate. Yep. I think that it was just, that's gonna be the solution for TES. It's not gonna be them trying to find the solution, it's gonna be Beijing Weibo just making the mistake. Yeah, but um, only one time of the mm -hmm. mistake is not enough. Not because enough. Because we're still watching a huge, like very significant gold lead here. And yep. Nguyen Yang in the bush, getting the vision right there. You ah. the straight to the back line and finish the kill, the Xiaofeng Yan down. And right now Liu Bang gains more using the stun, trying to slow down the enemy, but they're still waiting for the marksman to arrive at the scene. Another Lady try. Sun did not stand the chance in no, there. Nguyen Yang came in, locked her in, and then this was not enough. Now, right now, Xiao Tun is going to proc his ult. It's going to be taken extremely low. He's going to have to push back. The super minions are joining in into the crystal. Gusing is trying to clean the wave. It's going to be useless. The game goes to Beijing Weibo. I think undoubtedly, like Beijing Weibo is going to have this point back, winning four points within five fights. So it's very looking good to the side of Weibo. They only lost one during yesterday's matchup, but uh, eventually with a very quick spade, they find themselves together and brought the whole spirit and the vibe to the game and to the stage again. So um, I think Beijing Weibo could be better. Yeah. We have seen overcome a lot of challenges after losing in the very first round KPL qualifiers. Some of the audience, some of the fans might be a little bit confused of their composition, of their performance just now happened. But right now, after like three days of recovery, I think they have found themselves back. They are still the Beijing Weibo that we anticipated. They are that Beijing Weibo that we're in, that not invited that Beijing Weibo that they had the right to join the round one of yep. our qualifiers. They are that same Beijing Weibo that everyone thought that they were gonna make it straight to group stages. And then, and the moment that they joined our bloodbath of four days of BO1s, I'm certain 
I'm certain that right now everyone is trying to think what to do against Noanyan and the boys. <laughs> Um, Noan Yang is one of the players that um, I think are not performed good enough during the very first round of the KBL mm -hmm. qualifiers. So um, because as the Noan Yang, the form of gaming style that this player plays, it's so calm, it's so rational, you rarely see a kind of matchup where Noan Yang gets too excited or yeah. makes some careless mistake. But in that BO7, I think Noan Yang really should think a lot before he acts. Mm -hmm. But I'm really glad to see this player, you know, evolving and trying to gain a lot of things back within this short amount of time. It is important just for Noan Yang just to try to find that right rhythm, yep. right? Like finding the right rhythm in the game. Um, today we've seen already three times, um, multiple times playing that trio of Kun Sun Lee, Lam, and Liu Pang. Yeah. That seems to be actually working really well for Beijing Weibo. <laughs> what can they do in mid lane? Uh, Byron was a good a good option against yep. Meng Tian. Mm -hmm. Shang Wan Wan was not that effective, I would say. Yeah, so Shang Guan Wan is, I, I think they're trying to choose this early game, trying to find themselves, trying mm -hmm. to build a little bit of adaption. If they were have to perform this kind of composition in the BO7, they're yep. definitely going to the net group stage, right? Yeah. They have to think more because um, going to and becoming the top four is not their goal. They won the second, right? They go, they went to the finals in Challenging yeah. Cup. Their goal is not that short distance, so they have to look forward to more. So the best solution is that you can practice more compositions during the fight. Okay. Using the real ones. All right. Mm -hmm. Beijing Wei vs Nuan Yang is going to take the MVP. A gigantic performance. Oh, that's a definite, well, you know. Uh -huh. It's really, really rare to see, you know, the MVP goes to Nuan Yang, but you're looking at the high <laughs> highlight from Xiao Xi. I know. That, that, that Xiao Xi mo moment at the two minutes mark. Whew. Incredible. Incredible, yeah. Just crazy. Just totally to insane. Totally insane. Budget just jumping in. That Shangguan arm, that at the, at the early stages, right over there, knocked back, and then still was able to proc the, the last stroke. You know, I had a friend who was mm -hmm. asking who played the best Gong Sun Lee in KPL because he really loved this character okay. and want to learn from how how you know the, mm -hmm. the professional players are doing with the character. So I wondered a lot. There's a lot of available options in my mind. True. So after several seconds of hesitation, I gave up my final answer. You should pay attention to Weibo, the marksman where Chelsea plays. Okay, Chelsea, in Kenyon's opinion, so the good. best so Gong Sun Lee no, player. Don't, don't, the... that, don't, don't lean that Quote kind of pressure me. on me. You can already <laughs> record that. That's what she said. <laughs> Beijing Weibo, Chelsea, 3-0-3. Come on, like, the man has been playing really well. So really well, I would yeah. say, I would say that he deserves he deserves the spotlight for a little mm -hmm. while well it's not very common to see like Lom dealing mm -hmm. over 30 percent of the damage true. right true no, no and yang was just playing very aggressive i don't think that he played the same well as he did in the previous game yep uh, because sometimes it just looked a little bit rushed the way that he was trying to initiate the fights or jumping in too early in the fights. All right, some changes are happening down there because we take a look at the team standings right now. Chengdu AG still runs in the very first place among 10 teams and Beijing Wen will manage to go to the second because they have taken four scores in total. Four yeah. victories in five games yep. for Beijing Weibo. The only team that they lost again was Chengdu AG, right? Yeah, it's yesterday's match. Yeah, exactly. So I think that the boys can go today back to their hotels and actually have a good, good, good rest. All right. So let's begin our interview and let's see who we have. Hello, Nanyang. Give us a call. Hello, everyone. I'm Beijing Weibo Nanyang. It's not a rare, a, a, a very common thing to see when you choose to try to pair like Byron together with Wang Er. So mm. basically, just tell me the reason why you have this kind of composition. Uh, Kuang Tie and Wang Er's composition, I've seen a bit less. Can you share with us in the BP stage why you made this choice? Ah, because Kuang Tie is a hero, so compared to Wang Er, he has some small weaknesses in his composition. 然后婉儿的话是
呃，对，像孙安、孙杨香，然后沈梦溪这样的后排，呃，团战的时候杀伤力比较大吧。Okay, so the reason they choose Byron is because they match up advantages yeah. against Meng Tian, and the choice of Shang Guan will be like he will be a huge threat towards Lady Sun and Shen Mengxi, a huge nightmare towards the back line.、Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why we choose these two heroes. Uh, 看到你又一次使用了蓝和刘邦的组合，为什么呢？啊、uh, ，就没什么嘛，这个组合比较强。Okay, this is a very first,、uh, very second time he used this combination with、uh, the use of Lam together with Liu Bang. I was kind of trying to figure out the reason why, because the but the answer is quite simple, right? Ah,、uh, there's no reason. We just feel like this duel is quite aggressive. That's the reason we pick it. Ah,、uh, 是非常感谢暖阳接受我们采访，希望未来的比赛越打越好。Good luck. 谢谢。There's no reason when something is just open. Ah, he's completely hiding.、Nah. Hiding some strategies right there. He doesn't.、Know. He doesn't want us to know. Yeah, Nuanyang. I really like interviewing with Nuanyang. I have to choose interview with Nuanyang a lot、mm. of times when I was doing like face-to-face -face,、uh, interview back then in KPL.、Uh, I really like this player because it's so determined. He's、yeah. so clear with his goals. A very professional athlete, esports like athletes. Of course, a man, a man with very good work ethics.、Mm -hmm. right? Like、mm -hmm. he has the work ethics of just like always having very high standards towards your performance, and always trying to work every single day just to achieve your goals. That is the reason why Nuan Yang is considered one of the top junglers in the、yep. whole KPL. He made it to the best list. Exactly. Well, let's check on some of the highlights of our of our game. Like there were a lot of moments. That we could see just this one from Chelsea <laughs> again. This is going to be for me. It's going to be one of the top five of the day. <laughs>、yeah. There is no way that this doesn't make the top five. <laughs> me too. Just makes the decision, lures people in, goes under the turret, just playing with the systems. It's not that simple, you know. You you have to take it very seriously when you. Trying to know exactly、mm -hmm. each every single move have their meaning. So he's actually calculating the damage that the tower can use、sure. and the damage their enemies are gonna put on him self. And that's something huge. It's very very hard. It's very hard to try very to very difficult.、Mm -hmm. But well, I hope that everyone paid paid attention to that. Take some notes and let's see what's going to happen. Now we have two more games. Games 11 and games 12. Game 11 is going to have Sutro KSG against Chengdu AG, and Game 12 is going to be Nanjing Hero against Guangzhou TTG. Those are coming. Stay online. We're going to have a little rest. See you again.
All right, how we are gonna anticipate this match you go on? I have a lot of expectations mm. towards this fight between Suzhou KSG versus Chengdu AG. Wow. Suzhou KSG came in today as the one of the most, um, one of the strongest. Yeah, let's just say it like that. Yep. One of, of the course. strongest teams from yesterday. Their performance yesterday were like exquisite. Mm -hmm. um, came in today, had a difficult match against Nanjing Hero, um, but yesterday 100% win rate, three games, two wins. Um, they're gonna play against Chandu AG that is undefeated until now. Um, but I think the previous match, especially for KSG, it's not that like they performed badly mm -mm. or poorly. It's because they lack of experience trying to figure out what they should do yes. against this, that kind of uncommon composition. So I think it will should be done after a serious like discussion and whole analysis against Hero's composition. Wait, they will be fully ready for this battle. I don't think that Chandu AG is going to take on some very unorthodox the same yep. as what Nanjing Hero just of did course. right mm -hmm. so it might be a little bit an easier match for KSG to understand not an easier match to play How but an easier we... match to understand for sure however you have to focus on this very single fight since a lot of stories are hiding behind these matches so on um, story time <laughs> I like this the player that we see from the scene right now mm -hmm. is called Azu. Azu, very, very talented player. He used to be the former players for AG, representing AG for a very long time. Okay. So this player has a very deep bond against your enemy today, AG. <gasps> and the fact that the next bat battle they have with one another will be taken back into summer season playoffs, where the both team fight till the very last one, the ultimate battle. Wow. And KXG managed to take take victory four against three. Wow. In the ultimate battle. Yes. I just Never love guess. ultimate battles. They're Me too. so nice. Me too. We're so close, you know, 4-2, 4-2 all the time. The yeah. two days in the very first round of the KPL qualifiers. Oh, come on. I hope that I hope that whenever that we get to BO7s uh -huh. in the second round after group stages, like we're gonna see several of those of course, ultimate yeah. battles. Ultimate really, battles. Really looking forward for those. The moment when heroes are made, right? <laughs> We, we might be, you know, witnessing the same hero going on to the two teams. Mm -hmm. You're competing your limitations. You're competing the fact that whoever master this character the best will win the game. Wow. Let's wait and see. Well, we are still pretty far away from BO7 as so today. Mm -hmm. We're going to be only our day two of our KPL qualifiers. Round two, day two, still BO1s. Gongsun Lee is not going to be available for Inua. Yeah. Inua plays Gongsun Lee very well. Yesterday's yeah. matches, a lot of damage offered by this Gongsun Lee. So aggressive. I love how he plays the aggression showing out. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's not like the character. It's not because of using the Gongsun Lee makes Inua so aggressive. This player is just famous for this kind of gaming style. He's just an, aggra an aggressive player. Yeah. <laughs> He's just an aggressive man. Yeah. I've regarded, you could actually give him a support and probably he would be an aggressive support as well. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Let's look forward to that. Okay, Lu Bu will be the pick for AG, goes into the top against Azu Xia Houtun. Mm, Xia Houtun being the first pick in there. A really nice pick. I like Xia Houtun a lot. Like Xiao Tuan is just one of those heroes that not only uh, can take in, can suck in a lot of damage, gives you initiation uh -huh. as well, and it can deal real damage. I think like multifunctional will yeah. be the word to describe, to mm. try to describe the fact that you can use the Xiao Tuan. Either you want to play in a very aggressive way, you can choose to make this hero a very aggressive one using it, a company, you do yeah. the invasions together with your junglers, or you can use this character just to play and to protect your backlines and that's enough. Just protecting backliners. Yep. Jing is gonna be the choice for jungler. One scene that did not have a very good game against Nanjing Hero, it was a very difficult one for him. Right now he's going to take Jing and trying to face whatever that is going to be the option for marksman and jungler from Chengdu AG. But you know, from this composition, like AG's composition, there's mm -hmm. a lot of crowd controls, right? Yeah. A lot of minor controls will be 
extremely fatal towards Jin. So after several changes of the meta, yeah. Jin's ultimate used to offer him a lot of immunity during remember, yeah. the troubles, yeah, during just standing within the mirror effect. But right now in this current meta, he lose it. He lose the talent of becoming immune during the troubles. So uh, basically if Jin use the ultimate during some team mm -hmm. fights and got some stunned or some crowd controls being hit on Jin, he'll be very hard to try to fly. So heroes that oh. have like a very big crowd control or very big areas of effect, kind of effect. are gonna are going to be very dangerous for Jin, right? Yeah. They're going to limit at least when whenever that Jin is going to jump into the fight. Mm -hmm. You have to wait for the very last minute to dive in and make sure that the burst and damage from Jin it will gain you a lot of kills. Yeah. Well, what, what are the options for jungler in here? Um, you mean for AG? Yeah, for AG. No lamb, no... no Miyamoto no. Musashi is also banned away. Yeah, and Ukiyo? early game will be a, quite a choice. I would say Ukiyo or Tigerus. You know, you mm -hmm. should be yeah. gaming for like very aggressive ones. Yeah, exactly. Tigerus, I actually would like... No, actually, UQ is better. Yeah, okay. yeah I, li I like UQ, the yep. UQ pick instead of the Tigerus pick. Mm -hmm. uh, already ha you have Mong Ya with Tram Fei that they're going to have huge priority in the bottom lane um, against Lady Sun. Probably a Titan and would be an option yep. over here for KSG. You know, for the first four picks from AG, I usually call this kind of composition the Red Squad. Because okay. these four characters are wearing or all in bed. <laughs> the obvious, very obvious one. Uh, but they're kind of working together, right? They are very aggressive, have a lot of crown control and a lot of burst damage. When the Bulls ultimate joined by John Face ultimate within the dive in in of my Shinanui, everything can happen. Zhang Liang. Zhang Liang being the choice. Ooh. Cool, 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 cool. I haven't seen Zhang Liang in a little while either. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And Zhang Liang used to, be, used to play mid. Hey. Right, now, right now, it's going to be playing support. So a lot of moves, you know, transfer yes. from a mid laner to a support. But it's quite useful when you're trying to fix the fact that AG mm -hmm. has a lot of initiation coming from the crowd control abilities that the, these characters have. So the best solution for Jiang Liang is that you wait some here, hide in the bush, and when these two tanks want to exert their ultimate onto your back lines, you just use your ultimate to, to prevent that from happening. Just hold into your ultimate for as long as you can, right? Mm -hmm. And just waiting in the bush. You don't want to actually show your position. Just waiting in the bush and holding to your ult for as long as, you, as it's necessary. Because in this current meta, the ultimate from Zhang Liang will enable Zhang Liang to stop any kind of control. Yes. So the control that Zhang Liang have goes to the superior of the control chains. He will stop uh, Dong Huang Taiyi's ultimate. He will stop and sorp, sorp in the whole damage from Lu Bu's and Zhang Fei's ultimate. These hero will solve everything. Power word control. Yeah. The ultimate by Chan Liang. Mm -hmm. Good ones. A good, a very impressive one will be happening from now on. So just stay tuned and watch the game with us together. Here we go. The very first minute will be hitting on in between AG versus KSG. Let us see what's going to happen. Let's see if the Red Army <laughs> is going to be able to, to move forward, right? Red Squad. The Red Squad. Let's go. I like Red Squad. Me too. Oh, Invasion made here. Ooh. Um, vision flies over there using the first ability of Google again, trying to chip away those HP bar from Azu. 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 Oh. Keeping control of it, right? Like they were not able just to stop Ian. Ian gonna take, gonna come in and take a little bit off their jungle. That's gonna be dangerous for one team. That's a four versus four right there in mm -hmm. red red jungle zone, making sure that KSG, the jungler one team, can have the blue, uh, the red buff to her side. Very difficult. In terms of in terms of like cleaning cleaning the clean the jungle, right? Like in terms of like the farming speed. Would you say that Jing is a little bit faster than Yukio Tachibana? It really depends on whether you have your teammates to help you with that. So yeah. we can see that Azu is basically helping Jing to clean the yeah. red buff. 
so that they can just boost in up the, the speed of the farming of the yeah. thing. It's re really important that you get to level four ahead of your enemy. The rotation speed is just crucial, right? Like once you're already in level four, and just going up to top lane just to keep just ganking and keep taking more and more gold. Mm -hmm. Danger some vantage on the top side and Ian have the sensation that the jungler might be up here in the top. So he managed himself to, you know, take the wave just standing below your turret, trying to make sure that you are safe enough, you won't get killed. Well, right now Ian is going to be fine as he's already in level four. The Tyrant is going to go for AG as Yukiuta Chibana is going to get on that last touch. You know, this Tyrant gain is a complete show of how like quickly that AG's communication is. <laughs> so Ian have the side of two characters, like two heroes standing up to the top. So yeah. Jin, the both Jin and Azu stay there. So he just simply tells his two teammates like, I have two, like the, the junglers are staying at the top. It's our chance to take the Tyrant. Exactly. exactly. They, they just show the vision and then you need to be able to react quickly to that. You have to tell this information to your teammates so that they can make the move. Make quick quick decisions, right? Like it's just a split second. Send that send that information and make a decision on what you want to do. Now Ice has paired himself again with a smite. Look at that. Azo is going to come down all the way to the river. So the primal portal will be very helpful mm -hmm. for Kwai Shou trying to prevent AG away from their jungle. The use of the the use of this primal portal will enable Azo to Oh uh, suppress yeah. down the combo! It's coming in the control chain takes Ice out of the game, it's gonna be 1-0 for KSG. Yeah, Ice needs to stay careful because once Shao A get to level four mm -hmm. with the ability to pull off the ultimate, he will try to start off a little bit of skirmish happening down there. He did not know that. Look at that. Liu Fu is going to jump in, then he's going to proc his flash to, to survive from that each's control. Yeah, so both the flash are used because Liu Fu is trying to get away from the second ability of Long Zhao Jing. And oh, Zhao Jing oh. gets killed instantly. How? What a damage right there. What a damage from Wei Yang, right? Like, that was really nice to see. That turret is going to fall as well. The ballistas are going to be part of the game. I think AG is really looking forward to gain the fifth point mm -hmm. back because starting up, they have take down the tier one turret in the top and they can easily make their own rotation back to the mid, trying to make more thing happen. My Shinanui vanishing from the back, from the whole mini map again, which will mean that K KSG really have to find out where this My Shinanui is. Oh. Huge threat, huge threat. There's a lot of pressure, right? Like a lot, of, a lot of pressure. Look at that. AG one more time just trying to come in and to harass a little bit. They don't even want to take on that buff. They just want to come in and just do a little bit of harassment. The blue will be delayed into the bush. Yep. But um, lucky news for Wan Xing. Managed to take down. Managed to take that Wan Xing right now. Five minutes of the game, 1,500 gold lead for Chengdu AG. I think it's very difficult for Wan Xing since every single like game he played today mm -hmm. is facing a lot of troubles. Every single enemy is trying to take away all the resources from his jungle. And that has a lot. Of, uh, that puts a lot of pressure on him psychologically, Story right? Yep. Like whenever that you're just being like the target from everyone, you start asking yourself, why? Why, <laughs> why me? <laughs> why me? Why did they do this? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it's the reason of the herd meta because the meta we're playing right now mm -hmm. emphasizes the importance of the jungle. So we have like the early game jungle protection system offered yep. by the outer one turrets and also by their jungle. So the jungle will be extremely important. When your enemy wants to start snowballing, your jungle will be their only target. It's not personal. It's not personal. <laughs> it's not personal. You're just, colla you're just collateral damage. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. Suppressed in there. one more time. It's wow. going to be the combo Ooh. once again but he's going to be able to jump in. Lady Sun is going to disappear, same as Lupu. All the, uh, all the abilities just tossed in on Lupu and then just leaving Lady Sun very open in there for the damage. I would say the combo is really good, but the, uh, uh, the damage is yeah. just not enough. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They use like the two crowd control ability 
connecting closely with one another, but unfortunately just cannot find the exact right amount of damage to kill this Wu Wu. But after all, the whole like crowd control like effect finished, we will use the ultimate, get yes. closer to Xiao Zhou, get closer to Lady Sun, and together with the help of Mai Shinui, get the kill. Yeah, it's just it's something that luck. something that they need to that they need to think about, right? Like we see, seems like the mechanics and the coordination is there. It's there. They just don't have any lethal damage. But though. you will gradually have that damage because mm -hmm. you will definitely become richer and buy more stuff, and that's okay. You know, surprise, that, frozen. Just... The chain, the chain is there. One the link there. following the other. Yep. The timing of the abilities is there. It's just not the damage. You have to at wait, least not yet. Like wait two two minutes longer, and that's it. Mm. That will be your final answer. I, I think don't don't need to rush in, into anything. They have ladies in their composition. No need to worry. That's true. That is true. Wow. Look at that Ichu mask of agony. This will be a problem. This will be a real problem to KSG because the two core from AG are way too wealthy mm. right now. Ranked into the first and the second place, you don't want to deal this kind of enemy. Two wealthiest people in here are the two people that you <laughs> do not know. want them to <laughs> yeah. have money, right? They're the two cores, you know, the marksman and the jungle. Sad for them. Very, very sad for them. Great news for Chengdu AG. Yeah. I think AG is doing like silently. You don't even notice that these two cores are farming up so quickly. Mm -hmm. And here we go. You take a look at the ranking e economy, like rankings, you got surprised. Eight minutes, 3,000 gold advantage. Let's wait and see. Let's see if the items for it, right? That was just like taken away extremely fast right after I just queued it. Yep. The pure sky is, is enough. Ian ready for. Mm -hmm. Engaging to any kinds of team fights ready from now on, AG will be looking for some serious like team fights. Pure Sky has become such a top priority item, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like it's just like every single warrior is just is just using right now Pure Sky. I mean Pure Sky offers you extra damage, but at the same time you can use it to protect to prevent yourself from yeah. getting too much absorb too much damage from the enemies. It's a very useful like item to be paired with. The same choice goes to Wan Xing. Pure Sky it is. Pure Sky it is. Look at that. Infinity Blade, Shadow Ripper, two items for Meng Ya. Just trying to build on one more. Blood Weeper probably. The Pure Sky actually gives you extra HP and that's something worthy. Mm -hmm. And that's always good. offers 30 35% of the damage reduction, that's something huge. 35% of damage reduction? Mm -hmm. For how long? Three seconds, just imagine. Oh. During one single team mm -hmm. fight, you get the ability. That is a whole fight. Yep. That is a whole fight in there. But this comes up with a quite long cooldown, you know, 90 seconds, 90 seconds. You have to wait 90 seconds to be to wait for this active to, to be used. Minute and a half cooldown is a long, long, long time, so you need to use it wisely. Yep. You can just be wasting it around, so you need to use it only for the critical moments, that's for sure. Okay, 10 minutes it is. AG has been waiting for this moment for a very long time. They really want to take control of the dragons. I think both the dragons mm -hmm. are acceptable. Let's just see what kind of, yeah, Shadow Tyrant it is. They want to gain extra damage. They want to engage into the team fight. They want to get it done before Lady Sun got too much items. Of course, like right now, Lady Sun already with Master Sword and Eternity Blade. Yep. Like, it is It is not yet online, mm -hmm. but a couple minutes on the more. Way, on the way, on the a way. A couple minutes more, it's gonna be a problem. And the Meteor is available at the same time, yeah. so he will be developed into secondary items, which will be the Starbreaker. Starbreaker allowing her to have armor pierce. Look at that. You Already. just called it. Yep. Ah. Oh, both dragons. AG. Full control of yeah. all the resources, full control of the map. KSG needs to turn things around and they need to turn them quickly because AG is not slowing down at all. Like the two dragons goes into AG's pocket after cleaning the whole jungle area. I think AG will be looking for some team fights right here. And Kwaisho is facing a lot of problems because it's very hard for them to try to initiate one yeah. because 
they choose Zhang Liang goes into support. That means that Azze will be the only tank available for the whole composition. They are facing the fact that they have like weakness when it comes to the fact that the vision is not enough. Uh, Azze is going to be the only one just sucking in damage, right? Like the only, the only frontliner that you are going to have. Like it's going to be very difficult for him just to suck in on everything. The position is quite good, but I think Azze cannot hold the time any longer. No, one seems trying to wait for the right moment, but the right moment is never coming in. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, like, Meng Ya can constantly get a HP recovery using the first ability, and with the help of Zhang Fei together with Lu Bu, just surrounds the marksman, keeps him very safe. Lu Bu is gonna jump in, but he's going to jump just to die. Right now, it's going to be one more kill. The turret is going to be taken to half. The dragons are extremely unhealthy. They're gonna be able to protect that turret and Lubu, Ian is going to fall. Yeah, that's not a very good choice when it comes into the team fights because definitely AG can just continuously building some pressure like mm -hmm. the way they have towards the two towers in the mid. But forcing into team fight will definitely not be a good choice because they have like Zhang Liang standing in yes. front of you. Once you get into back lines, you are you are facing the second ability of Zhao Jun. You're facing the fact that Zhang Liang can use the ultimate to down you, stun you at any point. So I think Yi An is, made, is quite rushing into something, but you don't have to do this. You're just waiting for the right moment. Call you have the advantage. Threat. Yeah. Like it's not it's not like you need to finish it right now. Yeah, we're talking about like trying to be trying to rush it a little bit, but not too much. And look at that, he's gonna jump in one more time. He's gonna be out that he's going to take Trailing away. Alex has been taken to half of his HP. He's going to disappear. He cannot take any more damage. The turret is gonna fall, Kenyon. This is one good move. Because what AG is doing, they're trying to lure KSG mm -hmm. out of their high ground. So uh, the only way they can possibly win the team fight is that KSG managed to go outside and take the team fights in the jungle area. And that's what AG will be good at. They have Zhang Fei together with the Lu Bu. Yes. Those ultimate will enable them to find a perfect location to deal into team fights. Again, super minions are rushing in. The Winters here is going to clean that wave but the bottom lane turret is not gonna stand for long. It's going to fall and right now it's going to be super minions in mid wow, and bottom Emblem. lane for AG. Wow. I mean, Xiao A use acceleration effect offered by Howling Emblem trying to gain some vision here because they know that AG has used up a lot of ability, a lot of alter alternative, and that's the replay. Bad choice for KSG mm. trying to go outside. The best solution for them is just stay in your high ground tower, buy Lady Sun more time exactly. so that the damage will be sufficient. Just trying to go out over there on the hunt was just for what? For a red buff? Yeah. That red buff was, was not worth it. All the, all the deaths that they had. All right, so after fighting for this dragon, KSG, is trying to decide whether they should be going back to their base because this overlord fall they don't want to like give this overlord up to ag but i think they do not have a better solution they don't have this. they don't have an option right yep. now it's only 15 minutes mm -hmm. it's only 15 minutes it's already an 7,000 gold lead. And you don't need to mention the high ground tower in the mid and in the bottom. The super soldier will be a huge problem to the side of KSG. So if you want to stay outside, you have to be decisive. You have to initiate in the team fights you want to happen. But right now, they cannot find any member available on the map. AG is hiding their vision and taking the overlord to their side. Look at how the HP bar of that overlord just immediately just disappeared. <laughs> yeah. What's being taken by the two or three thousands. Wow. It's insane. It's very difficult for KSG. I know, I completely understand this scenario. They're yeah. facing a, quite a dilemma here. Very hard to make some decisions. It is difficult because you want to win. Yeah. It's, not, it's, it's, like you don't, it's not that you don't want to lose. Mm -hmm. You want to win. They're two completely different things. You, they want to be able to do something, to have a little bit of the, their hope and their destiny in their hands. They want to go out and do something, but waiting in their ter under their turrets seems just like a sad way to lose. Yeah, I don't like this kind of feelings, but sometimes 
Your enemy leaves you no choice. That's what AG is doing right now. True. No, because we're casting, so we can see every single yeah. hero appearing on the map. But mm -hmm. if you are one of the KSG players, I can assure you, there's no one you can see on the map. You will be constantly facing a lot of threats when you go outside your high ground tower. Now you don't Anything know exactly where the danger is coming. Look <laughs> yeah. at that. The dragons are in. In one, Xiaoyin trying to find a way into the back laners. It's going to be Lupo that is going to jump in. Xiaoyin taking so many people on air. The control was on. Ian is going to fall. And right now, look at that. It's going to be the comeback. One C is going to come in. It's going to clean the wave. Wow. wow! What a crowd control effect from now on. They actually knock on into four members of KSG. Mm. But unfortunately, the damage is not enough. KSG just rushing back to their base, recovering the HP and fight back. But the damage is also not enough for like Jin to dive in. Let's pay attention and re- There. Love. Boom! Wow. So cool. So cool. Together, the ultimate of my Shinanui together with E and Louis Bills also. Yes. These two ultimate made this happen, made this incredible thing happen. Jin trying to come back in the counter attack, trying to take on Meng Ya, but Meng Ya right now is just sucking in so much. Yeah. It's going to recover so much HP for every single attack that he's going to deal, right? And Meng Ya is one special marksman. Well, this hero will be building a lot of defensive items, mm -hmm. enabling himself to, you know, constantly stay in the team fights. Yeah. This marksman will never go down in this particular match. And KSG really, really need to find a great angle because they're facing like two lanes of super soldiers. And right now, it seems to me like, oh, the only one time ultimate from Jaldrin is not enough to clean the wave. They have to figure out fast, better solutions to this. Mai Shinanui, so good positioning here with Xiao Ying. Managed to keep each away. Look eyes, at that. Eyes. Want to isolate it, the whole team fights just now happen. You can the he's gonna be surrounded by everyone. He's trying, but he won't be able to stand for long. Yep, and AG is looking for their waves here, trying to make sure that the wave can get to the base at the same time from the mid and the top. Look at that and top the lane well. yeah. turret. Mm -hmm. It just has like 1% or 2% HP. Wow, and she got very low. Oh! It's going to be Yukita Chimanana going to be suppressed, but that's going to spot Chanlian's position. Easy for everyone to jump in. Sergio is trying his best. He's going to use Kiseji Sentry. He's going to resurrect just to fall one more time. The okay. double kill by Lupu. The crystal is coming in, and it's going to be game. For Chengdu AG. Again, a victory. I mean, AG is completely undefeated. Lasting for two days. Another score down to their base. AG made this happen against KSG. A lot of stories, a lot of things are happening with the two teams. And mm. this time, AG finally got themselves the opportunity to get this revenge on Suzhou KSG. Wow, great performance by Chengdu AG. It just, they just took the advantage so early in the game. And it was just impossible for KSG to try to turn things around. It was just not enough. You know, they please, tried, but it was not enough. Please, just share with us what what will be the feeling of being undefeated? Wow. <laughs> I, that, winning. That's going to be a great question for the interview, <laughs> right? Like, how does it feel to be so much better than everyone else? <laughs> well done, wow. Chandu AG. Well wow. done. Very, very well done. Five presentations, five victories, five points. I would say that one of the tickets for group stages. Oh, we are witnessing the birth. Yeah. Of maybe of the very first spot to the next stage. I don't want to jinx it, but come on. After five games, they they all need they only need one more win. Yeah. They just need one more win, and then they're gonna make it to that magical six. And this is so much for AG today's competition. So they have like three competition against different enemies with Shenzhen DYG, Nanji Hill, and Suzhou KSG. And they managed to get themselves three victories in return. Good news for AG. They're looking very, very good in the second round of KPL Regional Qualifiers. Very congrat uh, congratulations to them. Such a good news. Such a good news. Uh, like after two months of the hard work, they finally made it happen. Mm -hmm. They had themselves a goal just to improve for this KIC. 
trying their very best just to move forward, to take the mistakes from the past and then just flip the page. And right now they have one hand on the ticket. They just need one more victory. You know, one more victory and they're going to be there. Um, we have been showing you guys a, the same video clip that we uh, played every single time in the earlier phases of our tournament, yep. introducing KIC to you. And KIC is one of the most important, is the highest level of tournament throughout every single year. So basically, both of uh, we we doing the castings and the yep. players, each member, each uh, clubs are looking forward to perform the best during the single tournament. So it will always be a good news, the best news for AG to perform this good in KIC. You have to bring a wonderful end throughout the entire journey in the year of 2022. You have to give yourself a good answer, concluding all the hard work, all the sacrifices you made throughout the entire year. And I think AG is rewarding themselves with a quite good answer. A cup and a league are two completely different things. Yes. That's something yes. that we need to understand. In a league, it's just going to be how consistent you're going to be throughout the year, throughout a very long span of time. But in a cup, you're either good or you're not. And look at that, AG is just showing us that they're ready and they're at their peak of their level. I really like we had like MVP goes to the support. Yeah. Because support is one place that we usually neglect mm -hmm. and kind of ignored. True. So being acknowledged by the youth and the whole thing you contribute to your team as an MVP, the most valuable player among like five very talented positions, you really did a great job there. Oh, I, I see it every single time like critical initiation on that tram fay, right? Yeah. Right over there from the sides, always trying to wait for the right moment. Right over there, that one, look. He waits, he holds all the time. Always just trying, trying his very best just to use his ult in the, in the right moment. He doesn't even have his ult in that, in that moment. He's just pushing in, jumping, and trying to create a space. Wow, only Ian has been like, killed for three times, and Isa has been killed for one time. Four kills will be the only number that Kwaisho got throughout the entire match. KSG, sadly for them, today they did not have the amazing day that they had yesterday. Well, they had to completely, they had two of the top um, opponents that they could have today, right? Like KSG came in today, and then they played first against Nanjing here, and then against Chengdu AG. Um, two very difficult matchups for them. Um, they were not able to take victories on these two, but up until right now, again, I still have a lot of confidence that the, K that the boys from Kwaisho are going to make it to the last day with still hopes for the ticket. Yeah, it's quite surprising to see like Kwaisho uh, after gaining like two win-ins yesterday, but got to defeat for today's match. I mean, the whole atmosphere, the whole mentality just went down for a little bit. And I really hope that it won't be a huge problem to them for them to solve. You need to conquer those kind of difficulties during uh, the qualifiers, right? Okay, best wishes for them. Best wishes. And we're ready for our interview. Wei Yang, you Hello, everyone. I'm the AG Wei Yang. So, firstly, please share with us what's the feelings you got when you have like five victories to your side. Uh, 跟我们分享一下, 啊, 从我们的选拔赛开始, uh, so excited, feeling so good about ourselves, and mm. during the match, we really think that our vibe just get fired up. Mm. I love this kind of atmosphere. Uh, I know that AG has a lot of secret things to give himself, so I won't ask you too much about your inner secret problems. There is a chance now that I hope that Wei Yang can say a few words to his brothers or AG fans, because I really like your friends and have been waiting for you for a long time. 啊,就謝謝大家吧,就謝謝隊友還有觀看我們比賽的吧,謝謝。
So I want to Wei Yang to spend some time share with the in, in cherish this moment, share some thoughts with the fans and the teammates. So uh, basically, he was very thankful and grateful to have those fans waiting for them for such a long time. Yeah. 呃，谢谢未央接受我们采访，希望我们你未来的时间里面可以看到你们更多更好的表现。谢谢未央。You know, Wei Yang is one of the most like youngest, like youngest、yeah. player in AG. Oh, okay, like one of those young players, but they have like very high skill, right? Like he's very talented. Yeah. The way that he controlled the tempo today, like the moments when to jump into the fights, that was something. That you would expect from very, very experienced players. And after this match, then just take a deeper look at the highlight clips from the matchups. I think we are gonna witness together a lot of beautiful movements here. But you know, among all the clips right now,、uh, the what, what, chain. Yeah, the chain, right? The chain, the chain. like the chain that we can see is just like insane. Just their their ability, just to put the one, two, and three together. The timing is difficult for them, right? Wow, good one! The damage, the damage is just there for AG to gain these victories. Like it's a very simple task for them. Wow, Ino, very excited. Great performance by both teams. Right now, we're gonna move into the last game of today. That last game of today is going to have Nanjing Hero and Quanro TTG. That's going to be a very, very interesting game that we're gonna bring to you in time of a minute. Let's have a little rest. And we'll be back. All right, welcome back. We will be watching the very last battle of today, but it will be extremely impressive to see because the two sides will be Nanjing Hero and Guangzhou TTG. Ooh, good the, ones. The boys from Coach Jiuzhu against the boys from Coach Care. <laughs> Who's going、yeah. to have the best strategy? Both of them, like very interesting coaches that we've thought about. Their strategies. The moment that TTG is going on today, right?、Mm -hmm. Like four games. They lost two yesterday. Already two wins in a row. I'm certain that they would want to just go back to their hotels with a third dub in their pockets. You know, a lot of things. These two teams have gone through a lot of battle with one another. So the, the like 
um, the most memorable one will definitely be one of the KPL finals, the grand finals, these two teams fighting against each other. But the first, like the startup lists are completely different in the side of Hero. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was a completely different era, right? Mm -hmm. Different, com completely different patch as well. Um, it is a matter of the clubs as the time passes, the clubs are just going to start building on those, those stories, that culture. Um, our game keeps evolving into what it is becoming and um, us that we have been, had the chance to actually see it grow. Uh -huh. We look back to it and we can see that it was the same clubs, completely different faces. So the ID is still the same, but the composition, the players, the formation, the atmosphere are completely different. Mm -hmm. The only same thing say <laughs> the same is that the coach Stay the same. Yeah. It, it is also like um, here against Hyoju, standing like behind all the team members, trying to fight for the final glory. But back then, I think here have the help with uh, like another Cole uh, coach, whose ID will be like Love CD. Okay. Also like a little, uh, more like a parent to TTG. Wow. So a lot of TTG fans are asking that you know to love CD so what happened uh, in like TTG yesterday yeah, we're yeah. so worried with but um, yeah, well, I they, think they have they, they have a strong song. connection to the club right yes. like at the end of the day like when you work for a while and you have these achievements with the club you have a connection that even with the time is not going to be taken away easily mm -hmm. and Joey no fear will be yeah the, the, the same players representing each club fighting in the 20, like 2018, 2019 till now. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's been a very, very long time. These players have been passing themselves through a lot of generations, growing up together and going against each other. That's a lot of stories. Lots of stories that we will be more than happy to share with you. Maybe not today, because today we're gonna be focusing on the game, but stick with us. We are still have like 30 more days all the way until our great final mm -hmm. on December 30th. Now both these two teams, those superstars from their teams, they have a long history. They have been like being an eSport athletes for mm -hmm. a long time. So if you have the honor, you, you know, have the time to go through every single season, every single match of the KPL, I assure you, you will have a deeper understanding of the moments, the kind of feelings I'm feeling right yeah. now. And you're basically like a parent witnessing their growth <laughs> as, a, as an, an adult. A parent just seeing yeah. the growth of these children. Guangzhou TTG, two wins and two losses. Nanjing Hero, two wow. wins and two losses. The same. Whoever that is going to win this match is going to have a critical advantage compared to the other. And the battle begins from right now. Shimonshi and Direnje will be eliminated from the side of TTG, while Da Qiao together with Lu Bu will be taken away off the table from the side of Hero. Gong Sun Li is going to be the choice for Qian Cheng. Wow, Qian Cheng has been playing Gong Sun Li for a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. I think I think like if I if my memory does not does not. Fell to, fell to me right now. Uh -huh. I think that Qian Cheng has been playing that Kung Sun Li. This is going to be the third time today. Mm -hmm. And my Shina Nui, oh, from Xinhen. This time, we uh -huh. won't see a Guan Yu goes into the mid. Nanjing Hero does not want to hide their strategy and go straight forward to picking this my Shinui. Unless Jotra is just gonna give us like something like, oh, come <laughs> no, on, no, no, Bell, no. you go to the mid right now. Like, <laughs> you never know, it's Nanjing Hero. You can always expect anything from these boys. <laughs> yeah, good words. I'll I take know. into serious consideration. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some better, your more things will be happening, switching up lanes or something like that. And the remaining two options will be like the jungler, Lam, together with the mage, Zhao Jun. Joey have been playing Zhao Jun for a lot of times right now. Yeah. Today? Yeah, today okay. I think that Joey has been playing Zhao Jun. Zhao Jun has been a very popular pick today as well. Yeah. Like not a lot of Zhou Yu, but a lot of Zhao Jun. Mm. Very, very popular. The red squad again. Yes, you you're know? totally right. Mm -hmm. I like to, you know, categorize like Heroes by their colors. Heroes by the colors, but basically they're just giving the same styles, you know? I know. We are, we're very visual people. <laughs> we love putting things in color palettes. 
The second round of the bands here. Oh, nice job done. You know, you have to ban away this Liu Bang. Mm, Liu Bang and Kun Sun Li has been a very interesting... Liu Bang, Kun Sun Li and Lam have been a very interesting trio that we've realized, like we've just realized in the, in the couple of days, right? You know, apart from the fact that Liu Bang can make sure that, that Lan can dive in perfectly. And Liu Bang himself is so tanky initially, especially in the early game. So you don't really need to give Liu Bang a lot of gold so that mm. he can become tanky enough. This character just is built to be a tank. Yes. So tank can absorb a lot of damage in the late uh, early game. So it will be quite a difficult challenge to pass, especially when your mage is Mai Shinanui. Mai Shinanui is not that good at tackle down tanks. Well, right now that Liu Bang is not going to be an option. Um, what are the options for Snow to play as um, to play as a support? support? It really comes down to the topic where what kind of strategy that TTG want to pull off. Yeah. I think a lot of support available if they want to make a flexible one. I think Sun Bin should be considered. But you know, with a Sun Bin, you will be lacking of tanks. So yes. vision is re extremely needed. So if they want to look for initiation, <gasps> Dong Huang Tai or the choice of Lan Ling, Prince of Lan Ling will all do the same. And Snow is one of the players who really love to play Prince of Lan Ling goes into the support. So the character that we are seeing wow. right now used to be a jungler. But as meta passed by, we have developed a lot of new strategies uh -huh. using Prince of Landing goes into support as a huge initiation method, but uh, you know, it's not locked in anyway. Sad. Yeah, Alon, a oh, very, very long serious sad. analysis going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Lamper instead. It's gonna, it's gonna be fine, King. You can just copy <laughs> that analysis for tomorrow when he's gonna show up. <laughs> It's all right. But hey, Lumber also, you know, do the same. Initiation, yeah. it is. They want to engage. Actually, I, I, I see it in a completely different way. For me, I, I wouldn't have preferred Snow uh, coming in and playing with Prince of Landling. Ah. Since for me, Prince of Landling, it's not going to be that protective, right? Yeah. It's just more about like division control and how to play the mind games. Um, I don't think that, that those would be like the two characteristics that just brought Snow back to the starting list today. Definitely. Um, so probably something like Lumber would be a better option based on why we brought him back. You know, the choice of Lumber will be hugely like assistant to TTG because their opponent hero as a very last pick, the marksman will still be Bali Shouyue. So I think Bell did a great job, great job playing this hero in the previous like two battles right yeah. now. On Actually, if I correct, uh, remember this correctly, like 40% of the damage? Yeah, it yeah, was 40% of damage. It was a lot of damage, but oh. it wasn't a completely different combo, right? Yeah. Because it was with a mod. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So mods would just allow you to have enough time just to really put your, your, your rifle in the right direction. But without that mods right now, it's going to depend on Bell on himself just finding that opening. You know, different support goes together with Bali Shoui will completely change how this game will of be course. played. So if you put a Muzi together with a Shoui, mm. you expect to be so aggressive in earning a lot of advantages when it comes to the like, bottom two versus two matchups. Yeah. But if you can uh, use the support, for example, like Zhang Fei, those kind of very tanky heroes, mm -hmm. you can gain a lot of vision. So you basically want to emphasize more on the snipe offering the vision to Shouya so that Shouya can stay in some place safe during the constant side and causing and contributing of a lot of poking mm -hmm. damage to the enemies. Does, like two different strategies. But that brings missiles. that that raises the question, does mm -hmm. Bell have the accuracy needed to have such a vital and crucial uh -huh. role if Nanjing Hero wants to take the victory? I think it's okay. After watching the previous show, I mean, of course, if you are going to play this hero, you're definitely going to feel a little bit nervous. Yeah. So you'll start losing some, some of your shots, some of, of your snipes at the very first beginning. But the reason why this player have contributed nearly 40% of the damage to the entire team means that he will have the confidence and the enough accuracy to perform in this particular matchup. The vision extremely enough. They have like Zhang Fei together with Meng Tian as a mm -hmm. frontliner. So basically, they lighten up your world. You are just 
watching every single hero's appearing aside of you and making it your accurate snipe it is going it's, forward. It's wait and see what's going to happen. It's going to depend a lot of Lam just being able to spot that <laughs> pilot show you have trying to put some pressure on him so he does not have a good time while thinking how to just get his snipes. And finally, are, we are like watching the battle between Lan versus Jing again. Yeah. It is, it is one of those fights that you really like watching, oh. right? Two of the T T zero we call, we like calling them what, two of the meta heroes for this for this patch. It's very co uncommon because in the Bo ones we're seeing like Lan being picked more often, mm -hmm. a lot more often than Jing. It is, it is a re it is a really nice hero right now to to play Jing. After all the different evol evolutions of all the different patches, um, I think that it has just shown a very strong weakness against heroes like Lam. Okay, Bell is showing some kind of poke in here, making Snow very low right there on the stride, but got avoided by Tianchen's ability. Mingyan almost in four, no fear as well, trying to finish just their farming. Sadly for, sadly for Mingyan, his buff was taken away by Joku. Mm. I, mean, I have been talking about this for a long time. I really like the mm -hmm. idea and ID of no fear. I love this word. <laughs> if I get another chance, I'll definitely name myself with, uh, as like no fear. No this fear. is my personal motto, you know, in my life. You have to show. I, I like you it. have to be like fearless towards any kind of challenge. I, I, love I like that one a little bit more. I like fearless, fearless. a little bit, a little bit better than no fear. Look at that poor. Liam Po is being uh, completely targeted as he's still not yet in level four. But they managed to like chip away like a lot of HP bar from Ching Ching mm -hmm. and forced out of Flash. That's something huge. You need to give your message delivered to your team members so that the Ching Ching that the Empo has no yeah. Flash. No need to worry. Let's wait and see. Right now the blue is going to spawn. Joku comes in to take a little bit of a of a check on it. But I think you know, it's not looking for uh, uh, to getting the blue because Joku used the smite before. True. It's simply just getting some vision for Bell to do the snipes. Wow, Dunfan, look at that. Wow. The speed that he's destroying that turret. <laughs> you know, one special thing about the ultimate from Dunfan from Meng Tian is yep. that the soldiers can carry and the shoulder the tower the aggros first Meng Tian, so he can basically do a lot of things under the turret the mm -hmm. soldier will try to protect Meng Tian. so the soldiers are going to be the main target yeah. for the tar for the turret damage yeah. instead of being the hero itself so this is one of the mo the reason why Meng Tian is so popular in this current meta right true see that three minutes and 15 seconds Tin Tin just Keeping an eye on that red buff, but look at that Tungfang has a good opportunity to come in. There's going to be a 3 before. Now Tianqin is going to have to run away, but look at that. Joey not being able to put in the prison. I think Nice and Devers here using the ultimate, trying to make something happen back down. And yeah, because Mai Xianui is definitely making some rotation down, mm -hmm. but Xing Han hesitated for a little bit second, yeah. trying to decide whether she wants to use the flash, getting closer to Tian Chen. But since it is like Gong Sun Li, Gong Sun Li with so many dashes, I think even if Xing Han used a flicker, it's not close enough. So I, I think better you, you, you better save your flash for the next time. Just look at the way that Nanjing Hero is playing right like there's no kills yet whatsoever but they're already building a 1700 gold advantage where did that gold advantage come from Tian? uh each of the single altar that you have to finish the last hit of the wave so you mm -hmm. in order to gain extra gold like 50 percent of the extra gold will be awarded to you if you have to make sure that you gain every single last hit on the wave Wow. That's extremely important. That's just some skills you really need to work on, exercise more. Just final hit in that, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Four minutes and 40 seconds, the mid lane turret disappeared from TTG. It was just in that one push, it was taken from 100 straight to zero. I like the idea that both teams are playing very like careful mm -hmm. in the single match. So. There's no fight here till the very five minutes and no like, 
the first blood has not even been spawned yet. Because but Shinken. I think Shinken, yeah, Shinken is looking for some changes here. Oh, he tried to use his fan, but it was nullified by the parasol. Mm -hmm. So parasol, the use of parasol is extremely important. So the second ability from Gong Sun Li will yep. be really helpful. If Chen Chen pulls the second ability at the right time, it will enable enable her to dodge a lot of, for example, the snipes or the fans from my Shinui. Sudden avoidance. Gaining. I like that. Yeah, I like that too. Let's see that the red buff is going to spawn right now. A lot of pressure that Nanjing here is putting here on this jungle. Don't find that he's gonna proc his ultimate. He's gonna try to find on Xin Xin. Xin Xin's being taken extremely low. Ooh, he's going blood. to disappear. The first blood is going to come in at six minutes mark. You know, I really think that TTG should do something. Their yeah, I agree. They should do something. It's not that weak in the early game, but they're basically hit, given up so many resources to Hero. I think that the turrets just started falling very quickly. And look at the gold lead right here. There's no reason explaining why First. TTG is so like facing such a gold deficit towards in against Hero. I just love the way that Nanjing Hero is just playing this yep. game, right? Mm -hmm. Like, look at that, like, they just, all, all of them targeting the one hero, just getting hit, getting it out of it. I think it, it's just an understanding of the, of the meta, an understanding of the patch. Mm. It's not about just winning those big fights, it's about actually just controlling the resources. Yeah. You mentioned something very interesting. The way that Tung Fan has been playing that Meng Tian, it's just been, it's got, just been denying the ability for Kung Sun Lee, the ability for... The, the ability for, for Chao Jun just to try to finish on those on those minions. So the goal difference is just starting slowly, slowly, slowly to build out of that. Yep. For this is one explanation, but I still think like TTG have a lot of crowd control, a lot of CC chins yeah. can be expected during the team fights. But they can just perform it instead of, you know, giving up all the tier outer turrets. If you are facing the fact that your enemy is by Li Shouyue and yep. you stayed right inside your high ground tower, you are kind of restricting yourself. You know, you're giving a smaller region to Bali Li Shouyue to try to get a snipe on. Yeah. So the angles will be easy to find for Bali Li Shouyue trying to locate the targets. So oh. TTG's best choice going outside, trying to initiate the fight, trying to find some opportunity here. You don't want to waste your time staying in your high ground. Like if they want to do something, it needs to be done right now. Yeah. It is eight minutes of the game and almost 5,000 gold lead. That gold lead is really unexpected. Yeah, completely oh. unexpected. I Out of nowhere, only like one, one kill. No fights, nor anything. It was just all the control of resources that yep. Hero has been able to do right now. You know, control of resources is what Hero really did so good in the past few years. Yep. So even in the KPL matches, in the KPL region matches, Hero is so good at taking every single common objective. So without being engaged in the team fights, they can manage to snowball into such a good lead. Oh, mm. Look at that, Xin Xin trying his very best to clean the wave, but He's finding himself not tanky enough to take the damage given by Bell. Yeah, but still, you know, it's quite weird to see TDG losing the tower. All the ta all, all, of, all of the outer turrets so easily. Look at that, the waves wow. are on are incoming and they're gonna hit on the high ground at the same time. The rest of the game will be extremely hard. The whole matches went to like hard mode Look towards TDG. They will be phasing constant poking from Bailey Shouyue. And it's not even 10 minutes. Yep. And look at the bottom bottom turret, already half HP. Oh, Bell is giving himself. Yeah. Like, I, I asked if the accuracy was going to be there, and I think that Bell is just answering to that question with a total yes. Another dragon to the side of Hero. A lot of gold lead here, taking the blue again to Bell. I think the cooldown is just enough. 40% of the cooldown. Sufficient full. 40% is just the, the top. The, it's the roof of yep. the cooldown. You cannot, you cannot go over that 40%. That is going to be part of how the game actually works. Hero, the two tens. The Overlord 
constantly lighting up the whole scene for Belle, watching constantly where their opponents are standing, giving the whole vision, the whole picture to Belle. Bai Li Shou with the sniper doing a lot of poking. You know, after like this match, whoever gonna win, if we yep. take a look at the dashboard, the, the whole damage dashboard, it will be like, I, I think the higher record will be expected to see from Belle. Yeah, of course. Mm. Yes, it's gonna it's gonna be Bell just dealing so much. <laughs> Maybe like over fifty percent, I think. That would be really interesting to see. Yeah. As we can see, Jing is not participating in any of the fights. Jing is just going around, just keep farming, controlling the dragons, getting the us the tyrants, defeated. getting us the overlords. No fear is just playing this game with the dragons. Yeah. I spend a lot of time controlling all the objectives, controlling the dragons. Minion tried to jump in. That's useless. It's very, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's very hard. A short hit. Like seven excess of it. Bell one more nice. time. Slowly, Hero is just poking on the turrets, taking them to half of the HP. The top lane turret is not going to stand for any more. Super minions are going to be spawned on top. It's a, it's a really weird match, you know? Yep. For TTG, I'm not sure what happened. Maybe, maybe it's because they haven't played a game against Shouya for a long time. So mm -hmm. maybe they did not find a correct like answer yeah. how to conquer this kind of composition when your enemy choose show you it. Ah, did wow. you see how Tintin was just forced to go back all the way to base all the turrets are down total of four dragons coming in already in high ground let's see what's gonna happen the Lombard used ultimate trying to get close to Bell, but nothing happened. Using a flicker will manage to keep Bell very safe. The dragons are coming in, since he's going to fall. And just like that, out of the blue, it's going to be Nanjing Hero taking the victory. I think it's a success of strategy. You know, there's no team fights happen. Only one kill is witnessed. Even no fear is quite surprised to see this game like finish so easily. I'm not so sure what happened for TTG because they're quite good for today's match. They like went two points back. But unfortunately, yeah. just out of nowhere, out of blue, will be the term I was trying to find. They just lose the feeling to win a game. There's no definite move. There's no decision we are watching. They're completely out of nowhere. They can completely out of solutions when trying to deal the fact that their opponent use a badly show you. The two players are looking really awkward right now because yeah, it's, it's <laughs> it was just like so fast. And I think that we didn't see much fighting. That's the thing. I think that it's not a matter of the time. It's just the fact that there was no fighting in the yeah, whole game. There's no combat, you know, there's no five versus five team fights happening. Yeah. And basically, I think Hero just, it's a, it, yeah, Hero did a great job, but um, TTG is not giving them a lot of challenges, you know? Handing over a lot of high ground towers, handing over all the outer tier one and tier two turrets is not a great solution. They did better work on that quickly, quickly, because this will be the final match for the second day of the qualifiers. And the qualifiers will be only lasting for four days. You only have two more days to conquer this problem in a very effective and efficient way. Find yourself a solution, please, TTG. We're halfway through it. TTG came in three games, two very good victories, and this yeah. last and in this last performance, I wouldn't say that it was bad from TTG. It's just they did not have any answers. Yeah, you do, you do not have show as your reactions yep. to this kind of play. You have to react in any way. Show us something. Yeah. Show us something. I just think that they just stood over there and they, they were, they were just confused. Yeah, very, very puzzled, very confused. Very puzzled just about like, okay, what's going on? What should we do? And before they think of a possible way to solve this, the base got bombed up. The, the way that that crystal just fell, it was like the top turret fell, the mid and bottom turret fell, 
And then just in that same wave of dragons, the crystal just popped. I, I don't know. I am still pretty puzzled <laughs> about yeah, that. Yeah, me too. Me too. Just after watching and casting this matchup, everybody just look very surprised. A lot of colleagues are walking in front of us, feeling yeah. like looking extremely weird. Wow, okay, damaging almost 50%. <laughs> almost 50%, you called it. Uh -huh. That's why I love working with you, Tianyin. You <laughs> can just predict what's going to happen. <laughs> Bell is going to take the MVP. Damage dealt of 48.8%. Damage taken is only 4.6. Is Yeah. Untouchable. Untouchable, it is. Untouchable. I think the only time I think Bell is facing kind of threat will be the dive in from Lan. Yeah. But I'm um, using the getaway, using the ultimate from Bai Li Shou Yuan, managed to keep Bell very safe. And the next one will be using the flash. Yes. You know, change of positions, dash back a little bit, and do a snipe after all. The spread over there, look at that. Just look at the way that he that his damage right at the end was there was no tank in there that could have taken three direct shots from him that was the only moment that moment right over there minion tried to take on bell he still had his ultimate just to jump away yep a sure hit love this kind of you know slogan mm, a sure hit times seven seven times in a row that you don't miss that ain't easy that ain't easy for sure. Of course. And let's see the team data here. Only two kills. That's something. That's a new record. I you know for a matchup. That that is an interesting point. Uh -huh. Is it a new record? Because I don't remember any other game in in, in all the KIC games that I've been casting with you uh, that has finished like this. Only two kills in the whole match. And you can see the damage out right there, like nearly for a 50% of the damage came in from the snipes. Mm. Very like nice distribution of how this formation will be going. Even though we are seeing like no fear is very low in the damage, but I think no fear is completely like responsible for the whole rhythm going on. Yes, He's exactly. very busy, very scheduled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. like very like very busy around just going and taking all the resources just closing in the door for any kind of turn back from the other team. Yep, sure hit. I think it's a winning and a victory over to their coaches, mm. finding this perfect combination, finding this very appropriate, proper way to win in over TTG. But one definite answer from this matchup will be, you know, TTG really need to recover from this defeat and looking forward to for, for them to perform better tomorrow. They have shown us that they can jump back and let's hope that tomorrow they're going to come with the same attitude. So our interview is ready for us. Hello, Xinhen, and we'll talk to you about it. Hello, everyone. I'm Nanjin Hill, Jiujin Xinhen. We were wondering, why do you choose Mai Xinyu instead of Guan Yu in this time? Xinhen, do you want to take Guan Yu? Why do you choose Huo Wu? 感觉这把火舞可以的，这把火舞可以。呃，就是你自己之前玩到，比如说中路关羽这个想法是，比如说九折和你一起讨论出来的，还是你自己觉得？哎，我觉得关羽可以、啊。我们很好奇、啊，跟我们多说说呗。呃，一起讨论出来的吗 ？All right, I was trying to figure out where the ideas come from. Will it be a team decision or like Xinhen figure this out by no. himself? So uh, the answer will be like we discuss it as a group and it's a group decision. Uh, Xinhen, now, now, actually, uh, hero, the话, three points, actually, still good. In the future, two days, think the team will make some improvement in some part. Uh, in the future, improvement. So what will be the areas you want to enforce and trying to do better in the following up two days? Um, we will try to make our early game and jungle invasion a better version. Mm. So that's the goal that we want to achieve in the future matchups. Thank you so much. Xinhen right over there just showing us that he's not only a warrior, that he can actually take the responsibility right now of 
it's starting to play mages and the way that he played that my Shiranui was a very good example that yeah. he's ready to take that responsibility. Ashingan is really talented. You know, once I have a time to do the interview with Jojo, mm -hmm. the coach for uh, Nanjing Hero, I was asking which kind of, which player does Jojo think will be awarded as the best and the most talented player? Mm. Shinghan will be the answer. Mm. Wow. You have such a big compliment coming from yeah. someone who really understands the game, something that really has a lot of weight on you, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of words and a lot of like um, hard work need to be done by Xinhen because you have to switch from the top to the mid in a very short amount of time. And I think Xinhen is did a great job. A huge pressure is being put on him. And you know, Xinhen, very, yep. very young players have to shoulder this kind of responsibility. Of I think it's a very man act. Summarizing a little bit on today's performances, Chengdu AG already with five points, um, followed by Beijing Weibo with four points. We have Nanjing Hero three points, and then we have Shanghai EDGM three points as well. Yeah, so a lot of like three points teams. Mm -hmm. So finally, maybe we will have some answers from tomorrow's matchups. After tomorrow, we will be leaving with only one day of matches and hopefully we will have like a clear picture of who is gonna be the, the very first five or five, first four teams among these 10 teams. So after today's match, let's take another look at the team standings. Right now, Chengdu AG runs constantly on the very first prize yeah. here. Uh, Beijing Wave was gonna take second place, Nanjing Hero and it's gonna take third, just tied into points at the same time as Shanghai EDGM. So a lot of more astonishing games will be taking place tomorrow. We will have a lot of interesting battles, KSU versus TTG, and oh, a lot of games for, for Rogue Warriors, right? So many logos right there. And this will be the <laughs> second half for Rogue Warriors, DYG, and the last one will be taking place between Hero and Weibo. Wow, the Hero and Weibo is going to be an amazing matchup that we're going to have. But well, it's been a very, very, very long day. It's been amazing, electrifying games coming in. I believe that since we started at three o'clock all the way until right now, it's been eight hours of great, amazing, amazing performances. I, for one, I think that it's been a great day it's and been great hopefully already, right? tomorrow is going to be even better. Well, thanks everyone for being here with us. I'm your caster, Isaac Peña. Can you here with me? See you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Have a good night.